Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another day of action-packed drama from right here in South Korea. Ali Najad alongside Nick Shulman, business end of the Long Deck Streets. Upon us, obviously, day two of the 100K main, a record setter in terms of the history of the world, 216 entries. That's what we're going to whittle away at when we bring you coverage here today. But, Nick... Obviously, an even larger side event, the 150K. That's what went down yesterday, and you got a, a little taste of that one. Indeed, I did. That was a great event, start to finish. Yeah, no doubt about it. And for those that missed it, let's not waste any time, shall we? Dive right in to the highlights. So, the penultimate No Limit Hold'em event of this Jeju Festival. Michael Adamo carried a massive chip lead into this one, but would fall ultimately 10th on the final table bubble, and obviously falling is what we expect oh Ace Jack gosh. to do against two aces. A Sam Grafton went up against huh? Elton Sang, flopped himself the Broadway gutty, and it turned into an open ender on the turn. Clubs removed, of course, six outs once, but Squiddy was made calamari by Tsang. $422,000 richer for the effort but falling in ninth. So then, Bulgaria's oh. Kulev would rip from the small blind over the top of Sean Winter, who was chiseling virtually the entire way in this one. His ace five was dominating. Both players would flop bottom pair and then a disastrous hockey stick. Slap shotting Winter on the turn, 2.3 in the middle. Sevens full, adding insult to injury and dispensing Sean Winter in eighth. $544,000, better for the effort as one of several consecutive bad beats began to develop. And when I say that, you already know that Wang Yi, who held the chip lead coming into this final table, wasn't gonna be doing well against Elton's ace jack here. When it all got into the middle, he did end up with a Broadway gutty, two pulls at it, unavailable though. And you could see a shake of the head and some disappointment there for a member of the Chinese delegation taking home $737,000. Now then, it was Alex Kulev's turn to feel the frost on the toes as Ace Jack suited supposed to do so well against this Ace 10. Perhaps some karma for the 7-5 against Ace 5 as King Jack-5 looked to be cozy for the Bulgarian. A dry turn. We have nothing to worry about except a queen, and there she was on the end. And that would do it for Kulev. Out of there, just shy of seven figures, 983,000. The beats would keep coming. And on this occasion, the recipient, James Chen of Taiwan. Two nines, in he went, Watson. Covering stack, ace 10, two overs, and no sweat in the window. There was the one of clubs hunting at the nine. Chen couldn't connect on the turn, and this 4.1 worked its way directly in front of the Canadian as Chen out of there in fifth. One and a quarter million dollars for his efforts, and four would remain. Order restored in terms of Ding Biao's pocket aces, always supposed to do well against the King-7 suited of Liang Shu. We would take a flop, King Jack Deuce's top pair, and you could see the doom switch beginning to flip in front of Shu. Half pot sizing out of Ding, the follow through effort on the turn. Shu deeming now's the time to get them all forward instead of playing it passively, and of course, in need of assistance. Unrendered on the turn, seven or a king, where are you? Not here. And that would do it for Liang Shu, the sleeping dragon awakened to $1.56 million for a fourth place effort. Now then. Podium, three remained. Mike Watson got it in with Ace Deuce against Ace Queen. Yeah, Elton really popped up on his feet and he it's said, I hope you. it's a it's thank, thank you. you. That it's was a, a thank theme you. that would emerge. Yeah. You could see him rubbing his palms together, yeah. sensing that perhaps the appointment with heads up action in the 150 was upon him. Friction continued. And he would heat right on through the Ace Deuce as Watson would collect $1.895 million for the third place finish. So then, almost three million was guaranteed to both of these two, who the bulk of the damage for Ding Biao coming into this one sustained by a very gutsy King High call. More on that later as the King High board would leave him behind. 10-3 against 7-5, bottom pair against second pair. In need of a 10 or a three. 
And you could see the robust rail very much Woo! there for it. The deuce of diamonds and all the emotion Woo, for you, Hong Kong. You. Elton Sang. His 11th final table would be the one as Ding Biao, $2.87 million for the second place effort. $4.2 million would go to Elton Sang. And I got to tell you, it isn't often that after we draw the curtain on one of these things, Nick, I'm out there, you know, looking for someone. I hunted Elton in the room because I just wanted to just be in the aura of that energy. It was so pure. It was so childlike. The minute I saw him, I give him a hug and he's jumping up and down like he had just hoisted the trophy. Really when you, you have that many FTs without getting there, it just, the monkey's off your back, kind of. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that reaction was w very genuine. You know he's jumping up and down. He's got the woo-hoos going, <laughs> held the trophy <laughs> over his head, and uh, you could tell how much it meant to him, you know? And as you said, this guy has racked up a ton of caches. Getting the dub, it's just a very special thing, and to do it in an event like that obviously yeah. meant a lot to him. There's no question. And he's been at it for so long in terms of being one of these Triton OGs. Conversely, though, Ding Biao, just 12 months, he's racked up $5.5 in Triton earnings. He's already got a title, oddly enough, when those two square off. You might not imagine that. But I feel as though Biao's continued to impress us. I've really enjoyed watching Ding Biao play. He He's really coming into his own. He's a tough player. Mm -hmm. A, a very kind of well thought out player with some slick moves the, and uh, the king Bravo, high, you know the king high call definitely put some folks on notice in terms of what's going on upstairs with him yeah i mean it's heads up it's a paired board you know a, a king i hear you is that the one you know you're talking saying? about i think it was the ace up? ace high yes heads yes, up that was the a cool turn hand. ace came off obviously the second barrel from elton left you know Ding Biao feeling as though perhaps this isn't ace high, wouldn't it not that barrel? That was how I felt about it. It was an interesting one. For those that didn't see it, the board was 3-3-5. Three, three, Ding check called with king eight, turn queen. He check called again. Elton happened to have ace 10, which is an interesting sort of barrel. Great value bet. And then the river was an ace. It's almost a good card for, for Ding yeah. as played. But whatever the case may be, uh, that was a very spirited final table, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, likewise. Not to be overshadowed, of course, Sir Watson. And check this stat out, Nick. Talk to me. Imagine. He has just three seven-figure scores over the course of his career, but he's got $25 million Sir in career earnings. Yeah. yeah. So that tells you a lot. That, you know? That means... He's made a lot of money playing poker, is, is what that <laughs> means. <laughs> but no ifs, ands, or buts. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about that. How about Sean Winter? Uh, obviously, the eighth place finish, but again, arriving with a short stack. At one point, the stat that producer James had shared with us, he had never had more than 840000 in front of him going into that final table. And you look at Adamo, 5K big blind, he had one and a half million in front of him on the outside of that FT. Nobody does it better in terms of short stack navigations yeah. than Sean. Here's what's weird for me with Sean. It's the only reason I push back on this narrative, not that it's, you know what I mean, what's the point of pushing one, but like, he's not a nit, you know? No. And he's a really just great player. But he does indeed cockroach around in tournaments with the absolute best of them. And he just never says goodbye until he feels like he absolutely has to. Yeah. And I've certainly seen him spin the nub more than anybody in my life. And I've seen him get away of uh, get away from a lot of spots. It's fascinating to watch him play. And stats like that, he never has more than seven bigs for nine days or something. Right. It's... <laughs> You know, it's bizarre. I mean, listen, we laugh. We're not laughing at Sean by any stretch of the imagination. We it's not a as though. We are a little bit, though. I, yeah, mean, I feel it's become a little bit of a thing. Oh, here he is with 3.6 bigs. He's going to be here a while. Like, the guy has 100 bigs all the time, too. Like, pay attention. But I hear you. I don't yeah. know why I'm so defensive. I just love Sean. But I got to relax a little. Yeah. And by, by the way, one of the other things that we've said about Sean is he is unafraid to deviate, march to the beat of his own drum out there. And that's one of the things I know that you admire, right? A lot well, of guys maybe don't have their own flair on things. As, as Henrik uh, Hecklin asked the, said to me the other day, I, I wonder how long Sean is visiting Earth for. <laughs> so, you know, he does his own thing.
All right. No question about that. I was wondering whose UFO that was at the valet. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Listen, let's turn our attention then to the 150K. Uh, sorry, with the 150K, drawing to a close, let's turn our attention to the 100K. Main event, second day of action here. We touched on that 216 entries across 139 uniques, comfortably the largest 100K in history. That's right. Uh, any platform to be clear. Yeah. The largest 100K ever anywhere on any tour. So bravo, try Yeah, online, live, whatever it may be. 24 of those entries, I'm being told, are coming as max late regs to start the day. So some folks saying, I don't want to deal with that. Do you have anything, strategically speaking, do you feel a certain way about folks that might plunk their first bullet in as a max late reg versus put the work in in that prior day? I mean, if we're going strictly strategy, sometimes level one, it's just straight murderer's run. And then maxing, you know, the riffraff is is in the the wild cards are in. Mm -hmm. So, but no, I don't give it too much thought. I never have. Um, I just sort of show up when I feel like playing. Mm -hmm. That's always been my approach, and I, I think it's there is something to that. Some people chase the EV too much, but if you're not ready to go, you know, you got to relax a little bit. Ready to go, of course, will be Bulgaria's Kulev. That sixth place finish in the 150K on form coming in as the chip leader. A quick dive into the Triton Poker Plus app will help us get our bearings over here. Tables just being drawn as we speak. There he is, just shy of 2 million in front of him, a whopping 240 bigs. Levels will be 50 minutes in length. Our aim today is to get down to 16 players. And uh, Nikiforov, Hecklin, the only two... Other players with over 7 million in front of them, uh, sorry, over 1 million in front of them. The one that jumps out for me is the break in terms of all pros. JNT, 900,000. He finished second in the London main, so he can get down there, by the way. And so can you. You had a deep run in that one. Yeah, I was, I was dealing with him uh, in that one, and he's really a difficult opponent to handle in a main event type field i believe he was uh all in with timothy adams who won with nines versus eights so he was ever so close to yeah. shipping a main and i'm sure he would like nothing more than to ship this one yeah obviously and like you said dealing with him he can be very unpredictable out there and personally indulgently we love to see it because it's the knuckleballers from the mound the curveballers i think yeah. where you can get some pretty embarrassing swings yeah. and misses when you're in the batter's <laughs> box right okay so it looks like the seats are being drawn in just enough time for us to take a quick peek anything jumping out at you in terms of uh, uh you know well, alignment there or stack dynamics kulev has really been surging and, and takes a lot of very interesting lines Hecklin right on his left, same situation. Uh, Saliba, the boss, Squiddy, uh, all these tables, as always, offer intriguing sweats. Yeah, and we don't quite have the payouts yet uh, because obviously as these max late regers do come in, we do have to tabulate, but it is going to be something quite it'll handsome. 21.6 in the pay in the prize pool, right? Come so, on. Yeah, it'll, it's, be, it'll be handsome, Molly. It's oh so pretty. Four, yeah. eight, and eight are going to be the blinds. I want to slip down here toward the bottom of these chip counts. Producer James advising, by the way, the app has not yet updated. So we're going to go to 510 to kick things off. 25,000 in orbit will be the price of poker. Let's just look at the sheer volume of players. A bit dizzying, but uh, there is the shortest of all stacks. 13 bigs. Shears out Hisu. Obviously, these are not the ways in which we envision coming into day two. Some work will need to be done by these guys. And some names down there. Espen, former World Series of Poker. Main event winner, 114th place right now. Some folks, unclear whether or not they're going to be a part of these re regs There's Bucky, 123rd, Matt Wantman, uh, you know, in the, the grayed outfield. So <laughs> maybe we do, maybe we don't see them. Dimitar Donchev already picking up a title. He also down there in 133rd place. Is that uncouth? Should I not be pointing out the people who've been <laughs> <Yeah>. showered? <laughs> I don't think you get to say 123rd place <laughs> in a 200-player tournament, but you know, I hear you. And and to the fallen GGs, if you're back, welcome back. If you call it, fair enough. And to those still in the hunt for the biggest 100K ever, 
it, it gets repetitive, but I can't wait to see how it shakes out. For Ollie. sure. What you do? You have anything special for your pregame today? It is the main. Just went for a little walk, listened to some tunes, time. had too much coffee, and here we are. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely buzzing, perhaps here at the desk is Shulman, but so is the entire room. Obviously, plenty of media on hand. This is the event upon which all eyes are fixed, as well as yours, as we welcome you into the arena. The 100K main, and of course, as per usual, we will dance about the room, get a glimpse at what's going on. If you haven't already, of course, download the Triton Poker Plus app. You can actually dive into each and every one of these tables. All of the chip graphs, look at specific hand histories. There's really no better way to get your fix in terms of the viewing experience. There we go, somebody's got their IG stories working. Nacho Barbero. On his feet. Nacho like is so funny. Yeah, he, he really he is. He really just truly is. You know one of my favorite things that he says? It's a scam. <laughs> he refers... He, he's such a scam. <laughs> you know? It's just anything that he thinks was untoward. Or was, and by the way, I know it's the accent, but he was talking about Linus Lolliger. He, he called him Linus. It just ruined <laughs> me. That's probably how it's pronounced. He said, you know, Linus is very aggressive. So aggressive. I said, yeah, he is. Oh, look at Elton. Big smile on his face. Obviously still basking in the glow. There's a guy who's got a title on his hands in the furry bucket. I believe that was Paulius. Webster, Samuel Seth, Mueller. Samuel. Hands are full out there. By the way, like you said, world beaters are plenty. Maybe some of the Max Late Reg world beaters that are on a one bullet setup aren't there. Some of the value comes in the form of not, their clearance. You know, it's not too bad. 25 bigs. There's a lot of stages where you have 25. You feel fairly cozy. So it's mean, a decent max spot. But when you look up at the top of the leaderboard, no doubt. you see 200 and some odd, 100 and some odd bigs, you begin to feel like There's maybe. Arter. This guy is just stone cold. Look at this guy. Hang on. Is that a Dior shirt? What are we doing, Arter? And we I, all know you're the Gucci man. Who knows what's up with man. the pants, but respect. I mean, <laughs> there was a human being on his thigh. <laughs> Elton, the champ, he's here. Looks like a Max Late Reds type of spot. Dan Smith shipped yet another one. Ali, go on, Dan. The Turbo Bounty. One of the tweets he put up as he quote tweeted the Triton app that announced his 951K victory. Let's not sleep on my 300,000 in bounties. There friends. you go. Uh, absolutely. There's the man of the moment, of course. Let's see what else is a foot in the room. By the way, you saw that little table of snacks. Have you tried one of these Korean biscuits? You know what the I crackers? actually have? They're unbelievable. They're really good. I was just like, you know, they, they do it right out here. I'm sure they're a partially hydrogenated nightmare responsible no, for deforestation and palm oil, but yeah. nevertheless tasty. I don't know about all that, Ollie. <laughs> Devoris, Ky Kyron Mokri, yeah, Ike. Yeah. Thomas Boyven. We're really cruising around the room here. Yeah. Dylan Lindy there between Devoris and Mokri. And directly to the right of Tan Shuen, by the way, so he's going to have an afternoon. Yes. There he is. Tan. Yes, Tan is no <laughs> joke. I no experienced joke. that firsthand. Fahadin Mustafov there. Yes. he got with him? Roland, Roland Rakita. Rakita. Oh, Philip Ivy. Yes. There it is. Welcome, sir. The Mamba. The Goat. There it is. 47 bigs. Operable depth. No oh, doubt about it. It's the Brunello hat for me, Nick. Wow. That's I'm classy. scared I'm scared to look up retail price on that thing there. That's a lid, my friends. Here we are. Fedor. This is an unbelievable Greenwood. table. Ren Lin there. Holtz, 54 bigs, okay. Who was that to Ren's left too? Some killer. I, it, I just I registered it, it as yeah. killer. Hang on, are we going to get the glimpse? Go. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, it's, uh, Malinowski, this guy, I mean, you know, but, limitless, but, legend. Yeah, yeah, mouse in hand, destroyer of online bankrolls. Producer James hopping in to advise that that Brunello cap that we were glowing, raving about, $630. 630 for a baseball cap, you know, just flexing on him. Uh, pardon me, I'm just going to look for current Brunello Cuccinelli stock price. I think we go long. Yes, Ali. 6.30 for Stock tips cap. by Ali Najad. It's coming. <laughs> the YouTube series. Smash that button. 
legend, global legend beyond poker. This guy is just, look at this guy. Look how charming he is, Ali. Look into his eyes. I, honestly. I would, anything he said to me, I would just believe and buy immediately. There is a I love him. There is a warmth to Santosh that is unrivaled in the room. Jan Zarenzo, these guys, by the way, looking to cool him off. They're nothing personal. Yeah, oh, but definitely. This is another table full of just brewers here. Legend. Axel Halle to his left. Axel, by the way, the beneficiary of that massive collision in the 150 between Henrik Hecklin uh, and yes. Punat Puntry. He was on three mm. bigs, That's slithered into a, a cash. feeling for sure. Oh, Nikki P. Nikki P and Stevie, my. Those two guys, I mean, they've got a lot of hands played against one another, so there'll be some meta at play. Definitely. She had like 48 picks. And you know, I've said it before, but I, I just feel Stevie looks unbelievable with this mustache. I gotta agree. It really suits him. I hope it doesn't go anywhere. Not sure how wifey feels about it, but I would assume it's approved. It's been she runs a tight ship. Yeah, I, I think she probably likes it. And by the way, Nikki P going with a slightly more groomed iteration of his beard. I'm also a fan of this. Yeah, Nikki P will trim it sometimes. Yeah. What do we have here, Ali? Juan Pardo, one of the very best in the world. Ben Heath, fantastic. I'm so sorry. I just the feel compelled Hello, to step sir. in. You said Juan Pardo? Excuse me, yes, I can't roll the R like you. I, I didn't know you, you know. Smilko Smil right yeah. there, by the way, legend. Very tough player in the one seat. I haven't called his name a lot here in Jeju. Wondering, by the way, how things have been going for Smilko. Pardon? I feel like he arrived midway. Yeah. Could be wrong. We'll take a glimpse, hunting him down here. By the way, in the Triton Poker Plus app, at the top of the chip counts, you can actually search for a player. 25 bigs, 250k, max late redger is Smilko. And as I right. dive into his Jeju Festival, 25k GG millions, 41st place finish for him there. Played three events thus far, only one cash. Yet another murderer's row. Don Chef, David Yan. I think yeah. that's Rabachow in the three C. We got his back, I'm pretty okay. sure. Apologies, by the way, for those who are like, what, you don't want to call my name? Sometimes we don't necessarily have the face-name combo. Obviously. Or don't get the... I have Theologus here, by the way, to Shemion's Ole. left. Olay, Richard Young, legend. Triton co-founder, KT, in there. Welcome, KT. Paulius there in the nine. Yep. 48 bigs for Boss. Boss is dangerous. He's another one of these guys. Very icy out there. You're not going to pick much up off of the Boss. So just, just focus on the board, you know? And you won't be bored, by JMT. the way, when he's out there. Yes, sir. In the one... Oh. Is that Rabbits with the with? Is he going duck hunting? The orange beanie. <laughs> I missed it. Winter there in in the three. Oh yeah. Orpen. There they are. Orpen, one of the shorter stacks in the room, coming in. Shingus to the left. Let's see Rabbits. Oh, there he is with the I, ball up top. <laughs> Go on, uh, Roman. If I didn't know any better, I'd think we were at Soldier Field. By the way, between Ibinger's hoodie, yeah. you know, Chicago Bears. Snow snowed in. Ivinger has quickly become one of my favorite players to watch. First of all, he's great, and and he's hilarious. I, I've said this before. It's very slept on. He really is very funny. It's the dry wit, isn't it? It's very dry yeah. and just something about him. Aaron Zhang also there, by the way. Vincent really a Huang. legend. Aaron, of course, the lion's share of that biggest ever. Triton event. That's the right. One million pound buy in in London. You and I were front and center for it. Made a deal with Sensei Bryn Kenny. Kenny. Chat, welcome. We see all of you on YouTube, Twitch. Much love. Let's ease into this thing. Day two of the main, Ali. Producer James stepping up to point out that the table draw here with Kulev 
Nikiforov and Hecklin all being at the same table, that's a bit wow. disruptive to that's, the... That's very rare, and sorry to cut you off, but as was proven the other day, occasionally one and two do collide. It's rare, but it Ooh. happens. And Kulev, Nikiforov, and Hecklin, it's always on the table. On the other side, just note how the largest of all stacks is neck and neck with a sixth place stack in Satubayev versus Changji Zhang. Yeah, there as well. Very clustered top three. And then Boss Paul Pua going to get a glimpse at his procedures as well with 124 players remaining of the 216 entries. That stat brought to you by our official timekeepers, Jacob and Co. Shall we, Nick? We shall, Ali. Cards in the air. Day two, 100K main event. Welcome to those of you streaming us, whether it be on the Triton Poker Plus app, Twitch, or of course our favorite platform, YouTube. Weigh in, let us know where you're watching from, who you're looking to, to follow here, got any favorites, and also, while you're at it, of course, fingers on the keyboard, pull the hand off, stick it on the mouse, click like, click subscribe. This is all we ask in exchange for the finest in streaming poker entertainment. Left's King Deuce starts this party from the hijack. Mauricio Salazar of Colombia, Triton first timer. King Queen has him in a way. Played as a flat, 60K in the middle, heads up, and Ace five Deuce. Kulev slides in front with the duckling. And I would think, in the face of a smallish C bet from Kulev, Salazar will likely feel compelled to continue. Ahead of hands, we can envision that key queen of hearts. Does just slide it, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Kulev has such a stack where he can barrel away. And a nice start for Alex. Rich get richer. Flick it over to the other feature as that one ended uneventfully. Squiddy to the left of Boss. A couple of eights for Grafton. It appears that he's sampling local flavor. Look at the hat. Sh way in, by the way, I know we have some Koreans in the chat. What does this lid say? Stanley Choi, legend, in here. There's CZ. Pipped. Has problems. This is clear. Uh-oh. Uh, now, all of a sudden, both the eights and the sevens have problems as Pua looks down from the big at pocket nine survey stacks. It's a touch close for Pua in regards to call or just all in. Both seem understandable. Sam Stone under the gun. But the CZ flat, we feel, probably isn't tens plus. Occasionally it is. That does make us feel compelled to jam, at least sometimes. Both routes are understandable for the boss, let's see. Blue. Does do it in great timing from Pua. Squiddy asking for a count. About is, is there a sense, and Very obviously nice. when we have eights and sevens, I'm not certain that we want to play Sheriff, but that this is tethered more to a squeeze than the, CZ the hand? Flicking forward every time bank. It's not a, a stone squeeze as Pua is just all in. But yes, we ask ourselves, can he just have two fives? He has something like ace jack a lot. But I like Grafton's fold. And for CZ closing the action, he's really thinking about flipping or maybe occasionally again having a smaller pair pipped. We can see this is not the case. 
Yeah, covers Pua by about two X. But pocket sevens. Pocket sevens. Oh my God! Right. Pocket sevens. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> well, you can see why I'm really this guy's made now. a billion dollars gambling. I mean, <laughs> doing tea. Uh, good for, good for. Oh. Go ahead. That's about. good for me because I I could beat pocket sevens. Oh. He made a good fold. I made a good fold. Oh. Nick. Are you a bit frozen, Ali? Uh, Ali froze yeah. in his tracks when Paul said that. This is Paul Pua. I mean, what, what you thought? Ali? You got device. I don't know. <laughs> he probably knew the suits. How? <laughs> I don't know how many pre-flop hand combinations of two cards there are. I this confess I've never possible. bothered we'll get to get it. into that. Thirteen when, twenty-six. When he pulled the one, pocket sevens. He says, "I mean." You know, that's a needle threading. And by the way, it's a little discombobulating. Anytime I'm at the table in a spot like that, I haven't revealed my holding. And my opponent just casually you calls know, the, it out. The numbers they say Pua has won in the cash games are just staggering. So there was a little window. 22 to go from Mr. Choi. Yeah, we're talking about a nine-figure man, ladies and gentlemen, in terms of cash. You start with 130, starting. Mm, yes. Awesome. Don't go Googling, by the way. This is undocumented stuff, and we'll leave it that way. Choi, Ace Jack. Grafton with problems. Flicks in the call. Change coming. Okay. Ten three deuce board. Neither player associated. Checking over. Twelve thousand. Like this for Stanley and a touch interesting for Grafton straddling the ten. Perhaps ideas can be derived from this hand, although it's not entirely clear. Fold is fairly normal. He's gone. <coughs> Best hand winner. And the benefit of sort of taking texture that we're not in love with and sprinkling something out there every now and again, it just does get through. At this depth, too, we can afford to, to do these sorts of things. Mm. With Stanley Choi has great hair, Ali. Is that a is that a needle, Nick? I'm I'm, I'm struggling a little bit in that department of late? No, believe it or not, I was just complimenting Stanley. As is often the case, it had nothing to do with <laughs> you. <laughs> Joy. King, queen. Back at it, we presume. Presumptions are safe. Stanley, another one, no stranger to the nosebleed cash. Another king queen as Grafton will be a customer once more, this time from the small. Queen do suited has real problems. Price deemed right for Thomas Santern. Thomas, by the way, one cash so far in eight attempts here in Jeju at his second ever Triton Festival. Relative newcomer. King Jack six board, top pair for Grafton and Choi. Spadeless across all six cards here. 18. Grafton just coming with lead. It's an interesting idea. His range is fairly ripe with just a king. A lot of king x suited defense from the small. King jack is possible. Let's see if Stanley wants to call or just raise it right now. Merit to both. They're 36 into the middle. Down to heads up, predictably. 
clean turn. With just north of pot to play. Could easily just get in now, chop it up. Forty-four thousand now. As Grafton decides to play it as flat pre. Here we are, Thank all you. in, Stanley <laughs> Choi. I take it. I Uneventful. Take it. I accept the draw. Exchange here, and a line that we don't always see, by the way, Nick, you know the... I enjoy so. seeing off the beaten path lines, <laughs> agreed. Wow! <coughs> nice hands, gentlemen. I have aces one time, him. bro. <laughs> Chopped you up. <laughs> you were the only loser in this hand. So as they find the chop elsewhere, we find problems here. Other feature, Adamo the opener with nines. Nikiforov has flatted the sevens, and now Shingis Satubaya from the button will take us upstairs. Third floor. Like 500 to start. Courtesy of five. Queens. Adamo appears to be channeling KCG a touch here. Go on, Mike. The relationship with the buttons this afternoon appears slightly complicated. And an odd spot for Michael under the gun seven. With a player behind where sometimes calling these three bets isn't necessarily the idea, but we do it anyway. I would imagine all three are circulating through his mind, options-wise. Not to suggest flat is impossible. Oh boy. He does just go for what likely is an idea. And he'll need a nine, Ali. Nikiforov's decision made very simple. Satubayev flicks the call in there, and a disaster has developed early stages. Day two for Mike. You see him kind of look up. This is always a possibility when we take this aggressive sort of posture. Mike is a player who's very unafraid to run it for 50 bigs. Seven-figure pot. Only three players held this many chips coming into today. The only silver lining, of course, is that Adamo slightly covers Satubayev. Does have the 810 going on, call, but call. it's dire. No, I mean, if you call, you call. Okay, that's a start. Six outs to fade now for Satubayev as breath is held and the queens have held. GG Mike. These two have some left. Yeah. Oh? No, 42K no. left. He was the covering stack. Okay, but, I see. Uh, you know, one can I mean, sort of sympathize with hmm? GG Mike. But four bigs spins. is four bigs. Yeah. I call sevens. Yeah. And they're done. Yeah. No, but three way, the pot doesn't get super inflated. You know? Did Nikiforov just point out that he, he formed sevens full? No, I believe he did. So an explosive one there. Mm. 
нормально он записал, да? Да. Чуть-чуть широковато, как будто бы. Слеганца широковато. А, сколько поставил? Сколько? 500? Sort of a, a dampening hey, exchange here, you Are know, you early day two. No. So you the hate video to see bullshit. it, you don't wish it upon uh, anyone. No, I did some, uh, but Adamo some embraces this uh, variance, and sometimes, oh, to well, great effect, 10th well, place finish yesterday in the 150k. The, like, you stay behind for the oh, okay. Well, I mean, I don't care about that. I think Indeed. I don't give a shit. <laughs> Very much the presumed product of these procedures. To truly live, WPT. one must be willing to die. Amir Adamo has shown this many times. Rest in peace, absolutely. Maybe I'll come back. For those that missed it, oh, Macau, right? yeah. or maybe yeah. aren't familiar, Amir Vahidi was really oh, yeah, a, an L.A. legend of the early years of televised poker, and that was WPT his saying. Well. I heard that, yeah. Rings true. And he did, in fact, die. I heard maybe <laughs> going to die. <laughs> I don't know. Just kidding. <laughs> Love it's, Amir. It's not too he soon. He could take yeah. a joke. And by the way, he somewhere he is smiling Salazar down. Salazar getting on after it. That. Ace four off. <laughs> Suited one gapper for Kulev. Small blind. Mm -hmm. He's feeling romantic mm -hmm. about it. Let's see if Hacklin is going to swipe mm -hmm. left. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> King Jack. 9 5 deuce top pair for Kulev. Wheel cutter for Salazar. Now, into a heads-up pot, these sorts of c-bets flow more freely, but into these three-handed exchanges, in particular against both blinds, it does feel slightly more precarious. He does clear the deck of the king-jack, of course not top pair, Nick, as a 10 rolls off. Well said, Ali. This is something of Mauricio's card, as he can connect with the 10 in ways... Kulev can't. The ace of spades is key. The flip side, of course, is Kulev did call with Henrik behind. We know he has something. And his 9-7 of hearts is not delighted in the face of a barrel whatsoever. See how Mauricio wants to play it? Does check. Now the queen on the turn, I would imagine this is also... One of Mauricio's sort of cards. Especially Similar story. Yeah, after the check back on the turn. And what that means when we say it's his card is Mauricio can have Queen Jack off, Kulev cannot. Other things of this nature. It all comes together to yield a third consecutive check out of Alex. And let's see whether or not Mauricio has an appetite for this 122 out there. Kulev a scary guy to bluff. but we kind of know we lose if we just check. Perhaps he could feel Alex's just presence and such. Great start for him. You know, there's something to that. In the live streets in particular, you've been out there in the trenches. There are moments where it does feel as though all of the calculus guides us toward that barrel, yeah. and yet all of the imagery dissuades. Yeah, it's just like, this guy's calling me, man. You got to shake those demons when you're out there. Not saying, Mauricio, you're allowed to just give up in poker. I, I, it may not have been all that. But yeah, it's so real. You just feel somebody on you. Kulev is very tough. I felt it. Even at the final table of the 150K the other day, there was uh, a little bit of that that uh, I think Elton I, was the beneficiary I I of? Card. Yes. Looks 
like a replacement card was needed. Exposed paint of some sort. I like this, by the way, when the dealer put, he keeps it face up on the top of the stub until it's time to burn. This is proper procedure. I like as that to as be well. expected from our crew out here. Nikki four off slid king eight suited there, perhaps not wanting to get entangled with the misdeal. Also a nine ten suited from Shingis. Shingis gone as well. How do they know? Kulev with king jack of hearts. Yeah, had them both in a way. Oh, and we go upstairs from the button. Good luck, Michael. And Adamo finds himself dominating here. Unlike the pot with which left him on this nub. 79,000, what we will play for. He doesn't look thrilled. The reason's obvious, still reeling from the prior collision with the under pair. Not reeling on this 10-4-3 flop though, just needs to fade the king. And more than that, after a queen comes off, we exchange for the aces and nines. So the king would no longer be good for Kulev. But the run out is clean. Flesh wound for Kulev. Eight bigs and the small blind, We there's a chance. Yeah, this was the first hurdle. But, you know, there are others before us, one would imagine, before we kind of restore a sense of actual playability to the stack. By the way, we asked for the shout outs earlier coming from all over Vancouver, British Columbia, Vietnam, and also Jerry Bitsoy says hi from Gallup, New Mexico. Now, Hello, sir. You might be thinking, why would I zero in on that, Nick? Well, I'm going to tell you. On a cross-country so so journey yes. with all of my belongings in the back of a rider truck, uh, you know, bad idea, but I did it. I could go no further, and I pulled off in Gallup, New Mexico, to truly one of the 20. worst motels I have ever stayed in in my life. In fact, one of the few motels I've ever stayed in. I've never Tw done the bed to bugs go from, from Henrik. Okay, Ali. Thing, but that yes. you know, if there had been one of those deals where you can put a quarter in the machine and the bed vibrates, I would not have been surprised. Well, what a great story. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> Ali stayed at a motel he didn't like once. <laughs> it's stuff like that. It's trips down memory lane like this that really we all just... Nobody else needs to be here for it. I'm here for it. Defense from Mauricio. Henrik with some stuff. Indeed you are, my friend. And Salazar here for this top pair. Great board after defending. K, check called. Turn brings no help to Henrik's doorstep. Uh, uh. Perhaps toying with lead, Salazar. Or donk, if you will, he does check. That is the colloquial term. Not sure its origins, but nevertheless, it goes check, check now. Henrik needed the ace instead of nine rolls off, and things feeling comfortable enough, one would imagine, for Mauricio to pursue. I would think in the face of check, check, turn, we feel quite good about our tens and threes with the shared kicker.
I'm not <laughs> trying to figure out if this ace high is good. It does pay it off. It's a bit interesting. The ace of clubs is sort of good. It interferes with ace seven and ace nine of clubs, perhaps. That didn't three bat. He shows a bit of his feist, Henrik. Yeah. And a nice pickup for Mauricio Ali. 35K earned. As Hecklin's curiosity costs him modestly. Obviously, one of the three biggest stacks coming into this one. It has been an offer so far in Jeju for Hecklin. Obviously, it would be very nice to finally find the money. Expensive proposition. It's been a weird offer, too, with two straight stone bubbles, one of them mm -hmm. again a first and second in chips collision. Nasty. Where he had kings against ace-king, but we move on. For Salazar, on the other hand, here at his first ever Triton, he finished 13th in the 50K Turbo Bounty. That one didn't make the stream. Dan Smith, the eventual champion, but he was 0 for 7 going into that one. So his plight, somewhat similar to Hecklin's. Good luck, sir. Goes in, minus a chip, and oh. he will be getting some action, Ollie. Yeah, Salazar has got medicine. And do we trap or isolate? Let's see. It would require quite a bit of hand, would it not, for Tang to feel like coming along from the big if we flatted 73? Well, something like a flat might induce ace-jack in particular, but I hear you, Ali. He does just three bet. Decision was always easy for Danny. It feels Danny looked at the queen and gave himself a little sweat on the second he is gone. Michael, happy to see Ooh. that he's live. For the time being, this medicine being force-fed. One sixty-eight in the middle. No king or nine, though. And now the light flickers for the Dominator. Working the mustache. Can he bring in the cowboy or the nine? No. And with that, we GG lose one Michael. of the more exciting players in any given field that he enters, Nick, but perhaps a sigh of relief for the parties present here at this feature as the Aussie out of here. So seven left behind. Kulet, 186 bigs. Akifarov, 141. Satubayev now has surged. Seven figure stack in front of him. You see Tang and Hecklin slightly sub seven. So this is a this is a setup where a lot of these guys are wondering why I gotta be out here with the stack this deep when I could be so much cozier elsewhere in the room. I would agree with that, Ali, but the flip side is sometimes we just really ascend, you know, when it comes in. Never deep stacks are around each other. It's always on their mind how sweet it would be to stack the other one. Welcome, Waikin Young. My first look at him this series. Cool player. Waikin, son of Triton co-founder Richard. Young. I just enjoy course. watching him play. Hecklin back at it. Just to put a button on the Dominator, Nick, it has been a relatively fruitful Jeju trip for him. Three for eight coming into this event with two 10th place finishes the 24th place finish. So while Henrik is stone bubbling, the Dominator kind of final table bubbling out there. Very different proposition. He was very close, Mike, to a huge trip. Danny defends the small. 
Note the creativity from Henrik. You know, not to overstate a queen five suited open from the cutoff, but he's a guy that embraces. Put red chips in someone. The offals, if you will, you know, doesn't all have to be filet mignon. 23. Both blinds are long for this ride. Note the domination for Nikiforov. He's 6 4. No pair anywhere. Can you call service when you get the chance? Thank you. You know, it's the ace axes are supposed to be Henrik's. Two checks in front of him. Interesting card, Danny, with the Broadway draw. King of clubs blocker. Ilya with the club draw. Just have a look at the menu. Thank you. Bets from Danny exert pressure on things like sevens. Check is understandable as well. So many spots like that in No Limit where bet and check are both understandable procedures and ideas. And of course, there are times where we're meant to do only one thing every time. It's easy to get caught up in the, well, check sometimes, bet sometimes, but there really are so many spots like that. And for Danny, in the face of 40, we're essentially ahead of all other draws. And of course, we fall to the value. Let's see. Bit of an interesting spot for Danny. Maybe we would prefer continuing without the king of clubs as we're seeking to assign that to the opposition. Yes, king five of clubs for them now as possible, increasing the relative strength of our king jack. Yeah. It does fold. Nice pickup for Niki Forov. Take a peek and see how his festival's been going. Utilizing the Triton Poker Plus app, we can see that he has played eight events coming into this one and just one cash secured that was in the 50k 7 max for 126,000 here at his first ever triton playing under the estonian banner you ever gotten out there into eastern europe former like soviet republics that whole area you know i don't believe i have i mean i've never been to russia or the ukraine no there could be a little bit of Riga in our future. I'm Belarusian I by blood, but really, maybe I have to go to the homeland one day, have some meat and potatoes, walk around, some Not to say that, things. that that's all they eat, but you know. It, it is. There, I don't think Belarus is really kind of known for its culinary exploits. Root vegetables, perhaps a smattering of goat. Yeah, I heard you were talking about our food. Why Why you don't come here? <laughs> Tell me. Tell me what you think. Now you can't say nothing, Ali. <laughs> because your tongue is cut out of your... <laughs> yes. No. All right, come on. Yeah, that was a bit much, Ali. I was I'm just thinking a little smack. <laughs> 22 to go from Henrik. Oleg is in. Problems are evident for Ustinovich. Oh, Go on, Henrik. Now the path to a sevens victory is even more challenging. Running sevens or running eight, nine. Does extend some understandable rope. No patronage from the oh. under pair. And now Man. Oleg thinks this is a delightful scenario. As you and I know, and everyone at home, 
this could be curtains. And note how deep they are coming into this one. I'm not sure, 69 in the middle, Nick, whether or not the levels of greed required for it all to come forward are upon us, but... Well, they both have 90 bigs. Roads to these bigs all going in are possible. Henrik begins with 55K, and for Oleg, mm. both options are understandable. Call keeps an eye on the equityless barrels, and it does mitigate disaster against tens or jacks. But of course, raise has to be a way to go. Very good start for Ustinovich. Chooses the flat, and now note that the ace-king arrives courtesy of this queen. It's an interesting card. It's more of Hecklin's card, as he opened and Oleg flatted. So we can assume he has ace-king more often. 179 in the middle. Ideas sizing-wise for Henrik aren't entirely clear to me. I could see him going fairly big. Full pot plus? We have an amazing hand. We want to get called, but it is a full yeah. pot plus kind of hand. And what a nice size from Hecklin, really caging Oleg, who snaps. Yeah. And that's not a nod of affirmation, but rather disgust for Ustinovich. It could have gotten uglier out there for those sevens if other paths were traveled here at his first ever Triton Festival. 0 for 5 coming in, and obviously some damage done to the efforts to find a cash here. Meanwhile, we flip it back over and find boss Paul Pua, top pair, top kicker, up against the under pair of CZ. Preflop, he opened to 20,000. CZ flatted from the button. Here we are with 65 in the middle. Deliberations. There's the bet. 23. CZ wants to peel one off. Understandable with the spade. Board pairing three. One wonders if he will stay curious here. Fifty-three thousand from Pua. And that will end the affair with the sixes for CZ. Taking a look at Boss's Festival so far. Nick, here in Jeju. He's played four events, cashed 45th in the 25K silver main for 42,000, and has not found the money Brother. since then, although plenty of money earned across his Triton career. 17.2 million in earned, 35 caches, one title. And he's been at this since all the way back in the Philippines in 2016. Very few have that line item on their CV. Tour has just grown more and more since then. Can you recall, Nick, when when the Triton Poker Series first came to your attention? You know about how long ago it was? Honestly, can't. It feels almost like it's always been here. You know how that goes? Sure. But the, the kind of murmurs and whispers I remember of big cash games in Macau that kind of were the, the seeds. I do remember that. Alexander Kachev of Germany, limping in front of Paul, bottom of range, and these are ideas that we see on display. Very much so. You can see Mr. Pua knows his ranges. By the way, Ali, is that last name Kachev confirmed? Yes. Very yes. nice. Had, had to effort that one because 
I mean, surely the TK, the, I mean. He strikes me as an excellent player. Open-ended for Alexander. Bottom pair for Mr. Pua. Thirty-five ahead to this point. Kachev checks over. Who was quite nice in these situations, by the way, as we see him checking back. And note now, courtesy of that check back, when the ace arrives, representation is perhaps slightly more credible. Agreed, we, Ali. We can see, of course, bottom pair just has its merits. Second check in front. One could feel content to just check again if they're in Pua's seat. Yeah, some King X9 X is still approached in this fashion in front of us. And the run out, not bad. Kicker issues resolved in the best of ways. Wouldn't be shocked to see Alexander just give up, although bluff is understandable. It's a little bit interesting, this spot. Limp raise call checked all the way. It just feels in this line like we're often getting called. He is doing it and picking a very difficult size to deal with full pot. He is double blocking suited kings, which feel possible in this line. It all matters. But we've seen boss with bloodhound-like sniff in these setups. He put CZ on the stone 7-7 seven seven to begin today correctly. Really lovely there from Kachev. Yeah. Go on, Alexander. Well, beautiful bluff. No surprise that here is at his first <laughs> ever Triton, despite only cashing once in eight attempts coming into this main event, Nick. That cash was for a cool bean. One million and change second in the 25K silver main. Flipping back over to the other feature now. By the way, word has come down from a few people, he's not at this particular table, but that Squiddy's hat with the Korean on there loosely translate to skilled person. Or okay. Something along those lines. All right, very nice. There you see Colombia's Mauricio Salazar. First to act in this next one. Danny Tang's not your favorite to have to tussle with on your left on the day. Danny, Indeed. Of course, leading the Ivan Liao Player of the Year standings in front. Five titles last year for Danny. Shocking. Not in terms of aptitude, but just in terms of the obvious insanity of it. Yeah, it doesn't matter who you are. Five is just a wild number. Six from Kuhn. They right. both went off last year. Mm -hmm. Nothing wild about Ace King. And I'm in raise. Kulev, box cars on the button. Tricky hand, multi way for Oleg. Does bow out. 65 in the middle. 107 of 216 remain. Oh, uh -oh. it's a bloody day so far. We saw set after set. Now this one. Niki Forov in all sorts of trouble. Very deep stacked. One, two, three to start the day. What a spot for Kulev, I believe. Barring an insane run out, we have a new chip leader on our hands, Ali. Excuse me, he's already the chip leader. But it appears an extension is forthright. Fuse lit here. Twenty three thousand grams of dynamite. For Niki Forov, the best turns, little does he know, is something like the Seven of Hearts. 
I don't think safety will be the product of the nine of diamonds. You know, Alex is just affect and kind of calmness. Yeah, the canvas is blank. The canvas is blank, Ali. I like that. 111 in the middle. Check 40%-ish call. Hundred and seventy-two thousand. And he's going really greedy. Suddenly the Chateau Briand. Something like one hundred and fifty percent pot, the Briand Dolly. And for Niki Forov with Ace King. We're obviously drawing dead sometimes, which is unfortunate. But do we presume that when we're drawing dead, those hands don't want to lose us, and so they're less apt. He is in. To behave in this manner, obviously. Excellent Nikiforov. point, Ali, and this is very dire for Niki Forov. And credit to Kulev, of course, because. Incredible size. You know. Great sense of awareness and just such. Found it. Oh, oh, and a brutalish card for Ilya. Now he counterfeits aces and fives right. and aces and sixes. And that's very key. Fives and sixes for that matter, which might feel compelled to bluff the end. Brutal card for Niki Forov to navigate. He went 40%, 150%. Let's see what percent he comes with now. 455 in the middle. Ilya being escorted to the chair. Who we'll have such a great player to watch because we know he has the bluffs. So when you have the bluffs, you get to pour chips in with value. Four fifty. Oh, he's really reaching, Ollie. High caliber. And another lethal injection of chips, 600,000. He's going for 130% pot now. Not trying to lose his man, but trying to get the very most he deems possible. And for Niki Forov, this is brutal. And again, the same suspicions that are peaked by turn sizing. Chord struck once more here on the river. And these are well spent time banks. Counting down what the situation will be if he calls. He'll be left with just 600,000. This is half of his stack. No, by the way, 60 big, 600,000. It's not the end of the world. Feels like he's calling. It's just so tough. Yeah, it does very, flick it in. very reluctantly. Ooh. 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 What a pickup for Kulev, Ali. Note the reaction, by the way. I do think that the 5 6 might have been what he thought was being shown there that for a second. Come to mind. Perhaps checkable on the end, but maybe <clears throat> has to bluff. Top two for Pua, straight for Saliba. Problems for Boss as we flip it back over to the other feature. This one began with Saliba making a 20 to go. Boss flatted. Big blind of Santurn came along. Two checks in front of Pua. He barreled 25,000 on this flop. Two players called. A round of checks when he made. <laughs> His hand on the turn and then with bet and call of 54 in front of him. Good fool, Boss. Got away and. Ah, 
哎呀，没开拍三打，什么事都没有，可以三打。Note by the way, Saliba did flat there, looking wow, to draw. Pua in there, so might have. The cool. third heart did come in, but yes. still, it was crafty from Saliba. Agreed. Cautious, but crafty, as Choi, Queen Jack suited. We're in the money. Did we make the money? The bubble bus? I hope so. Wow, congrats, everyone. <laughs> I take it. Being We're told fast. that Luca Vivaldi is preparing an announcement Focus. with Maybe respect to the prize pool, we're going to take that announcement as Kachev is going to take ace queen. Choi's problems obvious as he rips in there for 11 <sighs> bigs. This is too much hand, even against the under-the-gun jam of Choi, is it not, for us to... Yes, it's going yeah. in, for sure. It is in. Form of a call. So invitations for other parties to join, and might Ding Biao click accept on this evite? Probably not. Nope. So he will leave Alexander Kachev to do his work against Choi in a 241k pot. Oh, Choi finds the jack. He certainly does. Go on, Stanley. Interesting turn does bring the hearts. Not the five of hearts, of course. I call the least the welcome I call the oh, yeah? of trip jacks. Right color, wrong suit for Kachev's purposes. On the end. Huge double for Stanley. A bit sick for Kachev. Yeah, yeah Stinger. I mean, we all like Stanley, but use them for yourself, you know? It's a chunky balance transfer there. Meanwhile, back at the other feature, we have action in progress. Once more, there you see it on the side. Why Kin Yang opened it. Salazar flatted. Queens against Ace Deuce. Check called 25,000 on the strength of Ace High in the gut shot on the flop. We've arrived at the turn and a second check upon us. Should do it. Half pot, roughly, the sizing from Waikin. And indeed, it does do it. Salazar bowing out. See what Luca's got to say. All right, players, sorry for the interruption. I'm going to be quick. I'll stop the clock, not only to celebrate the success of this event, the biggest main event in Triton, but a milestone in the world of tournament poker. From the whole Triton family, our sponsors, and LEK to you, players, the real stars. Thank you. Your unwavering support have shattered records and rewritten what is achievable in the world of poker. With 216 entries, we officially have the biggest $100,000 buy-in ever held. Please give yourself a big round of applause. Your prize pool has been confirmed. We're going to pay 39 spots with the 39th player finisher receiving $151,000. And the winner of this record main event will take home $4,330,000. Best of luck, everyone. <laughs> oh, look at that. Vivaldi clearly <laughs> taking some rightful pride in what him and his team and everybody here at the Triton Poker Series has accomplished. That extra large trophy, the Triton 
and Jacob and Company collab Epic X Watch and 4.3 million plus. Going to go to the eventual champ as 39 are going to get paid here. Biggest ever 100K ever assembled. For 39 to get paid in 100K, it's just an odd sounding statement. Mm. Bravo, Triton. They continue to break records, Ollie. Unbelievable. Blinds have ticked up a touch. You know, we say it's unbelievable, and yet for anybody who's come out here and gotten a taste, you can understand how word of mouth has always been the most compelling form of advertising. And people go back into their local pockets, talk about what happens out here, and a couple of more people come with them next stop, there generally there, speaking. There you go, Ollie. Ace-queen suited for Y. Ken Young. 25 to go. Not the King Jack finding the muck behind Wykin. Uncertain whether or not King Nine suited has similar ideas, and now it becomes clear. No, sir. Oleg flatting. Twenty five. Tang comes along. Okay. Third participant. Quick check on the Jack 8 Deuce board. Two overs versus the diamond draw. That is what is of interest. Why can seeing what's what? For Oleg, let's see, merits to both. Raise right now clears this one. Call is highly understandable, allows inferior diamond draws to continue from the big. Does go with call. And now adds a pair to the equation as he is suddenly in front of the ace-queen high. Wykin has to be a bit concerned. It does not interfere with some value hands, but does not check. Yes, Ali. You're not simply referring to Kulev on his left, because in that photo and that image there, obviously the concerns for me right. are tussling with that gentleman. But, of course, the matter at hand. The here and now, Ali. Mm -hmm. Checking over and a check back from Oleg. Very who, understandable from Oleg. And might Wykin want to represent this king? We do beat nut flush draws that missed. But it's interesting. Ustinovich. Kings and nines. What are we targeting other than the missed nut flush draws if we're Y kin? 9 10 suited, 7 8 suited, 5s with a diamond, etc. Even a jack that decided to be coy on the turn. He goes for 95. And for Oleg in the face of this size, I would think we have enough to just put Y kin in. But either way, this one is going Ustinovich's way. Greetings, HeroFold101 in the chat. Welcome. Well, let's see what kind of appetite Ustinovich is going to have. Does he want to add one more course to the meal? Looks that way. Of course, for Yang, no decision required.
Well, for those that like to get their click on, and by that I mean play a little online poker, why would you ever do it anywhere other than the world's largest poker room, GG Poker, where the World Series of Poker Super Circuit is taking place now through the end of the month, just a few days remaining. It's also where one can officially qualify for Triton events. It all happens over at GG Poker. Pay them a visit today and get involved. New player sign-up bonuses also available using promo code Triton underscore 2024. Meanwhile, Ding Biao, Ace-10 elsewhere. Quarter to skate. Seven, eight off suit. Coming along, swing and a miss in both camps, although clear interactions for Ding on the King Queen Deuce board. Both parties spadeless. Easy check and release there for Kachev. Early goings here, day two of the 100K, perhaps a tea or a coffee being turned to there. Love the early going action at Triton. Do you feel like early on when people are getting settled in, they're less apt? Obviously, we have some data points to the contrary. To kind of find the big collisions to, That's the you thing. Know? It's a mixed bag, and to just observe it and watch it unfold, it's real poker. You know, final tables are, of course, too, and they're very interesting in their own right. But this is poker that a lot of us can really relate to. Almost mirrors a pseudo cash game, not entirely. Ace Queen suited for Ding, eights for Choi, low jack, high jack. Worthy of note, by the way, to kind of put a button on the assessments 105 remaining at present of the 216 entries. Only 39 are going to get paid. So the finish line is quite a ways down the, you know, the path, and, and so is the money bubble. The haul is long. One can kind of understand seeing some more patient procedures from some that are so inclined. Bit of a marathon, not a sprint. Right. Remain. And a bit of a bad board for two eights of Stanley Choi. Played as the flat pre behind second pair and the Broadway gutty. Do these boards favor us adequately to feel comfortable c-betting? As you see Ding Biao checking, and I feel as though some of this often has to do with what is the range of the flatter and how well is it interacting here, perhaps better than our ace-queen from time to time? It, it has much to do with that. Ding's particular hand is a very comfortable check and makes a lot of sense. We don't really want to bet and get raised on the flop. We have to go with it if we do. Mm. But certainly bets can be afforded to Ding on this board with certain hands. So the pot stays at 80 as Choi checks back. See if the jack is deemed unpleasant. Perhaps. That which is responsible for now a second check in front of Stanley. And might he begin to think that these eights are good? He's trying to find out to the tune of 20% pot. Mm -hmm. And for Ding, seemingly nowhere to go but call. And it would be unorthodox, but in the face of check, if Stanley turns these eights into a bluff, it's an awfully difficult spot for Ding. Well, note the arrival of a third heart. This is of some relevance, unblocked by the two clubs. 
Troy has a heart in hand. And Trip Jax would have some credibility here. One ten in the middle, one seventy one back. Choi shuts it down. Take it, Mr. Biao. Not the Dior white tee, by the way. One could always, you know, opt for something. Designer brand never gets by you, Ali. Kirkland signature. It's still a white shirt, but uh, there's quite a bit more flavor on the on the Dior. It really doesn't ever get. I'm, I love it. You the do. way these guys come out and just no no shame whatsoever in it, nor should there be. They're just as flashy as you want to be. It doesn't stick out in any way, shape, or form here at Triton. It's par for the course. Now Nine's then. now for Ding. Ooh, Choi. Will be involved here. And one could see a third scoop. Ace King typically behaves in this manner. And for Ding, this is a bit scary. Early position versus early position. We're all assuming it's going all in shortly. Stanley with a bit of posturing. He knows. Not the most elegant deployment of a stack, but nevertheless, all in declared. And this obviously makes ace track suit its decision. Far simpler than it would have been otherwise. King Queen suited in turn as well. Boy, the trap might have been on there if he flatted. Boy, yeah, two beautiful hands right? to the left, although. Ace five suited was involved as well. Solver bait, but uh, nevertheless, and these are hypotheticals. Ding. Lines at 12K now. 14 some odd bigs. Good luck, gentlemen. Always happy when you're not up against the over pair, but never comfortable when you're up against two over cards. And that's where Ding Biao finds himself wow, here. Acting there, standing. Choi doesn't Still look nervous. Acting. Like it. <laughs> Didn't do the three like me, but. Still. 372,000 in the middle, and there's the ace. Harm done to the nines, which now pick up an open ender. Tens and fives would do the trick. Nina as well. Instead, it's a tray. Nice fade for Stanley. <laughs> Flavorful on Ding today, by the way. The little transparent skeletonized number. Also, you know, I, I get into the fashion thing. The watches out here also. There's some delightful stuff. I, for me, mm. I just like seeing the epic X's on people's wrists, right? It's sort of a, hey, I don't know if you know who I am, but just take a look at this. You can't buy it. You got to win a Triton main, my friend. Facts, Ollie. Here in this main, put some respect on my name, perhaps. Punat Punsri, Stephen Chidwick, Henrik Hecklin, always rocking them. Fours for Pua. See if he wants to rock and roll. 
motioned to the blinds that he would like something of a count. Grafton spread his stack. He's just putting it in. Seemingly a nice choice from Pua into the 11 bigs of Grafton and the 20 of Santurn. This is the idea. Pua Razor, Ollie. And for King, Queen off. Mm. I think we likely run it, although a little bit annoying, half of the field left, but I believe we just give it a try, Ollie. Yeah. No. Good and luck, gentlemen. Thomas agrees. <laughs> so here we are playing a 462k pot, obviously. Ua. Recognizing it's a flip, the coin weighted ever so slightly in his favor. 462 in the middle. No king or queen, though. As the set of fours. A reasonable D mic yes. from Thomas. GG, sir. GG's <laughs> issued. Pua <laughs> has a great laugh. Oh, yeah. It kind of gets into the room, too. Like, if he's out there enjoying himself, you don't need to be nearby to know it. He gave up hope. Yes. The yeah, that's a mistake. Yeah. There's a lot of good turns. I'm bad in ya. A lot of action turns. Diamond Jack. You should. This one. I have A6. Like he saw the four and he was A6. Dead. Oh. A6, I'll make straight. Yeah. Ah. Would have been. If you raise, I go all in. Is it? Yeah. yeah. But you shove, I thought. Mm. Note Crafton suggesting if the normal raise size you wouldn't have given up had open, been you would have the exactly. choice from Pua, like Grafton would have jammed block. over the top. <laughs> yeah, and I'm like not good sure <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, the response yeah. would have been. I would imagine <coughs> Grafton not A6 deep seven? enough to, no. A6 to dispense A6 the force. No. <clears throat> Nevertheless. We march on, absent Francis Thomas Santurn. Note the re-entry period closed as of the start of play today. Several players max late regging or re-regging. Unclear as no. now fours not going to be uh, in the same spot that uh, Boss uh, had them in earlier. Gotcha. No, yeah. Aces. So back, move back to Hong Kong. You will move back down something. Really? Just jams it. We consider a slow player click, but it's a bit ridiculous off of just 11 bigs. He does put it in. Okay. I believe CZ gave him a spin or he snap folded. Doesn't say yet, but it looked like Kacha flipped his hand up. Yeah. Okay. We're in there. It would appear as the Singaporean and the German play for 286. Kacha have the covered party. CZ looking to hold. Forgive me, looking to improve. <laughs> Not finding. <laughs> needed four for the time being. Three or five for a sweat. Instead of going five, six, now only two outs would find Kacha out of here. Nine, not one of them. Final six, is it? 131. 131. Now CZ One, finds next. himself towards the bottom of the pack. I'm next. I'm next. I'm next for all that. I'll flip with oh, you. I have the button again. Okay. If I get fours. I'm playing. No gamble, no future. No gamble, no future. I Truer words never spoken, Ollie. Super early on in my, we still in go my to days in a poker room. Yes. I mean, yeah, I'm talking. Yes. Maybe other months almost. A good okay, nice. 25 years ago. Go on, Ollie. That saying was still in the room, and it persists. 
to this day. Ren Lin, of course, always has that little No Gamble No Future patch Ren that he throws out anytime he, he jams. Look at this. I don't have four, so. Sometimes too much gamble, you, you, have you know, lack yes, of future. Too much gamble, no future as well, <laughs> no, Grafton in dire boring. straits. What's that? Is it too much gamble? Jack nine offsuit on the button? I don't think so for ten. Take a <laughs> but it is unfortunate yeah. to run into the ace nine. Okay. Sure. Ding Biao. Happy to be a customer. And happy to hold the lead on this nine six trade board and not be looking at a heart across the way. The jack. The only card that keeps Squiddy intact, instead the ace. In style for Ding, GG Sam. Yep. We lose another and we're under 100 players, Ali. There are some shorties in the room. So the march may be brisk. Still plenty of runway between here and that 39 that'll make the money. Little suited connector here for Nikiforov. He was among the biggest stacks coming into the day prior to being set over set it. No, it was Ace King versus Set. I apologize. Kulev, the beneficiary. Ace five cut off. Takes us upstairs. King four off. Digs for Salazar. Top pair, the product of that defense. A whiff for Kulev, 66 in the middle. Mauricio checks. 16. Quick quarter pot from Kulev. Little stare down as well. Not a stare down, a glance across. Of course for Mauricio, this is nice. Another 40 into the middle. There's a wet one on the turn, the seven of spades. Is indeed a wet one, and for Kulev, we're certain we don't have the best hand at this point. But with just red ace five, do we want to keep firing? Put pressure on something like queen eight of diamonds. He is doing it, and even this one of Salazar is not particularly comfortable. Can't really fold a king, but none of us love being in this spot. And we get the sense that Kulev is really starting to lean on everyone with such a healthy stack. Sub 100 players, 39 get paid. And this may not be the end of the story for Kulev. Salazar does call. Setting himself up for perhaps a third barrel on the end is Kulev here with boss stack. And there are very clear targets for Kulev. 6-9, an 8 with a spade. 7-9, seven, 7-5, seven, which we interfere with, but it's possible. And even something like this, just a king that lacks a spade as well, unbeknownst to Kulev. Of course, he unblocks the spades too. And I would think for the most part, when Kulev enters this line, he 
at the very least feels somewhat compelled to blast his way out. He is doing it. Will Salazar find the call, Ali? We pretty much always lose to value if we're Mauricio outside of chopping occasionally. The third barrel, 95K in caliber. Kula very slick with the way he puts the chips in. Always seems confident no matter what he's doing yeah. or where he's at in his range. With you there. Time bank. Salazar chewing. Shot Kulev a little look, too. Kulev's table image so good right now. He showed down the sixes. Your showdown history, it really is relevant playing live. And it's important to be cognizant of the hands you've played that were shown versus the ones that weren't, and specifically ensure that, you know, your opponent log that data point. Unfortunately for Kulev, Salazar does find the call here. Good call, sir. Way to find it. Middle pair for Saliba in the back door. Top pair for Boyvin. Looks like a single raise pot. 26K pre coming from Thomas. Saliba defended the big. Nice size from Thomas immediately being annoying and having Saliba in all sorts of trouble. But with too much hand to step away at this point. A lot of people just kind of always go small. Oh! And that is not the one for Thomas. And what a card for Saliba, who we would expect to see lead here an awful lot, if not always. 10 in the I middle. Just check, excuse me, being very slippery, Saliba. <coughs> and Thomas optically has a compelling bluff candidate. Holding an ace, a 10, and the ace of diamonds now that a third one has arrived. If Saliba were to block or go for quarter, the first play that comes to mind for me is just all in. Easier said than done. I'm not even sure it's the idea. But when you just interfere with the nuts in such a robust way, it comes to mind. He goes for 75. And for Thomas, this is a weird spot after check. Big type sizing on the flop. Call. Check, check, bet. We really don't ever beat value, and Saliba would have to be turning a six into a bluff, or perhaps something like 10 jack. See how Boyvin plays this one, Ali. Aces would be a part of the program time to time, lines such as this he for him. He could have aces, he could have tens, and he could have the nut flush. Ace queen is possible for that matter as well. Boyvin, very capable, Ali. By the way, would think Fold is crossing his mind as well. The Belgian is three for eight in terms of caches coming into this event. Jeju, his first ever Triton Festival. He has a 38th, a 28th, and a 12th under his belt, so improving 
each time he does find the money to does a higher just finish. slide at worst hand, fair enough. And a nice pickup for Saliba. Boy, he really could have been placed in a blender if the Rays were to come forward on the end there. That would have indeed been the blender, confirmed. Drop that base, Holly. <laughs> oh, it's gone. No. Yeah. Oh. The one time that you wanted to indulge in it a touch. Yeah. Surely. <laughs> Queen Jack then for Hecklin here at the deep stack table. Depends what yap means. If it means what I think it means, then yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. A sub plus one. <laughs> Ducks for Tang. See if he wants to get quacking out of the small. Call. Oh. Yeah. Set minor. And Kiefer off. Joins the fray. 6-5 turns into bottom pair and a gutter for the lead here on a nine high rainbow board. Note, two overs and a gutter for Hecklin. Preflop Razor. Two checks in front. Five thousand settled upon by Henrik here in an effort to see what's what. The deuces are lost. Ilya's still in. Turn stays removed from what perhaps we expect the unpaired range of Hecklin to contain. For Hecklin, it's nicer if we have a spade. Then we block something like six paint of spades. Second check in front of him, and that's the one piece of paint that doesn't connect with the Dane. Is Ilya content to check one and more time? I think we hear from the Dane on this card a fair amount. He does like to get noisy out there. He does. Goes for 60%. Is this adequate chatter? I like it. It's a size of one pair, which makes a lot of sense in this line. And it does get through. Bravo, yeah. sir. Makes sense and makes chips as the Dane sheds a winner. Courtesy of that river bluff. He's been playing really great from what I've seen this series. It would be nice to see him shake off those bubbles and finish in style, perhaps grand style, Ali. We yeah. shall see. Underperforming clearly, and as a former main event winner, he understands the task at hand. 85 left. Yin sub tongfa? I don't know what the last part means. Yin sub tongfa. Name? No Tongfa or Tongfa. Hazard a guess? Obviously. Bluff? Yeah, okay, I see. Ah, <laughs> you Portuguese get it, right? Yeah, bluff. Yeah. Mm. Tongfa, go on. You go, you know, right? I, I, think so. I have no clue what it means. Oh, you don't know. <laughs> I was just hoping oh, maybe oh, you oh, come Thank yeah, God I wasn't like hazarding yeah, guesses. Tens for Y Ken Yong, it's in. <laughs> He's going to speak fluent Chinese. <laughs> Chat, do you know what that means? No, I, Tongfa? I, I just forgot what. What it meant, but Someone I don't know. out there looking at you, Kenny like Shung, by the way. He's been very uh, ever present in the chat each and every day that we've been streaming. Thank Shout you out for to the him. for the support, for the sweats. Big and slick for Henrik. And for the translations, by the way. Indeed. A flat from Henrik. And he'll be braced for anybody that wants to 
pop their head up out of the sand behind them here. Let's see. It means same suit from Kenny. Okay. Thank you, Kenny. Timothy as well. Flush from Parker. Same suit, flush, that, that realm. Thank you, guys. Good luck, Ken. On fumes. Can he double? Okay. <laughs> By the way, Hecklin's got a little bit of Chinese under his belt. Many hours, days, weeks, months even spent you know in the nosebleed cash no. games in Macau. That's right, Ali. Doesn't take long yeah, to pick up a thing or two. Here, he wants to pick up an ace or a king and send Wai Kin packing. Not going to happen on the flop, though. Young. Queen? Sits pretty. You said it wrong, so it's not coming. <laughs> Stays that way on the turn. And the river. Okay, cheap, cheap. Clean. Why no, can finding a double? <laughs> no, that's true. Eklund stack can handle it. Very nice. You know, Mr. Young. Earlier today, caught myself looking into. A pit stop in Denmark, never been there prior to heading over to Montenegro, our next stop. I'll actually have to go to Riga before then. So, you know, I'm in the neighborhood. Some of the greatest restaurants in the world out there in Copenhagen. So we're on the wait list. Let's see. Anybody out there, by the way, connects the other for Geranium Hong, 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 Holoratus huh? in the Hong, chat? Hong, tweet Hong. something. You know what I mean? I'm working all angles. Hong, Hong, These are yeah. tough tables. Yes, Nick. Yeah. Ali. Good, good luck with that. I've got, you know, I've got mm, some no. people I can maybe yeah, call in, but I'm going to okay, give it some okay, time. Okay, okay, very, very good. Well, you know, I, I hope that works out well here. for you, <laughs> that you get into <laughs> geranium. Well, As there's 84 like, left in the main. I was trying to learn before COVID, and then COVID happened, and I wasn't Took there. Took Rasti out to a nice meal when we went to Madrid. Diverso, number three in the world <laughs> that's for great. lunch. Ali. Rasti, I don't and know you that you fully enjoyed it. i got to tell you, no lunch should be as intense as that one. It was a... It was a no dinner kind of day well, after that. Uh, no, after that little affair. But Spain, a great food Maybe country. Like sure, this Maybe is 17. known. Okay. Respectfully speaking, landing casino Jeju, not well, a particularly sure. robust food culture here. Uh, disappointingly, because Korean food is it's all, it's is all lovely. Good. But uh, <laughs> I digress. <laughs> oh, thank and thank God you do, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> Ducks for Saligar, Salazar. Yeah, Defendable yeah, yeah, yeah. one for Kin. he's in. Deuces still in front here. Doesn't know it, of course, but let's see whether or not a little question will be asked on this paired board texture. Appreciate it. Yeah. There it is. A little min bet. We love to see these releases. You ever played against a guy where it felt like if you bet the minimum in position as a pre flop raiser after they defended the big, they were just calling with virtually everything just to see if you got that in you on the turn? I have encountered that <laughs> I mean, style. Th those guys are pesky, you know? And eventually we just stop. C betting. I mean, we're not supposed to, but I definitely have found myself like, why bother? This guy's never going away. Mm, when is it? I mean, if I have a hand, sure, but. 30th. 30th of. This one. Uh, there's a good chance I, I could, yeah. Shout out Elijah I mean, Gomez in the chat. He says really the Triton like, merchandise uh, looks so like good. If you up. feel that way, my friend, head over. To the Triton website where you can get mm. in on the new 2024 drop, as so many have. There's that new metallic gold quarter zip. Very exclusive. A lot of people have swooped that one up. 
I've learned, by the way, if you want to get merch, you better get it early in the festival because we do run out of certain styles and sizes when we're on site here. I've been shut out a few times. I did a little damage right off the bat. There it is. Ace Jack looking to inflict a little damage, perhaps. Patrons lacking through to the big. And the dirty diaper into the bin for Kulev. Twitch. What's up, Twitch? How are you guys doing? Where are you watching from? Oh, hang on. I thought perhaps something violent was afoot. It's actually just a glimpse at our next feature table and what a table it's going to be. Webster Lim, Stephen Chidwick, Ramin Hajiev, Victor Malinowski. Yes. All we there. like this. Oh, and here's another helping of characters. Lewis Spencer, Brian Kim involved. There's Ren Lin. Denmark, Montreal, Warsaw. What's up, Jake? Argentina, OKC Sydney, Finland, Belgium, Thailand, another Finland. Little coffee in Lithuania. Right here in Jeju. Romania in the building again. Belgium, Sweden, Sweden. Mexico is here. Fort Drum, Germany, Antarctica, Brazil, California. Thank you, crazy. India. Good to see you, Twitch. What was that South American country uh, again? Brazil. That's not how you said it. Did I say Brazil? You did say that. Oh, and, you know. and I'm tickled, by the way. I, I'm glad you are. <laughs> Lindy, Lindy all in, in great shape. Oh, yeah. He'll be tickled by the fact that he's dominating Ding Biao, who flats the jam. Ten bigs. On their backs, Lindy in great shape. It's been a fairly challenging sort of outing for, for Ding Biao here, standing in somewhat of a contrast to obviously that tremendously deep oh, run. Oh, that jack isn't challenging, though. That he made, yeah. Spade for Lindy, but the light is dimming. Maybe this one's on me. Oh, hang on. Picks up the 10 as an out. Seven outs one time. Can Dylan find it? No. GG Dylan. Painful game we can play. It's a spot that he'll take every single time if given the opportunity, but unfortunately we know some of the time it does not work out, and this is one of them. As Lindy's run here in this 100K main comes to an end. And no sooner do I talk about what seems like it's been a choppy day for Ding Biao than he Lathers King Queen with King Jack. You fought a chop? You fought a chop? Hey, Jose. Colombia is here. La Pochita is in Colombia. You're going, you're, listen. Not like you, but. No, you but know, I love this. I like to though. show respect. I love this. Grand Rapids, Michigan. I'm in the Twitch. We're never respectfully Twitch. And I don't know if this is just like a numbers thing or whatever. I just, you know, the other day we talked about it. Maybe We've we're discussed this Twitch is a little intimidating. Right. We're, we're of the sort of pre-Twitch generation, but we're here. We're showing love and we're feeling love. We're feeling the gauntlet, but. Oh, yeah. Not as know. much as these guys on your screen, but no. of course, nonetheless, somewhat empaths from inside the booth. The pain, the triumph, it percolates through the screen. And percolation from a six here, out of the cutoff. Eight, nine off, no thanks, says CZ. I really thought Boyvin with that Ace of Diamonds 10 was going to find it earlier. Yeah, it's interesting. I wonder how often one is meant to find it in that spot. It really optically looked like quite a hand, but we also sort of know we're beat all the time, and he folded with the worst hand, so. Okay, let me ask you this. If I take it out of a vacuum and I tell you 4.3 milli, largest ever 100K, 39 paid, 
90 some odd left. At the time, I think it's probably 100. Mm. Do we make small adjustments 24? in consideration of circumstance? Only as far as how one might be playing, but that's about it. End of the day, <laughs> it's just another tournament. That is how one must approach it when they're out there. Got to maintain objectivity. You have to maintain objectivity, and if it, this is like... Uh, by the way, Thomas isn't doing that, nor Justin. I know them both. But if one finds themselves in this situation, and it's like, you know, this is my big shot. Like, here we go. Right. It almost never works out in a tournament, in my experience. And it's, and it's a problematic state of mind to find yourself in because it's removing you from your game, Just so to speak. Just playing the game. Yeah. That's what we seek to do at all times out there. And while within the spectrum of the game, adjustments are available, they shouldn't be tethered to things as macro as that which I touched on. But the ideas there on the end just aren't so clear to me, but I would think bluffs are derived from that hand at a real frequency. A7 off for the boss. He's gone. <coughs> He's leaning right now, Ali. <coughs> Looks comfy. And they pull? Choi, suited ace, cut off and problems directly to his left as CZ off of sub 10 bigs. Fantastic timing for CZ. King Jack easily evicted. Now it's another 91 for Choi, 288 back. Cut off button. Is it close? No, I think it's in. See if Stanley agrees. He's gone. And not to harp because this hand was ages ago, but that ace 10, it might not want to bluff as he went big on the flip. That's the thing with poker. It's easy to look at a hand and say, oh, you know, this this is all in. But it's it really is a difficult game. Ideas are vast. Yeah. And thankfully, in spite of the introduction of the solvers, we still do have some latitude to put Not some spin much on things. Latitude, of course. It's a mere suggestion. Although, you know. Hearthstone encounters. Watching from Aruba. Fine, Natalie. Never been to Aruba. Looks beautiful. 26 to go from Boyvan. Don't go taking any graduation trips down there. A lot of hand from Ding. I, I don't get the reference, but I, it's I don't It's probably for the best. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I agree to just leave it alone. <laughs> Was there a murder in Aruba? Is that where somebody went Von missing? You're Sloot, oh, Natalie Holloway. Oh, man, that guy was grotesque. He really was a psycho. Oh. And, and ran it twice. telling his friend. He was a psycho and a moron. So right. You know. It was at a poker tournament, by the way, that the second victim was met down in South America. I don't know if you Man. remember that. Yeah. A judge's daughter, I believe. Yes. Just, you know, I'm not trying to give guidance to psychopaths. Believe, believe they're going on break. Yes. Well, don't then, Ali. Trips for Boyvan. <laughs> Backdoor working for Ding. The raw ace jack as well. Boyvan checks. Two in the middle. The issues self-evident for Ding. Starts it with a check back, and it was nice, but now the deck really looking to cost him some chips as an ace of clubs rolls off. Very much so, Ali. Brutal turn for Ding.
Thomas going big right away. Which is often an idea on 10-10 boards when you raise from early-ish position, as we have offsuit 10x that our opponents don't have. That's always a major driving force in quote unquote when you can go big. Mm. You can go big whenever you want naturally. And for Ding, we're already a bit sick. He is keeping an eye on things. Understandably so. Great sizing from Boyvin on the turn. So now the pot grows to 332,000 as Boyvin fills up on this river. Let's see, the jack no longer being played as the kicker. It does interfere with King Jack, but indeed the kicker is relegated to non-existence. see how greedy the Belgian wants to be here. Oh, ho, ho. very is the answer. He's going for 120% pod. And note, by the way, the significance of the 400 in relation to his 554 and also in relation to the 527 back for Ding let alone the pot. Very much so, and for Ding, it's a little bit interesting. What are Thomas's bluffs here, by the way? Small pairs? Something random-ish? Not that easy to find. We're not looking across the way at an ace if we're digging the out here, are we? We're not looking at just an ace in this line. I don't think, at least. Eight, nine suited, perhaps, as possible. Are failed hearts involved? Generally, in these spots, we don't see hearts for bluffs, although this is early, early, so it's not as relevant as it is in other spots. And the jack blocks king jack. It also perhaps blocks jack nine of diamonds, which might be possible. But it interferes a bit more with king jack off. He's trying to size him up. Tom is pretty stoic. Potentially treacherous moments for Ding Biao stack. Late first frame here. Can he get away, Ali? And yeah. he does, bravo, sir. Making the right decision is something Ding Biao has certainly shown us plenty of here. On the river? The Triton. Yeah. On the Super river. Super Hammer Series. And Boyvin hauls it in. Looks like he was concerned about perhaps some time bank markers needing to be taken down there at the end. But here is a glimpse at the outcome of that exchange and all those before it, 886,000 for the Belgian. He will be the chip leader at that feature table, which will be bowing out and seating way to two new feature tables. Back at the desk with you here, day 200K coverage, Triton Super High Roller Series from Jeju, South Korea. Ali Nijad, Nick Shulman, and a frame, by the way, Nick, that, uh, that gave us violence early, quite a bit of it in terms of the ace-king sixes hand, set over set when Henrik checked a set of tens on the flop. 
then a bit of a lull, but I still find collisions to be ever-present out there, it seems. Indeed. The uh, ace-king sixes was a striking line from Kulev. Getting so many chips in, you know, mm. that is a big key to poker. Driving a bunch of chips in when you have a great hand. There is a little bit of an art to that. Yeah, and there's going to be a little bit of a break as the players have stepped out. I will be doing the same. Nick is going to stick around here at the desk, though. Don't go anywhere. More coverage of day two of the 100K comes your way in just a few minutes. Welcome to the Daily Dose of GTO Quiz of the Day. You're playing an 8 max MTT, 20 big blinds effective. It folds to the small blind, who limps, action on you and the big blind. Why does the GTO strategy prefer to shove with hands like ace 2 off and ace 3 off, but raise small with strong hands like ace king off? Find the answer in the Daily Dose of GTO, our free ebook designed to help you master GTO poker in just 5 minutes per day. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Just sees the wonder. Jeju Shinwa World. Another king queen as Grafton will be a customer once more. This time from the small. Queen do suited has real problems. Price deemed right for Thomas Santern. Thomas, by the way, one cash so far in 
eight attempts here in Jeju at his second ever Triton Festival. Relative newcomer. King Jack six board, top pair for Grafton and Choi. Spadeless across all six cards here. 18. Grafton just coming with lead. It's an interesting idea. His range is fairly ripe with just a king. A lot of king x suited defense from the small. King jack is possible. Let's see if Stanley wants to call or just raise it right now. Merit to both. Another 36 into the middle. Down to heads up, predictably. Clean turn. With just north of pot to play. Could easily just get in now, chop it up. Forty-four thousand now. As Grafton decides to play it as flat pre. Here we are, Thank all you. in, Stanley <laughs> Choi. I take it. I Uneventful. Take it. I accept the draw. Exchange here, and a line that we don't always see, by the way, Nick, you know the... I enjoy the seeing off the beaten path lines, <laughs> agreed. Wow! <laughs> nice hands, gentlemen. Have aces one time, going. bro. <laughs> Another day, another dollar, and by dollar I mean the biggest $100,000 buy-in in poker history, not just setting the record for biggest Triton main event, just the biggest $100,000 buy-in ever at the Triton Super High Roller Series here in Jeju. And Nick, I mean, you've played a lot of big buy-in tournaments. Is there a different feeling when it gets up to six figures? Yeah. There is, and you know that announcement from Luca really had some pop. Biggest 100K ever, as Will said. There is a different buzz about it, and uh, this is an amazing event. Yeah, and I've been here a little over a week now, and I think already 14 seven-figure paydays here. Yeah. So everything kind of feels like a main event, but this has a different level to it, doesn't it? It does. It's very prestigious end of the day there haven't been that many triton main events even though the you know the triton tour has been around for a while now and it's one that everybody overtly wants to win they can never take a win like this away from you and again it's just there have been quite a few hundred thousand dollar buy-ins at this point and this is the biggest one of all time so they're feeling it and it's starting to build in the room it's still early but it's building yeah, and a little bit of a difference in terms of stack sizes, right? We've seen a lot of the shorter stack play. We've talked about that being a theme, five big blinds, 15 big blinds. A lot of 100, even 200 big blind stacks. I, yeah. I've noticed Alex Kulev, who we've already seen a lot of at this series, just kind of running away with this thing. I know it's still early, Nick, but it feels like, you know what I mean? He's he's just got so much momentum. I, I do. I saw that big hand where he uh, coolered Ilya with sixes versus ace-king. And it's kind of cool to see these guys play a much deeper stack depth as we go along in the tournament. Is that one of the themes you're looking for here? 
I love watching these guys navigate deep. The leaderboard right now is pretty stacked. Kulev, Brewer, Leon Sturm, Rabichow, Lucas, Greenwood. We see our tables here. A little bit of everything. Another Bulgarian leading our red table, Faradin Mustafov. Michael Jozov, very good player. Another one of these guys you know about if you're in the game. Ren Lin, obviously, Lady Gaga, Brian Kim, Joey Wiseman, great American player, Jamil Wakil, and Lewis Spencer, the scarf bringing up the rear. Blue table is led by Ramin, who we saw yesterday. Wang up there, Seth Davies, Paulius. That's not the swag lord Paulius, by the way. That's another Paulius here. Ah, nice distinction, I was about to say. It is indeed another swag lord. Here's a swag lord in his own right, Malinowski. And Stevie, who I get the feeling, you know, it's obviously tough. A lot of variants in tournaments, a lot of variables. I'm starting to feel like consensus, he might be the best in terms of the players' opinions. I think that that's correct. Davies limps a raggedy one. Note the small is two-thirds of the big as opposed to the typical half. Victor Malinowski there, limitless online. Very entertaining player. Nice raise from Wang there. Victor is entertaining, fearless player with lots of ideas. Tons of heads-up experience. Those players are in their own special category. Weissman and Spencer entangled. 20. Looks like Weissman considering check raise does interact with the queen quite a bit. Yeah, we've seen a lot of these players take these hands, blocking the king, queen, the queen, 10, and there it goes. Nicely done from Joey. Always a relief to see the snap fold. How's the action been so far today, Nick? It's been really good, Will. We will play into the money tonight. Big money bubble here. 151,000 all the way up to 4.3 million. Top six places all getting seven figures. So, I mean, just, I guess that's just what Triton is, Nick. It's been a staggering series continually broke its own record for biggest Triton ever to begin. And then this one again, breaking the record for 100K buy-in. Welcome Ren Lin, he's gone. Spencer as well. Jamil Wakil, this name and outfit, the, the entire package is strong. Brian Kim, great player. Tons of high stake cash experience, Brian. We see the solver likes these suited kings. Goes for three bet though, as opposed to initial open, which is a cool idea, an aggressive idea, clearly. And for Jamil, multiple options seem to be on the table. He's going time bank. Can he sniff it out? If we think they're a little light, pile comes to mind. Peel seems nice. Perhaps nice is an overstatement, but certainly an idea with a suited ace. And to just fold also comes to mind. Sometimes all three really are on the table. Um, 
Oh, he does find it. Bravo, Mr. Wakil. Really nice. And I've noticed, obviously, there are spots in tournaments where you really only have one decision. Sometimes it's a clear raise, call, fold. Here at Triton, this level of competition, you see more and more spots where I think the aggressive nature, the difficulty of the opponents is leading to all three decisions being in yeah, play. Yeah, well put, Will. It's very true. Ren Lin. Day two here, and so far in these tournaments, due to the faster structures of the previous events, this is the time where we get down to the shorter stacks, but here you see everyone at this table very healthy. Definitely. Faradin Mustafov included. Speaking of health, Nick, have you been taking care of yourself, eating well, getting those walks in? Doing all right. I'm walking around. You know, I wouldn't say I'm eating fantastically well, but, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'm maintaining. You will? Yeah, I, I like the new menu. We had a little menu shift over here at the old uh, hole in the wall and um, had some fried rice before we started. Very nice. All right, there you go. A few veggies in there for you? Or? Yeah, there were some greens. There you go. So, you know, you're getting it all. Tens for Chidwick. We'll be going in for Ponikov's 11 bigs and change. <coughs> All in. And I mentioned Stevie. You know, get, get the feeling a lot of these guys think he may be the best. I feel similarly to Ponikov's, Nick. A lot of respect from his peers. Ponikov's a very tough player to deal with. See if he can win this flip. Classic race here. I don't know about you, but I've sensed a added level of intensity in the air out there in this event. I have as well. Good start for Ponikovs. All right, he's back. One of my favorite tunes. Lady Gaga <laughs> singing a little in beautiful voice on Lady Gaga. You Ladies fan of uh, what's the movie? Uh, her and Bradley Cooper. Just a classic. Won a bunch of Oscars. Silver uh, Playbook, that one? No, that's... Oh, uh, the, oh the Lady Gaga. Oh, yeah, of course. The uh, Yeah, I I, I, no, I didn't really like it. Really? Yeah, it was, uh, you know. It's okay. Kim in command. Ace of spades working for Ren. <coughs> and is this enough to get him in some trouble? It's certainly enough to take him to the turn barring a very big size from Brian, which actually seems quite nice. Ninety-five in the middle, thirty-three bigs behind. Pardon me, twenty-one, as Ren covers Brian. He goes for fifty into ninety-five. And for Ren with Ace of Spades four, the spot is a little bit odd. Unclear to me, Will. How to proceed? So seventy five behind, right? Mm. 
Here he comes, Nick. He certainly does, and I would think, Brian, it's just in right now. What a nice feeling it'll be to just win on the flop, barring Rem putting him on something like Queen-10 of spades and just running it. Yeah, and maybe with kings or aces, a little more likely to trap here, but just happy to kind of get the chips in pot already big, very wet board. I like that, Will. I totally agree. I think tens, jacks, and queens are all in more often than kings and aces. We see the kind of I'm sheepish smile. <laughs> yeah, you Let's know. See. It, it's like you got in there, you thought you were getting away with some candy, and yes. the schoolmaster breaks out the ruler. How much? And like you said, there are some handsy beats, but obviously can't call Brian Let's get King. away. Understandable check raise from Ren. Mistake, mistake. Winner for Kim. He meant, he meant to fold. <laughs> Beneath the act with Ren, is a guy trying to and successfully winning Close poker game. tournaments. Yeah, I get that feeling too. Part, obviously, personality, just naturally a very kind of jovial, outgoing, but, you know, kind of creeping there is a stone cold killer under the shadows. Indeed. Star is Born, great movie. Is that the name of the Lady Gaga Bradley Cooper movie? Yeah. It just got so sad there. It was you know? so sad, it's like, man. What, am I, what are we doing? You don't like to burst some wet ones out, you no, know? I, when I do, but it feels good. It man. was a good movie. You're right, Will. Thank you, Nick. Shit. Thirty to go from Weissman in the hijack. King seven suited for Joe's off in the cutoff. Solver bait. 90. There we go. And something I've noticed. Oh, oh look. go on, Lewis. Wow. <laughs> All in? How much? Should be 305. Joseph potentially thinking about gambling, which would be a really fatal decision if he chooses it, but no, too much. Yeah, too and much. I'm assuming with these suited kings, part of the reason we like to three bet is we block hands like this in ace king. That's exactly right. We saw a clear example of a hand we interfere with. Occasionally they do just have it anyway. And Raman, in that orpin, Vein. You know, I know this guy's a successful businessman, but let's not call him an amateur, please. Agreed. Nice measured flick of the wrist from Stevie. And an all Hajiev flop. Intensity isn't ratcheted up. I know it is, but it feels a little bit like these players are maybe conserving some, knowing that it's a marathon, not a sprint here. I know what you mean. A little bit more relaxed versus those, you know, later kind of shorter stacks yeah. when we know we're playing for it all very likely. We're really going to start to feel it mid to late evening tonight as things get clarified. Look at Webster Lim. Familiar face here. A lot of great Malaysian players. I mean, I, 
I saw, I, I haven't seen a lot of Paul, the boss man, unfortunately. He put on a show but this morning. But just an incredible fold from him I saw. King Queen on like a King Queen board. He came with that one, and also he rejammed. A guy was in the tank. He folded, and, and Paul said 7-7, seven, seven, right? And he did, in fact, just have sevens. Oh, he Negronied him. Limitless here with the ace jack. I've noticed these ace jack offsuits really like to play aggressively, not it's a, just flat. It's a big time squeeze hand, you're right. Sorry. And Wang getting a very good price here. He is a quite small three bet from Malinowski. Also interesting because I would think with a hand like ace jack off, we would really not want to price our opponent in, but this man knows a lot more about poker than I do. And it's another example of them not being as priced in as they look. It's still a tournament, only one go at this thing. Rebuys are closed, so it complements smaller three bet sizes and such. 216 total entries in this $100,000 buy-in. Best in the world on display and the best in the world in chat here. Let us know where you're sweating from. Definitely. Ponikov's just going to limp the king queen. Bit of a trap from Ponikov's. Sometimes everything on the table with a hand like king queen off at this depth. Limp, raise normal, even find some jams. Webster wisely checks and moves into the lead. Ponikov's drawing dead. Lovely turn for Lim. Yeah, Webster, fresh off a seventh place finish in the 50K. Turbo Bounty, the last event here. 6.2 million in Triton earnings, three titles. And Ponikov's gonna bite. certainly is something of a value bet. We never really fold out better. Curious sort of bet for Ponikovs and Webster, who, as you said, is a fixture, has a stranglehold on this one. See how he wants to play it. Merits to raise or just inflating the pot versus an eight or a seven? Does go for raise, would assume this one is over. Well, you never know with Alex. <clears throat> Liverpool in the house. Syracuse. You basketball fan, Nick? I am. Interesting theory. 
that LeBron's path to greatness would have been a lot tougher if the Pistons, who were not a dynasty, but I don't know if you remember, they had Chauncey Billups, I Rick remember. Hamilton, Ben Wallace. They picked Darko over Carmelo. It's the first time I've ever been caught for that. In the same draft. So imagine those teams with Carmelo. Interesting. Went for a whole half to marinate level, on man. that. I think I about see that. that. Think about that. that. For years. Obviously, focus on the poker too, Nick. Don't get too distracted. Fair enough. Nice to see Liverpool here. Love that accent. And I got to say, just a minute ago, Ali Najad brought Nick a coffee, is that, which was shocking to me. Yeah, is that a regular I thing? Him for an Americano as a favor, which I never do naturally. And he comes with an iced, I literally said hot, single <laughs> shot, hot, please. No problem, you know? 15 minutes later, here he is with an iced concoct. It's okay, though. I still appreciate it. Aces for Davies. Go on, Seth. And for Webster, a very reasonable hand. Does just snap fold really nice from Lim. Basketball fans out there in chat. A lot of great players in the league. A lot of great players on the felt and ace queen for limitless. Ponikovs might get into trouble here. This feels like the type of hand that likes to three bet as a bluff. 75. Ponikovs agrees, Holly, and Victor knows Alex's reputation, Webster for that matter, as well. Yeah, and a really interesting spot for Webster. Two very aggressive players, but Victor did raise under the gun. Yeah, that under the gun factor is so real. These two have played a lot together. 360 you have? 315. Let's go for just call. 145 in the middle, Ponikov's in position. Great start for Victor. And obviously a terrible flop for Alex, but I would think these are pretty good blockers. They're decent blockers. He'd love to have a diamond, but he doesn't. Blocks the queen nicely, though, and slow played kings. Would think he goes smallish here a lot. The queen is a scary 45. card for the three better in these spots for this exact reason. The passive range really does connect with it in real ways. He goes for 45. And for Victor, merits of just call or keeping an eye on things like ace 10 off this particular hand. But simply raising now is understandable procedures. It's kind of cool to see Victor doing the calculations in real time. It really is, and a fantastic choice from him to start. Really kind of knows his man.
easy to raise flop there and just kind of get scared of bad cards coming. But a really nice choice from Victor to slow play. And these players like Alex that are so good, they make your life a living hell. If there's one way you can kind of get them, it's using their aggression against them. That's exactly right. We saw those shades, by the way, on the side. Nice snap check from Ponikovs. And a little bit of a difficult card to navigate. Does Victor go for it all in the form of two-thirds pot? Or does he block? Or perhaps even check? We'll find out shortly. I think his hand is barely worth two-thirds pot. And the jack is a very real card for Ponikovs to connect with in regards to king jack and ace jack, which are high frequency three bets. Looks like 55 was declared, 75 rather. And for Ponikovs, this is brutal, Will. I mean, Victor has played this hand to perfection. Yeah, what are we beating here if we're Alex? Fives or sixes with a diamond? Struggling a touch to find other hands. Ace, 10 of hearts. Nines, maybe? I think nines. May just knuckle. May just knuckle. Feels like the small pairs, some of the backdoor hearts combinations, really struggling to find other stuff. Ponikov's vigorously producing his time banks in front of his cards. <coughs> he obviously feels he's in the blender. And these type of spots, so crucial in tournaments, getting them right. Indeed. This really is the blender. There just aren't that many combos we beat. There are six combos of fives and sixes, respectively, that aren't all taking this line. There's maybe three-ish combos of backdoor hearts. Perhaps a little more does pay it off. He'll see the bad news. Bravo, Victor. Nicely navigated from Limitless. How many I used? Three? Perhaps a product of his image. Perhaps indeed. Check out Poker Steak. Buy some action on these guys. Get a horse in the race. Always makes the sweat a little bit more in taste enticing. Sorry, Nick. Today's event is brought to you by Poker Steak, the official staking partner of Triton. Poker Steak is the ultimate platform for staking and professional poker players around the globe. With no fees on any purchases, Poker Steak is the go-to platform for anyone looking to support their favorite player's journey and celebrate the rewards of big victories. Check out PokerStake.com and put a pony in the race. Ponikovs, just under 10 bigs. Good luck, sir.
And something I've noticed with these high-level players, when I'm playing a tournament, I know when I have the king jack off there, a three bet is good, it's a good spot. But oftentimes in the moment I just pitch it. These guys seem to take every single spot. Yeah, it's a good point. A mantra I have for myself sometimes, especially if I'm in a little bit of a slump or what have you, good luck once again, is do what needs to be done. Because it is uncomfortable sometimes, but if you know you should, you're doing yourself a disservice at times, but everybody has a different style. And for SD Wang, this is close. <coughs> 11 BB jam from Ponikov's in the low jack. King Queen does keep an eye on quite a few hands. He can certainly afford it. Nice fold, though. Very much so. Yeah, and a mantra I have, Nick, that hasn't really quite worked out for me is just do the easiest thing possible. Yeah. <laughs> One time. In every scenario. Yeah. That's the move sometimes, too, though, Will. Not always, though. Correct. You want to have some balance there. Again, a little bit quiet here, a little bit calm. We're in the boat, you know, but big waves lie ahead. 76 left. 39th is... 151. I think once we hit that 50 left, good luck, Stevie. Already, though, starting to see some spots as the stacks get shallower. Ponikovs does slide it, respecting the under the gun jam. And just a small teaching point we see the King 10, the Ace 10 have to fold behind. That is indeed one of the driving forces of those sorts of jams, especially the lower region of the suited Broadway, where you really see it even up to 40 big sometimes, certainly in that 20 to 30 range. Ponikovs doesn't look thrilled at the moment. I think he's fine, Nick. I think he is, too. But he's objectively not thrilled. Agreed. The table presence of these players very noticeable as Raman wakes up with ace, queen, and clubs. Nobody looks remotely uncomfortable out there in this $100,000 buy-in. So true. And Stevie with tens in the big. A little bit scary given Webster opened from under the gun one, but just 11 bigs for the great Stephen Chidwick. Does go in. Good luck, sir. <clears throat> we'll be flipping with Hijev, who's top 10 in chips, looking to keep climbing. Kulev Stellar chip leader, Leon Sturm, up to second. Love watching Leon play. Clean for Stevie. No club in sight. You just really want this to hold here if you're Stevie. One more card. Paint heart was scary, but he does fade it. It's such a big swing being in here day two, getting close to the money. Massive. Doubles up to almost 30 bigs, would be out the door. The ladies are going around and 
Jamil is going to slow play. Very interesting out of the small. That is extremely interesting. Very slippery from Jamil. And Joey slides right into the king. Really gross spot for Jamil. They were sort of comfortably check calling a couple of times, but it is a bit gross. Uh, obviously, we don't want to see the king, but I mean, this, this could get bad. And I think interesting for Joey, too, is this strong enough for three streets here? It definitely is. Suited kings are a, a major defending hand from the small blind, although it is a touch complicated when we raise from stone under the gun, as we can generally now remove some of the king six suited and so on from small blind. Could see either way for Joey. He has declared 110, and for Jamil, as you alluded to before, Will, this is tough. A really gross spot. We block some possible barrels. Queen Jack, Queen 10. We also block King Queen of Diamonds. It's a great point. King Queen of Hearts and King Queen Off. He's keeping him honest once more. This card is a little bit scary Ooh. for Joey, but still a king. We don't really anticipate Jamil having queens in his range. I could see just being scared of king-queen if we're in Weissman's seat. Potentially a king-10 suited, although I guess there aren't many combos. It's possible, though. Understandable check, winner for Joey. Very easy player to root for. I like Joey a lot. And Seth, I've talked about this, also widely considered one of the best, but I feel like he's kind of had a cold go at Triton. I know he's cashed for a lot of money, but no titles. He's definitely hunting that maiden title. Indeed, a great player. Webster really consistent at the table with his mannerisms and presence. Note he doesn't obscure his body or anything like that. He just sort of sits there, calm. Davies, too, for that matter. Both pretty icy. The low spades working for Webster. It'll pair with the king for Seth. 95 in the middle, 30 bigs effective. Just north of quarter. Sometimes we're meant to raise these at some frequency, but it's so hard to actually do it when you're out there with the six duck. Clean for Seth. Have to fear the ace. Let's see how Davies plays it.
Winner for Seth. See if Webster fires. Again, I mean, when we, we have the six Dewey here. Get we'll back be there. back. Okay. Good luck, sir. Kim all in for four bigs over the Spencer Open. And Kim now is going to need a catch. He was pretty healthy when we started, but he's going to be left with nothing. He can't improve. Down to the 10. Good luck, guys. GG Brian. Classy on the way out. And here we I go. Knew, I knew we would be back to this one. Webster does indeed empty the clip, and for Seth, this is tough. We beat the low spades. We beat queen 10. Kind of nice, I guess, not to have a queen or a low spade, but still just king jack. And sometimes in these spots, a particular combination of a jack might be a better call than an ace, although we're a bit in the weeds with that, and I'm not so much speculating on Seth's particular jack, but just food for thought. Tough spot for Davies. Great play from Webster. Goes for the over bet. A theme I've noticed from these sickos. Adrian Mateos, I've seen him do it many times already. You can tell Seth is really torn. He has an interesting combo. Blocks Jack seven of clubs. A lot of value hands we can find that beat us. He is indeed torn. Looks like he just shuffled the amount of the call. Does fold, and great play from Lim. Gets it through. That little look back is always disconcerting oh, when we fold. You hate to see it, don't you? Well, you don't you? remember what you had, pal? You hate or? to see it. You, you know when they look back, they're either very happy to see the dust, or it's they're... They're trying to play some head games. It's a harrowing feeling to see the look back and hear the snap of the cards. Bravo, Webster. Yep. Uh, yeah. <coughs> and I've been getting some major watch envy here, Nick. Yeah, it's an insane situation. I mean, it's just not really fair, is it? Look, you're iced up. You got your rolly. Ollie's got some type of, I don't know, you know, we got the Jacob and Co. for all our winners, but yeah. can, if I'm going to keep doing this, I need to look the part. <laughs> yeah. Maybe the boss can lend you, you know. How about a Hublot or something? Nothing crazy. Just something crazy. for the desk. Yeah, just. Ducks for Chidwick in the cutoff. Does just let him go. A lot of anti-blocker properties of the Ducks when we're short. These two back at it, perhaps not. Although does the 10K, yeah, no, I'm wondering it, if it, it makes does. it a little, a little more enticing just not having to put in the full double amount to call, but good fold, <laughs> sir. And sometimes that dynamic, as you know, you just ran a sick one against the guy and the next hand you have nine for it. It's, it's you know, take it, buddy. Always puts you in the... You could see Seth kind of still ruing over that decision. <clears throat> His fold, of course, very understandable. It was more great execution from Webster, but it was interesting. Hero <laughs> a little bit. Felt like he mixed on the end to the, me. These guys don't show a lot of emotion, but they're human. Just like you, when you make a big fold, you're sitting there wondering. Definitely. Have to readjust, though, refocus. Ace eight off for Seth. 
40 and change bigs to start, covered by the big blind, SD Wang. Goes for 4x. Similar territory for Wang. 600. Kicker playing. These spots are so uncomfortable, though. And for Wang, do we tear one more off in position and just kind of see what develops? Dual uncomfortability. He does just let it go, fair enough. Nice pick up from Seth. Little momentum back in his way. Largest $100,000 buy-in tournament ever here at the Triton Super High Roller Series. <clears throat> Single raised, open from Spencer under the gun seven. Mustafov defended. Quarter pot for, from Spencer and for Mustafov straddling the king and still ace jack. Does come with the call. And an interesting turn card. One could see Spencer barreling. Have to be afraid of the 8 9, of course, and just a king. Might take the free one. Curious to see how Faradine responds if Spencer does in fact barrel. And if Spencer barrels, is it good or bad to have the ace of diamonds? Queen comes in for Spencer, the nut straight from Mustafov. What a run out. And if Faradine bets a hand Spencer beats are things like 4-5, 8-5, a 6 with a diamond. And not only that, Faradine is extremely aggressive from what I've seen. He very much is. Yesterday on day one, he came with the very rare 5-bet pre as a bluff. Does get snapped. Nice answer. It was very cool to see these guys, Faradin, uh, I believe Angin, and uh, Yuli, and all Bulgarian. Really, when Dimitar won the 40K mystery bounty, they were all sweating him, and there was a lot of emotion. It felt like a really cool moment for those guys. Yeah, that camaraderie felt so legit. Nice to see that. Kind of like an old school World Series of Poker ah, feel. I don't know if you ever had those sweats. You make yes. the final table, everybody comes out. Yes. A little I bit of a country pride type of thing. Oh. Tayari or Teria? Tayari? Tiari. Tiari, okay. New player, as if these tables weren't tough enough. Welcome, sir. 20 big blind navigations from Haxton are always welcome. 
400. I personally have not seen Ike too much in the many days of coverage from here in the booth. Likewise. Limp from Mustafov. 45. Ren shooting it up. Let's see with the lowest suited connector possible if Faradin wants to take a flop. Would be shocked if he's gone. Yeah. Out of position. <laughs> Ren Lin picking up a little momentum there. Isaac Haxton, 11 million, and Triton winnings, 34 caches, but still no titles for him. Too rich. Can't even keep track of it. 45, huh? Good card. Medium. Medium well. Medium well? Medium well. <laughs> <laughs> Players snacking a bit, still not feeling that intensity ratchet all the way up. 72 left still. Joe's off, raises the King Jack off. He's dominated by Lewis. And does Lewis just want to get this in? Or a lot of interesting options for him. These are interesting. A just defend keeps an eye on these particular hands, which we really do mess up post. <coughs> Does go for call, seems nice. 110 in the middle. Joe's off in trouble, but in position. And a great start for Lewis. And a very barrelable board for Joe's off. Let's see. The queen being one of these cards, we see the king and the jack interacting with. And for Lewis, sometimes an idea is to always raise king-queen without the back door and mix it up with, as a just call keeps an eye on something like 7-8 of diamonds, which occasionally we can imagine runouts where that hand gets stacked. Looks like he is just raising, which is understandable, and a real snap from Joe's off. That was the pre-chips hitting the felt type snap. <laughs> I know that feeling, Will. He's annoyed, but Lewis saved him there. That could have got bad. Could have. Scan that little QR code, download the Triton Poker Plus app. According to Nick, the best app in the world. The boss has held me in a room before we started, <laughs> tied me up, Did said, you you will say this is the best app in the world every day. No, it's really sick. Welcome, Leon Sturm. One of my very favorites to watch. I love his game. Yeah, I watched him on day one. He was on the feature table. He busted, rebought, switched seats, and now he's running it up, I believe, still from that bullet. Great seat change. Indeed. Probably well worth the 100K, one would think, Why at this point. Yeah. Never win. <laughs> Almost has Is to touchdown Tom to Brady something Ren says, too? Yes, a lot. <laughs> Although he semi-retired it, I think. Maybe Fumble. alongside Brady retiring. <laughs> Probably to the relief of his... But I've heard him say that, Will, at yeah. least two or 300 times. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really not kidding. Who's counting, though? Blinds up. 40 to go from Haxton in the hijack. Thank you. And he's run into immediate Bombay. resistance. As we hear that beautiful tune again. Yes. It almost feels like you're in a dream or something.
sold the final table. Hmm. Kalia number one. Wow. Another classic line that Ike used there, fold to final table. Check out Jacob & Co., the official timekeeper of the Triton Poker Series. Jacob & Co. makes these incredible timepieces, and they're not just about the diamonds and the sapphires and the rubies. If you're into poker and gambling themed gear, there's just one perfect watch brand to check out. They're embedding a playful spirit into the watch functions. Their Astronomia Casino has functioning roulette inside the piece. Check it out during the break. We will also be awarding a special collaboration timepiece to be won by the Triton No Limit Hold'em main event winner. Watch out for it. So whoever wins this puppy gets one of these beautiful watches. I told you my roulette story earlier in the series, Nick. You did. That was a dark one, Will. <laughs> do you I, ever, I appreciate speak, speaking you. Speaking of the darkness, do you ever shoot dice? Uh... Yes. <laughs> Not too often, but... Sounds like enough. Yeah. Ace-10 suited for Ike. 13 and a quarter. Low jack. Does he min or does he jam? Third of the field left. 39 pay. 72 remain. Arguably the best in the world. He does min. Yeah, Ike was recently on, uh, I believe it's the Thinking Poker podcast. We recommend everybody checking it out. He's completely an open book, so if you can get him to sit down and talk, he's not going to hide anything. Yes. You're right. He doesn't sit down and talk to anybody. Right. Now. But, but when, when he does. When he does, it's really cool because there's no, you know what I mean, there's no protecting the secrets. I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> no winning today. You many players with a very bad hand. First shot of Leon here, just 24 years old. Won the 50K for 1.5 million at the World Series this year. Leon, truly awesome. Hmm. Finds himself in a bad way. chat noticing the Americans are wearing the Euro scarves at this table. It's an interesting switch, isn't it? The Americans are going with the Euro scarf. That is a Triton scarf. And it also is cold down here. It's chilly today. It's chilly around these parts. I like it with the suits on. Chidwick defends. Let's see for Victor if he wants to go small or just check. Both come to mind. He's going for the former. It's annoying for Chidwick. Is this lone duck enough to see a turn? It definitely is. And when we defend hands of this nature, we can't be shy on the flop. It's a good point. If we're defending the queen deuce and hitting a deuce and folding, what exactly are we doing defending? He does call. For Victor, I think we check a lot, if not always.
And one would think Stevie is in the check and prey category. Hoping for the ace jacks, maybe the ace queens. Hoping for those very much. He might be thinking of something bold. Does just check. And for Victor, I believe he snap checked winner. Take it, sir. Huh? Yeah. Henrik Hecklin, fourth in chips. What is our top five right now, Will? Kulev still kind of <laughs> pacing the pack, almost double second place, which is Leon. Matthias, Ibringer, who we've seen make some deep runs, and then Hecklin and Oleg Ustinovich. All right. New player, saw him at breakfast. I mean, you can just tell by the way these guys eat, Nick. The healthiness, <laughs> the creativity at the he table. He was granola mm. fruit type guy. No, it was guy. like he made some type of like healthy ramen yeah. at the buffet that I didn't even know was possible. He's to ready to go. Breakfast reads a huge part of the game. We see these fives. Sometimes these pairs get pitched. My feeling is Webster a little bit more on the play for the win side than some of these guys. Fair enough. Not that these guys aren't all playing for the win. You know what you mean, though. Wang comes along. Jeju, South Korea, was a little overcast when we got here. Weather's starting to really brighten up. Oh. Understandable peel from Ponikovs, just south of 10 bigs. 150 in the middle. 71 remain. Sort of Wang's flop. How to know for sure, but a five, the highest card amongst Webster and Ponikovs. just feels really nice when checked too. Obviously, Ponikovs can defend a lot. And although Webster would check some of his aces, plenty of them would see bet. Agreed. Take it, Mr. Wang. Looking for that first Triton cash. This would be a good one to get it in. You see that Jacob and Co. watch going to the winner. And I think, if I'm not wrong, they've sized up on this trophy a little, Nick. Looks I, a little thi I think you're right. That's, that's a little bit more meat on the bone for the main. And the watch. I mean, strong. And you were Very here strong. for the 150K final table, correct? Yes, that, I was. That one was really cool, man. I, I did some commentary on the lead up, and Elton just felt like he wanted it so bad. was really just honestly kind of emotional to see him get that W. He was. He's had so many deep runs, huge scores, legendary player. It was a bit of the monkey off of the back. Ace-king for Esty. And it was a very fun final table. I would encourage people to check it out on YouTube if they missed it. Or the Triton Poker Plus app. Oh. 
Webster defends. Five in the window, but two paint cards follow. Tricky for Webster with the five of diamonds. Those two pen cards you mentioned are, of course, scary. But I don't think we go quietly just yet if we're Webster. Would be a great read if he does, but one could tear one off at the very least. Even raises could be derived from a hand like this targeting 8-8, eight, eight, something like ace-9. It's just going for call, which is understandable 190 in the middle and this small size on the flop from Wang is this part of the reason we use that to keep our customer in there with some connection yes and also whenever the board is two-tone we kind of always have small sizes as an option there are some spots where you only go big but for the most part for whatever reason it's an idea Perhaps we kind of build around the nut flush draws, and there's so many comfortable hands to go small with. And now we would imagine this one is over. Yeah, this goes from the land of standard to just crazy reads if Webster continues. Wang chipping up nicely here. Kulev just really out in front. Obviously a long way to go, but almost up to three million. Santosh in 11th. We see you, YouTube chat. Nick always sees you. He's he's scoping. He's looking around, looking for some material. Isn't that right, Nick? I'm not always scoping around, but I'm I'm putting eyes on you guys. We do appreciate everybody sweating, even the ones coming with crazy, reckless comments. It's all good. We're all here together. Watching some of the best in the world battle in the biggest 100K ever. Davies with a decision. Does he put Stevie in raising off 15? Or does he just defend? Goes for the defense. go some different directions. Interesting. 4-4-9. Four, four, Stevie with 13 and a quarter bigs to play. <clears throat> These two very familiar with each other. Twenty. And for Seth at a glance... We have some stuff going on. The back door, the 9-10 jack. Okay. But of course, jack high, rarely good. We can see at the moment it's chopping. Sixty. <laughs> Does go for 60, very nice. Seemingly one iteration of a jack 10 beating another jack 10, albeit being on the free roll. And these hands that at first glance often look like they might be over, they might be meaningless, can become very interesting very quickly. So true. Stevie's not done with this yet. Stevie, perhaps a non-believer, does slide it.
Spencer in the lead. Joey raised from under the gun. Lewis called on the button. gives both players a gutter. Pot's starting to get meatier here. They are, Will. The average stack is getting smaller or you know less big blinds in each pot getting that much more important Weissman firing Spencer not going anywhere does Joey have two barrels in mind unimproved perhaps we'll find out and this is a flop Joey would check some very strong hands on I assume definitely and check a lot Interesting river. Ace-10 would play a fair amount against just ace-x of diamonds that elected to check back, which is an idea. Merits to bluffing or caging fives and sixes, even 9-9 nine nine for that matter. Could see some of both in this line. Not totally clear. We do block ace-4 of hearts, which is mildly relevant. And Jack-10 suited. Three thirty in the middle. 70 left, pays 39. You can tell Joey wants to go for it. Can he pull the trigger? You can also tell he doesn't really think this ace-10 is good very often. Understandably so, of course. He does check Spencer content to do the same, and he'll see the good news. Yeah, that was not a give up. Like, that was not a I'm hoping to get the showdown check. That was a give up check from Joey. Yeah, I know what you mean. With a hint of maybe beat ace five of diamonds sometimes that little bit of showdown it does cross your mind when you have a hand with stone cold no showdown it's tough to give up and you should sometimes when you have a little bit sometimes we we wonder maybe ace jack off for joe's off 15 bigs under the gun mins And the min does give us the chance to get away when a situation like this arises. It very much does. Here comes the patch. Here comes the rest. And I would agree this is as close as it gets for Joe's off, but it is a road to folding as we see fives and sixes forced to hit the muck. That wasn't that the core piece. Definitely not a snap off. <coughs> that wasn't that before you'd be high. Very nice from Joe's off. Well done. Love the quick folds from him. Yeah, that is a confident quick fold. He's done that twice now. No time bank wasted. And by the way, if he spins and finds himself deep, we might need those banks at some point. Can you make it move again? He does it better like, than me. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, like that. <laughs> Look at that. Anything like a Leon. 
like a Leon. Germany, number one dancer. Yeah, I'm, I'm known for my dance moves, that's for sure. He's dancing like a Leon. Okay. Ike has magically made some chips appear, Nick. I'm not sure how he does it. Huh? And look at this. Yes. Come on, on don't Brad. be shy. Woody don't hang. Come on. <laughs> Lewis, the ladies, not the time you want to see them. Not at all, Will. Whoa, what a start for Lewis. And Joe's off with ace, nine of clubs in the big and I think he'll be just calling always. And might Lewis have extended a road for a Joe's off win, which of course would be off the table had he three bat. Three ways to the flop, buck 50 in the middle. It's all Ren Lin right now. Disastrous flop for Lewis Spencer. It's really small. And for Lewis, I mean, we've made our reservations. We're taking the ladies out. We have a big night ahead, but little do we know. Yeah, you know how it goes. Sometimes you're out on the town, everything's going great, but just that one comment and... Great discipline from Joseph too, getting a great price with the backdoor flush draw, but these two will go heads up. What a clean turn for Ren. Double blocking the 10, by the way. The nut king king does check it over to Lewis, who has to feel like these queens are very often good. And not only that, but on this board, can we start to get value from hands as weak as ace highs? I think some ace highs, although this early, Lewis does check it back, and he is navigating this fairly masterfully. And you just have to wonder if he sensed something the way he's played this. I One mean, does have to wonder. For Ren, it's surely time to get some value now. And Lewis going to snap, and he really lost the absolute minimum here. Bravo, Lewis. Wow. That was really wow. well done. I, I think most people are doubling up Ren for sure. No, no, no. He knows it, too. He knows it, doesn't show it. Bravo, sir. That's a pot we lose, but it feels like a win. Yeah, every once in a while, a loss is a win. Interesting. There's a lot of chips in the middle already. Will, do you have the preceding action for us? Yeah, it looks like uh, Victor, I believe, limped the small blind. Raman raised from the big, and Victor defended. Okay. 150. Go on, Victor. You can see how difficult this guy is to deal with. Raman might not be done with his ace high, but it's, of course, not comfortable whatsoever. Yeah, 
Yeah, Victor's reputation does precede him. One of the most wild. And I've seen Hajiev play some really crazy hands before. Might this be another one? Look at this, Nick. Go on, Ramin. Thank you for the sweats, good sir. Mouth covered, but the sniffer is working. 480 in the middle, indeed. And the jack does come in for Victor. What a turn for Limitless. Limp, 4x call. <laughs> Check. Quarter-ish. Raise, call. And here we are, 480 in the middle, 690 to play. See what the great Victor Malinowski comes with. Goes for check, very slippery. I would imagine Ramin is somewhat content to do the same most of the time. Although creative ideas can certainly spur blind on blind. And a great check from Victor. We can see how nicely this is working out. <laughs> Raises with jack high, checks with jacks. We can see how deceptive some of these lines can be. Eight of hearts is nice for Ramin. Comes with call, this could go a lot of different ways. 8.30 in the middle, one of the bigger pots we've seen today. Victor possibly toying with something like 10%. Maybe a bit more. This line is wild, Will. He's going for 7%. Gives Ramin rope on the turn with the check, and now even more rope, potentially with the small bet. Such a cool hand. also just gives himself a chance to get a little value. Mm. Yeah, for Ramin with ace high, what a prize. Beautifully navigated from Victor. Of course he got lucky on the turn, but just an interesting hand all around from two warriors. Kind of painted a masterpiece there. <clears throat> and just the level of creativity in these tournaments. Such a creative kind of sideline. Not that I have the level of intelligence to predict what these guys would do, but even if I did, I would still be hesitant to the way they play. That one there was, I mean. Things starting to accelerate here a little as we get closer to the money, 67 left. 39 will be taking home six figures. The rest, dust. Someone in chat pointed out very cool back and forth sweats here, right? One table to the other. It's been pretty fast-paced action. I love that so much. It really is great to mix it up like that. We're very thankful to Triton, the top-notch production. It's unbelievable. And another thing they do, which is great, they mix up the tables. We, we put eyes on everybody in here. Yeah, just the best of the best from the floor to Luca, the dealers. Share hands is incredible. Yeah, watching them work is amazing. Good luck, Ponikov's likely, although he is in quite early okay. position. Just eight bigs. And we've seen this, Nick. He's the old, just going for the min. The old min. 
Men off eight bigs. Getting to that point where we start to see the shorter stacks at work. And Raman. <clears throat> obviously not happy with the result of that last hand. This is close. He's just coming along for calls. Seems nice. And look at this. I think Paulius is jamming here. Pretty much every time, Paulius... Not going to go for the last name. I was, but... Great decision there, Nick. Thank you very much. It is in. <clears throat> we'll get through. Frustrating for Ponikov, but might have saved his tournament life, not it's just jamming. Absolutely, and frustrating for Raman as well. Life Rough changed. couple of hands for Raman. Been very impressed with these Lithuanians here. The other Paulius, the swag lord, taking down a title. Dominikus in an early event final table, and I've seen a lot of Mattis. Symbolis hasn't broken through here, but these guys are all savages. Indeed. And you Ooh. see just a little glimpse behind the curtain of why Nick Shulman is one of the best in the commentary game. Doesn't go for the trap last name there. Not trying to play fancy. It's not all above the rim, is it? It's just simple, good play sometimes, isn't it? Thank you, Will. That's right. Fundamentals, you know. Although, if I was really dialed, why acknowledge we're not going for the last name? That's but thank you. No, it's very true. Also, always willing to be self-critical <laughs> and acknowledge a mistake. And Limitless starting to become a force here in this main Indeed, Limitless with Chips is a scary sight at any table. Our current top five has shuffled around a bit. Kulev still there with that commanding lead. Ken Tong in second. If you know Ken, you're not surprised. Ace three suited for Stevie in the big blind versus the cutoff open of Limitless calls. Matthias Eibinger in third. He's just always down there stern. Malinowski himself rounding out the top five. 67 left. These two tussle once again, cut off big blind. And once again, Stevie finds himself with bottom pair. TV's in. Could lying? see a, an equity denial type lead from Stevie. That is his card, but yet check feels understandable with just a three. Sorry. We never really shed better, <laughs> but it's sort of That's defensive also, against a hand like this. Does check, and for Victor, Queen of Diamonds 10. We kind of like the Queen of Diamonds as it unblocks some back doors, but still so naked does check. And the deuce is interesting. Perhaps Stevie content to just check. Would imagine it's a much better card for him than Victor in general. It is. He can have the four in a variety of ways that Victor can't. He might be considering something exotic. Does just check. With a glance over to Victor. Yeah, and how creative does Limitless want to be? No, just knows he can't really tell a story. Nice pot for Stevie, who's quietly chipping up he is 30 bigs somewhat out of nowhere <clears throat> oh, lucky. you know what's cool about stevie outer table action put a pin in that see the qr code there 
the top right if you want to get that app. Sweat the action. There's the other Paulius, the Swag Lord, JNT, David Yan. JNT healthy. Very healthy, Nick. Roman Habeck. Matias also very healthy. Looks locked in. Okay. Limp from Jamil. Very trappy from Jamil. Yeah, we saw him just call with the queens out of the small blind earlier, setting the trap here. And a good reserved check from Leon, who certainly thought about it, sub-15. And Jamil again, if you remember versus Joey. These big pairs have not gone his way, indeed. King has been pesky. And I know Leon is only 24, but I would imagine his reputation has started to get around. He, very aggressive. He's an extremely respected player, you're right. So young, yet so much. Big tourney experience. Goes for 20, of course gets called. It's dire for Joaquil. Kings and eights now for Leon. Seven six does come in. But Leon, the type of player one would think with his six threes, even just complete trash would keep betting here. Completely agree. Plenty of stuff that Jamil beats, even in the form of value. 8 7 is possible. It would be a great fold if he found it, but it looks to be nearly impossible to me in limp check pre. Yeah, when we limp the tens out of the small blind, this is, we're trying to induce something from this guy, and it just doesn't feel right, does it? That's a good point, too. When we're getting trappy with big pairs, it becomes harder to fold them. We can, can trap ourselves, ten? yes. He cannot. Perhaps this guard is a saving grace to Jamil. You mentioned the 3 6 a moment ago. That is one of Leon's bluffs. That now, of course, is a straight. And now, obviously, when Leon shoves, we only beat bluffs, no value. I think, although actually for 75% pot, limp check, check call third, we might beat an eight, frankly. At the very least, I wouldn't know in game. Just Queen the, of clubs, eight, maybe jack of clubs, eight, one of those, where the kicker is real if you're value betting an eight. Jamil trapped himself with queens, got unlucky here again with tens. If he can't find a fold, he'll be out of this tournament. Does call, and that's gonna be curtains. GG, sir. Good luck. And Leon inches closer to our chip leader, Alex Kulev. And we inch closer to the money. 61 remain now. Someone in chat asked if you have a favorite win, Nick. Favorite win? No, chat. I, I don't really... They tend to just disappear. I have some losses that stick with me, though. I can tell you that. We even told him that I don't bluff, and he wouldn't listen. No, but he induced, you know? He tried like a no. three pair. He got attached. He got very I already tell him. Oh, That's what we talked about, right? 
He played the trap. He wasn't going to fold there. Yeah, play like Love a Leon. Leon. He's very dry. Witty. Play like a I had a really hard laugh with him. He bet the end. Not gonna name who his opponent was, but he made a big bet deep in a tournament. A flush had completed, and he got called. And he said, 10 high, flush, Leon. And his opponent said, he has 10 high and the flush. It's 10 high and the flush as well. It's a bit tilted, and Leon was just so okay. not rattled and said, I wasn't angling, but I could see how you would think that. I'm sorry, and just went right back to his food. And I was like, this kid is just, you know what I mean? Joey considering jam. In fact, it will be going in. Good luck, sir. Not that he'll be getting called. I don't really know why I said good luck, but anyway, we move forward, Will. You never know, Nick. Note the fives, not looking to set mine, not looking to see a flop, and just take it down, sir. Okay. 120. 6 big blind jam from Ponikovs in the cutoff an ace for Davies in the small SD Wang in the big covering Davies goes for call Seth Who's behind Oh 620 behind or last 595 Wang not going anywhere. The question is, do we call or raise Davies? Raise certainly seems understandable. Seth will have some traps, but call. does go for call. Ponikovs is live. He said call. What a flop for Esty. And Bonikovs can kind of sense it. He certainly can. And how does Esty want to play it? It's interesting. Could see merit to both. No side pot. Hand is incredible, though. That's small here. Understandable. Let's get some chips in. And for Seth with the back door, no side pot. SD did come along for six bigs pre. He is ahead of the flush draws that fall to ace high. There aren't a ton of them. He is calling. Now there's a side pot, as we can see, of 120, the 260 Ks, and the stone nuts comes in for Esty outside of the straight flush. GG, Ponikovs. And Esty now figuring out how he wants to get more chips from Davies. read on the situation has been perfect. Just kept Seth in pre, kept him in on the flop with a small bet, now turns the nuts. And You're right, Will. That's gonna be it, though. Uh, diamonds? Yeah, you're dead, man. <laughs> Indeed he is, Seth. They were trying to help me, but I played too bad. Oh, wow. A little salt in the wound. 
You can feel the sting from Ponikovs here in the main, not your average tournament. You can. He'll be back, but uh, the mic comes off. Joe's off all in. Looks like Sturm has already called. He hasn't. Looks very close. It is quite close, 23 and a half, but he's in. And he'll see the very good news to have Michael dominated. See if he can hold. Michael Jozoff, very good player, looking to stay alive. Normal jam from him. Let's see. King 6-5, no clubs, is not the one for Michael. Outs actually increase now. Four jacks to hit Broadway. Okay. GG, sir. Okay. We lose another. And Leon closing in on Alex Kulev for the chip lead. You like those German accents, don't you? I do like them. I don't want to overdo it, but I can, you know. Joey Wiseman, 20 bigs. Leon, 92 big blinds. What a feeling. 20 off the money here. That really is the go zone. Deeper stacks in this really good structured main here. 4.3 million up top. 2.8 for second. I mean, top six places, all guaranteed seven figures. And yeah, it's been accelerating here, hasn't it? It really has. I mean, we say it, but it happens to be true. These sweats are the best in the world, you know, for people that love this stuff, um, players and just people who enjoy sweating or, or just love poker in general. It gets no better than this, Will. It truly does not. Yeah, we have a front row seat, and I mean, it's just incredible to witness these every day, but this is the biggest one so far. This is the one I have felt the most intensity, the most pressure, the most to win, the most to lose. And you see that with someone like Ponikovs. You know, earlier events we saw him bust, shrugs the shoulders, gets out of there, but this one hurts. Luckily, we cannot bust out from this, right? I mean, we can, but it would take, you know, I've seen it done before. Okay, Will, let's not so go don't. there, but we'll be back in about 10 minutes. Going to take a quick break. Don't go anywhere, guys. Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live action prediction options on the Triton series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
Just seize the wonder. Jeju Shinwa World. The stream, Dan Smith, the eventual champion, but he was 0 for 7 going into that one, so his plight somewhat similar to Hecklin's. Good luck, sir. Goes in, minus a chip, and oh. he will be getting some action, Ali. Yeah, Salazar has got medicine. And do we trap or isolate? Let's see. Oh. It would require quite a bit of hand, would it not, for Tang to feel like coming along from the big if we flatted 73? Well, something like a flat might induce ace-jack in particular, but I hear you, Ali. Does just three bet. Decision was always easy for Danny. It feels Danny looked at the queen and gave himself a little sweat on the second. He is gone. Michael, happy to see Ooh. that he's live. For the time being, this medicine being force-fed. One sixty-eight in the middle. No king or nine, though. And now the light flickers for the Dominator. Working the mustache. Can he bring in the cowboy or the nine? No. And with that, we lose one of the Michael. more exciting players in any given field that he enters, Nick, but perhaps a sigh of relief for the parties present here at this feature as the Aussie out of here. Look at this. You can't buy it. You got to win a Triton main, my friend. Facts, Ollie. Here in this main, put some respect on my name, perhaps. Punat Punsri, Stephen Chidwick, Henrik Hecklin, always rocking them. Fours for Pua. See if he wants to rock and roll. Motioned to the blinds that he would like something of a count. Grafton spread his stack. He's just putting it in. Seemingly a nice choice from Pua into the 11 bigs of Grafton and the 20 of Santurn. This is the idea. Pua Razor, Ollie. And for King, Queen, off. Mm. I think we likely run it, although a little bit annoying, half of the field left. But I believe we just give it a try, Ollie. Yeah. No. Good luck, gentlemen. Thomas agrees. <laughs> so here we are playing a 462k pot, obviously. Ua. Recognizing it's a flip, the coin weighted. Ever so slightly in his favor. 462 in the middle. No king or queen, though. Go on, Paul. The set of fours. How's it? How's it? Leaves. A reasonable D Mike yes. from Thomas. GG, sir. GG's issued. Dua has a great laugh. Oh, yeah. That saying was still in the room, and it persists to this day. Ren Lin, of course, always has that little no gamble, no future patch that he throws out anytime he, he jams. Look at this. I don't have fours, though. Sometimes too much gamble, you know, lack yes, of future. Too much gamble, no future as well, <laughs> Grafton in <laughs> dire straits. What's that? <laughs> Is it too much gamble? Jack nine offsuit on the button? I don't think so for 10. Like <laughs> but it is unfortunate yeah. to run into the ace nine. Okay. Sure. Ding Biao. Happy to be a customer. And happy to hold the lead on this 9 6 trade board and not be looking at a heart across the way. The Jack. The only card that keeps Squiddy intact, instead the ace. In style for Ding, GG Sam. Yep. 
we lose another, and we're under 100 players, Ali. Finland, Belgium, Thailand, another Finland. Little coffee in Lithuania. Right here in Jeju. Romania in the building again. Belgium, Sweden. Sweden. Mexico is here. Fort Drum, Germany, Antarctica, Brazil. California, thank you, crazy. India, good to see you, Twitch. What was that South American country uh, again? Brazil. That's not how you said it. Did I say Brazil? You did say that. Oh, and, you know. and I'm tickled, by the way. I, I'm glad you are. <laughs> Lindy, Lindy all in, in great shape. Oh, yeah, he'll be tickled by the fact that he's dominating Ding Biao, who flats the jam. Ten bigs on their backs. Lindy in great shape. It's been a fairly challenging sort of outing for, for Ding Biao here, standing in somewhat of a contrast to obviously that tremendously deep oh, run. Oh, that jack isn't challenging, though. That he made, yeah. Spade for Lindy, but the light is dimming. Maybe this one's on me. Oh, hang on. Picks up the 10 as an out. Seven outs one time. Can Dylan find it? No. GG Dylan. Painful game we can play. It's a spot that he'll take every single time if given the opportunity, but unfortunately we know some of the time it does not work out, and this is one of them. As Lindy's run here in this 100K main comes to an end. Menu. We had a little menu shift over here at the old uh, hole in the wall, and... Um, had some fried rice before we started. Very nice. All right, there you go. A few veggies in there for you? Or? Yeah, there were some greens. There you go. So, you know, you're getting it all. Tens for Chidwick. We'll be going in for Ponikov's 11 bigs and change. <coughs> all in. And I mentioned Stevie... You know, get the feeling a lot of these guys thinking maybe the best. I feel similarly to Ponikov's Nick. A lot of respect from his peers. Ponikov's a very tough player to deal with. See if he can win this flip. Classic race here. I don't know about you, but I've sensed a added level of intensity in the air out there in this event. I have as well. Good start for Ponikovs. Hello, and welcome back to Jeju Triton Super High Roller Series, Will Jaffe. One of the GOAT commentators, Nick Shulman. Getting close to the money bubble here in the biggest $100,000 buy-in ever. And I'm starting to sense the intensity ratcheting up. The players, it, it's, it's getting pretty tense out there. It is. This is that grindy kind of phase of the tournament that we've grown accustomed to seeing. And we have a couple of nice tables upon us, Will, to observe the grind yeah, let's take a look at these uh, two new tables. We're going to be switching features here. You see up there at our blue table, Aaron Zhang, one of these legends, very creative player. Haven't seen him here. Maybe he just came for the main. I don't know. Kevin Rabichow, very good player. Alex Theologis uh, made a final table in one of the earlier events here. Really got screwed with pocket queens, all in versus pocket tens. Someone hit a set. Also, the swag lord, the other Paulius, Paulius Valitankis there, and Patrick Antonius. I mean, what more can you ask for? Our other table also stack David Yan, Thomas Mulliker, Daniel Smilkovich, very good German player, Matthias Eibringer, maybe some accents, Nick, coming out, <laughs> Roman Hrabek, saw a lot of him earlier, JNT, and uh, great American pro David Coleman. So check out that little app in the corner. Don't forget about that. Um, what are you looking for going forward here, Nick? I'm excited for these two tables. Smilkovich is very creative, very aggressive, fearless. Coleman been surging, great American player. Yan is always great to watch. Mulocker's great. Everybody's great. It's uh, 
you know? And then Zhang and some of the wild cards kind of, not wild card, he's a legend, but giving them, you know, issues in a pressure cooker. Let's go, Will. Let's do this. I mean, just, just completely stacked field. David Coleman, you did say earlier when he got unlucky, we would be seeing more of him. So here we will right? be. Yep. Great call, Nick, as always. <laughs> Thank you. He's on our red table. That one is led by GNT, who, sorry, JNT, thinking of gin and tonics, um, always manages to get some chips in these, doesn't he? He really does, Will. Are Mata you a gin and tonic guy? No. Okay. <laughs> I, I don't like All to right. drink much. I get hung over really quickly. <laughs> yeah. But um, Matthias in second, David Coleman, Wang Yang, Daniel Smilkovic, David Yan, Molucker, and Robek, who we saw a bunch earlier. Our other table, Wai Leong Chan. Hopefully didn't butcher that. Yurai Ira Baron, Spanish player. Saw a little bit of him. Curious how he relates to the Conquistadors. Maybe the fourth Conquistador? Perhaps. Let's see. Look at Smilkovic there, if you guys are unfamiliar with him. He does only have 20 bigs, but perhaps you'll be getting familiarized. Again, very creative, fearless player. The legendary JNT gone. King Adolf for Thomas, 12 bigs. <coughs> does defend. Interesting for Thomas with the King of Clubs under the gun is of course a very scary range. He's just gone, understandable. There's your rye. Legendary Patrick Antonius. Theologus is great. Aaron, as you said, will legendary guy. Oh, and the sleeping dragon is with us. Welcome, sir. Didn't even see him there. Ninety. Ninety. Rabichow, a great player. He's gone. Wei Leong going to take it down. Another one of these really good Malaysian players. Tension building we inch closer to that $151,000 money bubble. Very much so, 58 left now. Pays 39. No Triton caches for your eye, but plenty of drip. Patrick Antonius. Picks up ace-queen here. Always dicey versus the under-the-gun raise, but one would think this is going. Same page, Will. Hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> For Uriah, we've seen a lot of these 7-7, seven, 8-8 seven, eight, eight folds. But he does give it a spin. Good luck, Patrick, gentlemen. Big flip here. Getting close to the money. Go on, Patrick. What a flop. 
Oh, He's seen that board pair before. Not counting down just yet. There it is. And Antonius, no stranger to success here at Triton, third in the 200K Invitational Cyprus last year for 2.1 million. Does have one title here, first in a 25K back in Cyprus, so that stop has been good for him, but get the feeling he's pretty hungry. I think he's very hungry, and another guy who, as many of us know, has tons of experience at the highest stakes cash-wise. Good luck, guys. And Robex getting out of here. You think maybe the attire was a little too much? They needed to relocate him? Yeah, it was too much orange. Let's move Roman. Good luck, Thomas. Ten bigs in the cutoff. And Wang Yang wakes up with the Cowboys. That he does. That's all but it for Thomas. Needs runner, runner straight, or he's out of here. GG, sir. <coughs> Respectable run. These 50s and 40s finishing-wise hurt. They do, and Mullocker, great player. Still seeking that signature. Big, big win. Sure it's coming. David Coleman, very good American player. Has been ripping off some scores, Poker Go Studio stateside. Coleman's terrific, he did erupt at Go. David is just always tough, very sharp player. Kind of guy you don't see him for a little while, he comes back, he's better. Not to say there was a ton of room for improvement, but you know what I mean. I think he's improved this series already, Nick. He's heating up, Will. This is you might have lit a fire. He made a huge score in the turbo. This is the one you want to win. Spades covered. Oh, and what a flop for Coleman. We'll see if JNT has ideas. I would say this normally would be over, but JNT, never know with him. That's exactly right. <laughs> okay, he is done. Did you ever travel uh, post Black Friday for poker? Different country trip with the boys? Yeah, a little bit. Nothing crazy. I went down to Mexico for six weeks. You? Yeah, I was thinking about a time I went to London with, uh, I don't know if you know Athanasios, Polychronopolis. Yeah, of course. Me, him, a couple other guys, we were grinding, and uh, deep in the series, he got into a pot with Thomas Mulliker. And he tried this insane bluff. Just Mulliker had the best odds to call, and he still shoved. And Mulliker tanked for about 20 seconds and called with top set. And there was like a straight on the board, and 
Tom just stands up from the table and just goes, how does he call? <laughs> he started dying, and Antonius here just doubled through Uri, looking to get even more chips from him. This is a little bit either way for Patrick. He's going for call. Either way in regards to call or three bet. And for Aaron, something of the same. Aaron Zhang, no stranger to massive scores himself. 21 million in Triton winnings, Nick. I was there in London when he shipped the big one. He is indeed a legend. 2019. First place in the $1 million buy-in Triton event for almost $14 million. Nice start for Patrick, albeit scary in the face of three diamonds. Might be considering a lead. Does just lead. A couple of quick folds take it, sir. The legend from Finland, Patrick Antonius. Had a lot of laughs with Patrick over the years playing cash. Another guy who you wouldn't necessarily know it. Very funny. Doesn't come out often, but really, I'm talking about hard laughs. Yeah, you wouldn't know it. He won't say anything for hours. And then it's just, you know? Picks his spots. Picks his spots very well. First look at Rabbit Chow. We are creeping towards that money. Rabbit Chow still undeterred. Beautiful hand. 50 to go. The feeling your eye will be entering. Yeah, he is going to three bet here with the ace three of spades. And for Rabachow. Oh, well, excuse me, the sleeping dragon will remove the decision from Rabachow. What timing for Xu Liang, who's been surging lately? Sleeping Dragon waking up with yet another monster. And what a spot. Only has 10 big blinds behind. Your eye will be priced in. Good luck, Mr. Liang. <coughs> the dragon in a great spot to double. Fresh off that fourth place finish in the 150K for 1.5 million. Had diamonds, three hands in a row. Hmm? I had diamonds, three hands in a row, for sure. Okay. I think ace is seven. Oh. Cold for Xu Liang. Okay. Picks up the 10 as an out. GG, sir. The Spaniard goes dragon hunting. He really does. Sir Watts has arrived. Very much enjoy sweating Xu Liang. Hope to do it again. Not in this tournament. In open table, too. Good game, sir. 14 players off the money now. People busted in 14 minutes. I mean, <laughs> you're talking about how hard it was going to be to get to the ball.
Helia, Nico Four of now our short stack. Sam, Stanley Choi down there. Sam Greenwood. Kulev still out in front. Over 3.1 million in chips. Ken Tong nipping at his heels. Leon up there. JNT and Ding Biao in fifth. Kulev's really held on to this chip lead for a while. Rapid Chow back at it. Look at Paulius there, the swag lord with a couple of jacks. Could go either way here. Flat does seem very understandable at this juncture. One can't fault a three bet as well. 135. 135 declared. And Sir Watts with yet another stack and a pair here. Sir Watts really doing his thing right now. See how Rapichau wants to approach this. It's immediately uncomfortable. Ace Queen, of course, a lot of hand. Just north of 30 bigs to start. 14 off the money. 151,000 is the min cash. Calls. Like 6. Uh, I start at seven. I have six forty behind or six thirty behind. Great flop for the swag lord. Extremely clean for Paulius. And in the face of something small, curious to see how Rabbit Chow responds. We're still ahead of the semi bluffs and have equity against something like Jacks, but. The spot is pretty grim. Goes for four bigs into 12 and a half. That look on Rabichow's face says it all. He plays hard. Definitely trying to size up Paulius as well. Former heads up player. These guys always love to battle. They do, and one of the best heads up players ever, pretty much, does call. Interesting. Polly is still ahead of eights, nines, tens, and these. Of course, this turn is complicated. Rabichau perhaps toying with lead or maybe just balancing his mannerisms. And for Paulius, this spot is interesting. We're a little bit deficient in a six, but we can still just sort of play the I have a bigger pair than you game. Goes for quarter. Pretty tough for Rabbit Chow to take the heat. Queen of Clubs is, of course, relevant, but under the gun, under the gun, one, three bet, check, third, call, check. Five more big blinds deposited. This is grim. We can see he is just barely getting the right price. Little worse than a three to one dog. The swag lord looking to add another soul to his collection. And he's obviously a tough guy to read, the nine seed. Just look at this guy. Best hand, winner. Nice pickup for Paulius. First place in the 25K silver main for almost 1.1 million. 
And he did in the earlier events, Nick, just had the regular glasses, not the sunglasses, didn't have the hat, decided to switch it up, and it's worked wonders for him. It certainly has. Creeping ever so slowly towards that money bubble. 39 pay, again, 151,000. All the way up to 4.3 million for our champion. Your eye's been very active so far. Always interesting with these guys you haven't seen before. Coming in hot here with the Queen Nine of Hearts. Rabbit Chow in the big, getting closer to the danger zone. Still 20 big blinds behind. They want to see a flop. What a flop for Rabbit Chow. Indeed, especially as it stands starting hand-wise. Uri going for 75 in relatively short order. Sub-20 navigations, top pair, a lot of hand. Could see both for Kevin. We could live with it and raise then call it off. Call seems like an option as well. Let's go for call. Does your eye want to keep bluffing? This is much more of a bluff than flop where we at least have some possibilities. Does check it back. Oh, and the disaster for Uri. Yeah, and things could get really bad if k Rab decides to check. It's interesting. k Rab has something around 1.3 pot to remain. He knows Uri hits that queen a very real amount, and we do want to get the most from that particular hand. He's just going small though, fair, targeting ace highs and things of this ilk. And having a queen ourself makes it less likely Uri has one. And against this very small bet, does Uri feel compelled to raise for value? Bluffs for Kevin are 6-7. He does, and this is really music to Rabbit Chow's ears. Yeah, I was thinking the check set up Uri to do something like this. Rabbit Chow does it with the small bet. You're right. And your is going to be getting an incredible price here. would think it's going in. Sometimes tournament preservation, just in case, is an idea. We are so close to the money. <coughs> Does do it, minus 25,000. 
correctly identifying that this one and of course just king queen ace queen are very real for Uri. crafty line from kevin on the end the block then jam and for Uri, we only beat bluffs let's see although one could see a four maybe a three yeah, you could see something like a 4-5 going for the block, targeting ace-king, and then saying, you know what? Just a gross spot for your eye. Raises for value, then gets crammed on. Rabichow will be up over a million if he gets this call. And here come the time banks. Does he make does pay it off. Huge double for Rabbit Chow. Back on our other table. David Yan picks up the tens. And Wang with the ace queen of spades. Decision for Wang. This is early position on early position. We still have to fear the uncapped range of Coleman. But ace queen suited, quite a hand, very close. And Coleman with a bigger stack. Yeah, Wang's gonna rip it. This is a little bit sick for David. It feels like it's almost never nines, but this one lurks, and of course, just ace king. He glances at the clock. We can't say it's never nines, but you guys know what I mean. Yeah, Wang doesn't have much more than David, so to risk it all, I would imagine it's generally gonna be a premium. David does make the correct call, though. Big flip here. Good luck. Tournament defining pot for both players. And a great start for Wang as he slides into the ace. Eight, nine, ten working for David, but. <laughs> Four cross spade for the squeezers, not the one. GG, sir. Another great player falls. And with that, we are, I think, 11 players from the money. Yeah. Thank you. Stanley Choi, our short stack. Seth Davies, very short. And Kulev continues to go wire to wire. Please. You hear that music, you know what time it is betacr.eu get a sweat on these guys don't sit on the sidelines betacr exclusive action 
elevate your sports engagement experience. 15% free play. If you've been on there firing, Will, on betacr.eu. I don't have enough money to be gambling like that. Nick. Fair enough. Something tells me you guys in chat might. Fifty players left now. King seven of spades again under the gun. Pass this, this time. Yeah, interesting. That much closer to the money. Wang now going to start wielding his stack. Raises, but JNT is going nowhere. Indeed, JNT with the prettier Queen Jack, and of course, position he's in. JNT on the free roll. Take this one upstairs. <clears throat> Essentially a min raise just north. And for Wang, this is in between a dream and a nightmare. Oh, what a card for Noel Thorell, where now that free roll is so real. And a complete brick for Wang. JNT does check back quickly, though. Chop it up, gentlemen. See how it goes on the river. Two of the bigger stacks here content to get to showdown. Never want to get greedy there with just Queen Jack and then potentially face a big raise. That's a <laughs> that one had a plus throw. Santos Shervania now in fourth place. Go on, Santos. No surprise there. As we see the bling in that supersized main event trophy. from Wai Leong, leaning on him, 11 off the money. Rai has a hand. I don't think he's going to be folding. Me neither. The question is, is he calling or in the raising mood? He's calling. Patrick looks interested. I've been fooled before. Go on, Patrick. Big slick for Antonius. One eighty five. And the way things have gone for your rye, this could spell disaster. I would think your rye is peeling here. Or perhaps re-jamming. I'm not suggesting that's the move. But it does feel like that's what's about to occur.
I'm sure that 151,000 for 39th is somewhat on your eye's mind. And of course he does have a great hand. Ace-Jack suited. In the vicinity of a primo. He's just going to peel in position. 470 in the middle. Patrick slides his three bet forward to the dealer. Oh. What a Something flop. Something of Uriah's flop, indeed. Uriah somehow with exactly pot left to play. And for Patrick with Ace of Spades, King of Clubs, still ahead of a lot of things. This technically being one of them. And is this enough hand to just go with here? Looks like we'll find out. Indeed it does. Diamond and check. Very much so. And for Patrick, he starts with the small bat. Uri jams, and now Patrick's job is to make the read and to calculate the amount of flush draws versus... Yeah, he makes it very, very nice quickly. Very nice from yeah. Patrick. Essentially snaps. 1.4 out there, Will. Huge pot here, nearing the bubble. Patrick needs to fade a diamond or a jack. That was nice from Patrick, not even going time bank. Clean for Antonius, very clean chop outs, but we like the three of clubs if we're in Patrick's seat. Go on, Mr. Antonius. GG, your eye. We're sub 50. Patrick Antonius now creeping to the top of the leaderboard. He's hungry, Nick. I feel it too. Yeah, just a great read there. Didn't even really think about it. Kind of no. just knew where he was at. Didn't, and didn't even use a time bank. Just had made his decision. Forty nine left now. Ten off the money. And some of it may have been that Patrick sensed the speed of the jam. He's played a lot of poker. That snap jam sometimes does feel drawy. Maybe not a set. And a 10 perhaps thinks things through a bit more. We can never know. Felt like a lot of intuition. Also, Uri being more active maybe played a role. Indeed. King 10 off for Sir Watts. 1.5 to start. Aaron with a million. Goes for 80. Let's see if Zhang feels compelled to defend the 6-5. 10 off the money. 9, rather. Yeah, I think a lot of players would just muck it here, but Zhang... Definitely one who's playing for the win. Does defend. Aaron very tough from what I've seen. Got shot in the five of hearts working for Zhang. Not a great board for Watson. He is really just leveraging the situation in the tournament. Aaron's stack worth an awful lot. He cashes all the time if he just avoids murky spots. This spot certainly is murky. 
Yeah, Aaron can easily fold to the money here. And not just that, but, you know, be healthy, too. As you said, though, Will, seemingly not his style. Yeah, not at all. How hard does Sir Watts want to go? A lot of different turns can come. Does just bink the 10. A combination of just pure aggression and obviously positive variance has led to a fourth place finish in the 50K for 770,000 and then a third place finish in the 150K for 1.9 million for Sir Watts. And here he is in the 100K main. Nice check from Watson. Feels pretty pragmatic out of position. Still 30 something bigs to play. And for Zhang with just six eye, we'll be hearing from him at some point. Likely right now. Very interesting one brewing. Yeah, there will be a bet coming. He does take the free one. Doesn't mean he's done with it. Yeah, and he's certainly not done now. And this card might be a road to a win for Aaron. Really not what Watson was looking for. Yeah, all types of hands come in. Even 7-6 now is a straight. Good point, as 7-6 is very real. 5-7 as well. Mike going to check in. Certainly now... I guess we could have 5-3 of hearts, but other than that, tough to have a worse hand than 6 high here. Very much agree. That's 175. This is nice from Zhang and the way he wound up, went about his business. Very composed. Something of ice in the veins. And the point you brought up, Will, is definitely bothering Watson. 6-7 is quite real. Heart draws with just a random queen or seven exist. Mm. I mean, this would just be the ultimate heat check. Yeah, no, he can't make the call. Great hand from Aaron, and just an example of the type of player that is absolutely playing for the win. Beautiful execution from Zhang. Understandable line from Watson. I'm the big bride. SD Wang now. Switching features. Mm. Getting close. Forty eight remains. Stanley Choi still our short stack. Kulev has held the chip lead for an awful long time. Chris Pruer in second now. Go on, Chris. Things really did turn for him after shaving the mullet, didn't they? They really did. Just a great decision all around. Very much so. He made a little score on the mullet, I think. Took Kerry Katz, Katz off for a little number, but uh, he shaved it and won like seven million straight, so... I would agree it was a good decision. Ace-Queen suited for Patrick. And Watson with a hand that may want to stick around. Looks like he is. To the tune of a call. 
Oh, a lot of heat behind. And for Patrick, this is a difficult decision to navigate in the face of a Zhang 3-bat. And we just saw Patrick in the same situation in the small. Now the tables are turned, and here comes the squeeze. Indeed we did. Squeeze is in. And this is made extra gross by the fact that I'm sure he knows Aaron is not the type of player that is just folding to the money here. Definitely. Still nine off, but precariously close. Patrick does cover healthily. Great stack to start. See how he wants to play it. He snapped that ace-king off. He goes for 475. His four bet is understandable. And we would think it's yes, going in. All in. Does snap do it? And now just a disgusting spot for Patrick. This is a bit of a crazy spot for Patrick. Ace-king looms very large. Kings loom large. But Zhang, very capable will, as you alluded to. He is, Nick, but are we ever good here? Patrick will still have chips if he calls and loses, but all things considered... He calls and wins, he would be the new chip leader. Just ace queen though for 62 bigs. Yeah, he, he does flick it in. Huge one here, Will. 2.6 in the middle. Pot of the tournament so far. Patrick looking to take out Aaron Zhang. We'll need to get very lucky to do so or Aaron will be second in chips. Oh, oh my. That's so sick for Zhang. And what a feeling if you're Patrick Antonius. My. Believe we have a new chip leader. He'll be neck and neck with Kulov. Kulev, rather. Very good game to you, sir, Aaron Zhang. My will played for the win and just got brutalized there by the deck. That was very brutal. And Antonius, our new chip leader. Seems he's technically in second by just a blind or two, but... Zhang may want to wait a minute to hit the cash games after that one. Yeah, Aaron, take a little stroll around the property, maybe a bite. I mean, one queen is bad enough. Is no, it? I was thinking the same. Two right in the window is vicious for Aaron Zhang. Always enjoy watching him play. And for Antonius, there it is. Kulev still out in front. Wire to wire still in play. But Patrick, 126 big blinds for the Terminator. Also, don't really blame him, Nick. The way Aaron plays, cut off there, you raise, Watson calls, you know, ace-queen suited. It's so cuspy. It's understandable to run it with ace-queen suited versus a guy like Zhang. And we say that as a compliment, but it was a lot of bigs. 55 to go from Watson. Might Esty be pushing back? Yeah, Esty does have the best hand here. But the bubble is looming. And look at this, he does go for the three bet. Find the Brewer. 
great read of the situation. Excellent timing from Esty. Watson isn't necessarily done, though. I've seen him maneuver in these situations, but really nothing he can do there. Esty Wang, not afraid of bubbling himself. And we see you, chat. We just got a big tournament to call here, man. We're trying to stay focused. But we see you. It's true, Will. Much love to the chat. But we do have to stay focused <laughs> in the biggest 100K ever. 47 remain now. Pays 39. Getting a little nervy out there. Getting a little bloody out there. Getting a little bloody in regards to the bottom part of the bracket, chips-wise, as we see Coleman open. Stanley Choi in last, followed by Smilkovich, Chin Wei Lim, Roland Rokita, Joey Weissman, Seth Davies, Konstantin Moslock, Paulius P., and Henrik Hecklin in 39th. Keep an eye on that. Ibinger considering three bet. He's gone. Good choice. And big slick for Joey Weissman. What great timing for Joey. Wow, we've seen it go around. Ace King versus Ace Queen again. And I'm sure Coleman won't be delighted whatsoever. But seeing as the blinds are up, it's a 13 and a half big blind jam. And a civil war brewing here in Jeju between two Americans. This would just be a pretty amazing fold if Coleman could get away. It would be unbelievable, but just 13 and a half bigs. He does what needs to be done. Can he find a bit of Antonius? Or can Joey Weissman find the huge double, 885 in the middle? I don't usually mean that. Is that? I don't usually mean that. Well, I think Patrick used all those queens. Joey yeah. now. Oh, maybe not. It's just never easy. This would be a sick one. Go Does on, hold. Joey. Very nice hand from Joey board? Wiseman. Are you hoping for Jack 10 or 3 4? Jack 10, of course. No, not logically. Like, what is, what are you actually thinking at that point? Jack 10. Yeah, because for me, I'm always thinking 3-4 because I feel like Jack 10 would be too dirty. Like, like it, it would be too much. Just like chop is fine. I'll take the chop. Yeah, you think if you want the chop, you might get it more. <laughs> well, no, just Jack 10 would feel so dirty for you. Yeah, What's like dirtier, Jack 10 or Queen Queen? Whereas 3-4 obviously still sucks, but like, it's just you're not asking for as much. Coleman yeah, takes exactly. it as well, Nick. I would be pretty tilted I like if I just I'm lost that person. one on the bubble. Coleman I'm is like... taking it well. And on our outer yeah. tables, Roman Robick going to war with Leon Sturm. His queens hold versus My Leon's American. ace king. Robick now creeping up the chip leaderboard, and Leon is in 30th. Wow, that is a big switch. Thank you for the update, Will. Roman was short when he got moved, too. It's obviously gotten to work. Kulev still in front. Santosh in fifth. Robic now in sixth. And a great feeling for Joey to hold there. Adam in the chat, you're welcome. We try. Can't always get it done, but we very much always try to lay out for table talk. God bless Antonius from Tanhai Tran. Fair enough. Yeah, seriously. Say a prayer for the man. Where Ivy at, Sasha? Where is Ivy at? I think he's in the 25K PLO. Couple of kings for Coleman. Redemption time. 65. And enough chips for Coleman to put in a non-all-in three bet here. But it is that eight off the money 
I wouldn't be shocked if he just puts it in. Only 22 bigs, but you're right, Will. Three bet non all in is very possible with a hand this strong. I think both are options. does go for your way and for Wang Yang is this is a decision and he always has to wonder is Coleman a little steamy after the ace king ace queen it really appeared he wasn't and if anyone's played with David you would get the feeling that he's just business as usual but Wang can never know for sure no, and JNT did call pretty quickly in the small. We think he would three-bet strong hands. Wang is going to be really enticed to continue. Go in time bank. And a pretty glorious straight three-bet from Coleman. We like getting action from King-Queen with King-King. 475 in the middle. Scary flop for Coleman, but of course we can see he has a stranglehold. Yeah, such a bad feeling. Just no ace, right? You don't even have a lot of chips behind. There it is. There are high-level calculations going on, but indeed when we have kings, no ace springs to mind as a thought. Might we be going extremely small here if we're David? Or just check. 50. He goes for 10%. And even though this is just a god-awful flop for Wang, it's such a small bet is small, but we're fairly disrobed right now. King, queen, no back door. Eight off the money. We have to respect Coleman's procedures as far as great hands go. And we'd love to have one diamond out there, but we do block ace, king, and ace, queen. We do. Although, do those just jam pre as opposed to the non-all-in? Does let it go, and a good choice it was. Very nicely executed from Coleman, who marches right back. See JNT still in the chip lead. Alex in second, Mateus. Wang, David Coleman, Joey Wiseman, and Webster now pretty short with Smilk rounding out the table. Everybody trying to make it into the money here in the biggest 100K ever. These numbers are just insane. They truly are. Feeling the FOMO a little, Nick? A little bit, Will. I am, but I'm so thankful to commentate and to be forced to sweat like this all day when you play a lot of tournaments, it's nice. You know, I, I feel myself learning. And Is it a little bit of enjoying. a relief? Yeah, there's some of that as well. Not having sure. to be the one making these decisions? Yeah, I'm going to min cash this trip no matter what. So, King you know what space. I mean? I do, Nick. Five of spades. Alex, we haven't seen a lot of him. Very good online player, incredibly good coach, too. He is great. Has had an eventful series. And look at this, Joey now with another decision. He does have a decision versus the under the gun open of Theologus. We're not in love with playing flats in this particular scenario. And obviously we can see the cards, yeah, but he's gonna go with the three bet, I like it. Goes for 190. Barring involvement from anybody behind, this should do it. A 
eventful series for Alex. 33rd in the first event, 10th in the second event, then had a 26th and a 30K, then the third place in the 25K for 707,000. But he lost queens versus tens, remember, for a very big pot. Yeah. To the eventual champion Mario Mosbeck in that tournament. He did. Ten on the turn. Yeah, Alex is knocking at the door of, you know, huge things. But as you said, still a successful series if it ended now and a great stack in the main. And we've seen a lot from Alex Kulev now over the past year in these live tournaments. But Theolo, just another one of these guys, I think one of the best tournament players out there in the world, but not a household name yet. Yeah, he might be a touch more niche. He's on his way, though. Notice I haven't said anybody is lacking that big signature win, Nick, have I? You haven't been going to that. You got burned a couple times. In the I respect yeah, the evolution, In, in the well. $150,000 buy-in, when I said that like five times and then was pointed out how <laughs> wrong I was, I, I've learned from that mistake. It's 30. 80 to go. This is an odd spot for Coleman. Under normal circumstances, we're happy to get involved. But with 32 bigs, seven off the money. Interesting spot versus the JNT Open. He does just slide it, can't fault him. And in part, maybe the lo larger sizing from JNT playing a role there. Astute Will definitely did. And look at this, Nick. Alex with pocket aces. My. Oh, my. 1.5 each to start. Goes for the double check. And Alex might play two three bet sizes pre. This one would certainly go into the smaller one. Does just go for 3.8 some odd. Perhaps he's just playing one size. And JNT not one to go quietly historically. Although very close to the money. Just ace jack against the other big stack. Asked him how much he's playing. Counting out that call, and there it goes, Nick. By the way. Yes, there it goes. It looked like he put in something like, it is indeed a call. My, what a spot for Theologus. This is truly the dream. Can he avert disaster? Oh, that's a nice sight if you're Alex. And trouble looms in a major way for Jean-Noël Thorell, Will. My word. The case ace on the flop. One twenty-five. One twenty-five declared. Something of a snap. Not clean for Theologus, but of course still top set. And as we can all see, JNT drawing dead. 900 in the middle. 1 million back for Theologus, covered slightly by Thorell. See how he wants to play it. One of the best, Alex. Does go for check. Interesting choice. JNT content to do the same. 
And what a sight if you're Theologus. Does it get any better than that, Will? I was thinking a club can save JNT, but an eight giving Theologus top boat now. See what kind of size Alex goes for. He might very well go for quite a lot, if not almost all of it. But he might also not want to lose his man. Beautiful poker mind, Theologist. Sorry to just go on and on about that, but all you have to do is listen to him talk about the game to know that. Let's go for 250. Get snapped. And JNT will see the bad news. He was really targeting something like tens, jacks, queens. Understandable when you have all of the aces. Yeah, and it kind of feels like JNT lost the minimum there, all things considered. Pre was ambitious, but post, he certainly lost the minimum. Theologus wow. very healthy now. Maybe I forty six left here in Jeju. <laughs> no idea how to play the nuts. Seven off the money, Johannes Straver, 47th place. Patrick, for the first time, we have a new chip leader, Patrick Antonius. Kulev still in second, Santosh in third, Chris Brewer and Kang Tong round out the top five. The hunt for wire to wire for Kulev has ended, but that's a great top five, Will. Webster very short now, just 10 bigs. This is a touch close for Webster. I was going to say, it he, in. he's another one who plays for the win, doesn't he? I think so, although he is smart and isn't going to go completely berserk. We can see he's running into it. Unfortunate for Webster to be dominated. See if he can hit. The Malaysian needs to get real lucky or he'll be going out seven off the money. Oh, go on Webster, huge. Welcome sight with the diamond as well. Massive for Lim. Never Three, easy right? to burst these bubbles. Yep. And a great feeling when you're all in, dominated on the bubble. Finds the lady for the double. I miss my lady, Nick. I miss my little guy. I miss the fam too, Will. But unfortunately for us, we just gotta do one of the hardest jobs in the world and sit here and talk about poker, don't we? Yeah. You had a calling hand? So, calling hand. Holding hand? Calling hand. If the hand played out as it should. <laughs> okay, neat. The 
Someone in chat said earlier if they saw Joey and didn't know his name, they would think it small. was Joey. Never, <laughs> never go for him. We'll have to take them at their word. Sorry, I'm trying to give you guys some love out there. And we see you in the Twitch chat, too. Nick, don't get into that, but I see you out I'm there. I'm going to see what's going on do you in need Twitch to, do, momentarily. Nick, no, Twitch, what's up? Don't do anything crazy now. Just saying hi. You kind of are baiting them when you say that. <laughs> I am baiting them, but you know, I, I asked for it, and here I am. Everybody good out there in Twitch? Much love. We really do appreciate the sweats. And if inclined, hit the button or do whatever you got to do. Hi, gaming with Silvertail. I've abandoned you guys. Swams, a little bit. You're All right. right. Let's get out of the Twitch chat, Nick. We got some poker here. All right, Will, relax. You uh, brought up Twitch. It's just a walk here. I can't mess around with Twitch for a minute. That's that. That's good. Gave him some love. Shout out the Silver Fox. I bring her kids a walk with Hey, me. Beaver King. Come on. McNitty, I see you. Matthias Eyebringer making another run here, looking for another huge score, Nick. Hello from Spain, Uruguay. Roman Robeck in seventh place. Jaffe's singing me off here. He brought up Twitch. I'm in there for 15 seconds. He's getting me right out of there. What are you so afraid of, Will? If, it's, if the comment's insane, I'm not going to read it. Don't worry. Just giving Twitch a little love. We're on the bubble here. It's going to be slow. Thank you so much, Pete. Lang Yang with the King Hate offsuit under the gun. Going to fold it. <coughs> J and T back at it. And a really big swing for him not getting basically obliterated there. Huge. Could have been worse. You know, he's shown a propensity to be sticky. Antonius, our chip leader. Rogov 99, I see you. Last one, Will. Last one. Take it, Mr. Thorell. What's his background? Business, I assume? Yeah, I... I mean, I know he was very successful, but... Producer James, do you have JNT's background? Feels like he, like, invented something. The cosmetics industry. Might make the type of makeup that you and Ali use before these big shows? <laughs> Just Ali, Will. Don't get too comfy over there. <laughs> Great call that we'd be seeing more of David Coleman. That was a really good read on your part, by the way. Great player. I knew it. A lot of good Americans out here sneaking around. There really are. And it's tough for the Americans. Uh, the jet lag can be real, the beginning part of the series. 60. Bigger problems to have. 60 to go from Theologus. And this is, I'm assuming, something that doesn't happen non-bubble. The ace five off from the hijack, a hand we can lean on these guys with, right? Agreed that ace becomes way more powerful in these scenarios. A little bit of posturing from Joey there. Yeah, seven off the money. We're not in any great rush. Will Yang go duck hunting? Beautiful flop for Alex. <laughs> One would think this would be it, but never do know for sure. Agree.
I actually recognize Wang. The first time I did commentary live at the bike, Nick, over a year ago, he was on the stream. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. I believe he was some kind of race car driver. Wang Yang? Yeah. Wow. That was what, that was the info we had then. The legend grows. Tension building. 46 left here. Yeah, note the table talk has really slowed. The tension has indeed built 151,000 for 39th, zero for 40th. And ducks for Smilko here. It does go in. Good luck, sir. Joey has him dominated. How to know, though. Nine and a half bigs. Nine, rather. Yeah, and both the blinds covering Joey's stack. Very wow. understandable fold from Joey, but these won't be folding. And for Smilkovich, we need to find the duck. It's time to go hunting. Yang in no rush to flip his hand face up with J and T behind, but he does jam. Yang looking to take out a very <coughs> dangerous player near the bubble here. Good luck. Can you find another duck? <laughs> now it has to come, obviously. GG, Daniel. I was no one trolling there. <laughs> <laughs> I was convinced it was coming. Sometimes you see the guys do the early get up, you know, to try, like, like strategically. That was just to get up and leave because he knew he was out of here. Yeah, it was. Smilko doesn't play games. Another beast showered in 46th place. And with that, 45 left. And with each of these guys going out, you can feel it, right? Just a little bit closer to that 151,000. Oh, you can feel it. Sir Watts can feel it. What's he going to do with all this money, Nick? Yeah. Is he going to build a golf course or something? Like, Probably something smart and not, you know, degen. Sixty-five. Yang was also involved in a huge pot, Nick, on the Hustler live stream. SD Wang. No, Yang, the driver Yang. from our other table. Kings versus Kings versus Aces with you Mariano. Know, I, I feel like I saw that. Saw a blurb of, of that hand. But SD is going to work here. Saw him three bet the Ace Eight off not long ago. Looks like he's been busy. SD is going to work. Victor's been quiet, kind of handcuffed. 250. Whoa. Never mind. So I just assumed Victor was stalling a bit. Nice reminder that he wasn't. And a couple of ladies next door. This is one of the scarier times to have ladies with the plus one open from Esty off of a bunch, but 
still four bet is imminent. Unfortunate for Victor as it would have worked. Probably. Patrick declared 350. But he does in fact have oh, to go bigger. This is an interesting situation. They might need the floor. Yeah, could this be ruled a call? I don't know. So what do I have to do? I would think this is a scenario for the floor. Haven't seen Luca yet since that great announcement earlier. They're just making the ruling here. It's one one eighty five plus two fifty. Five thousand less. He did say an amount more than Victor's raise, but I would still want to ask the floor what's what, just in case a couple of fives are trying to hit the flop. He's just gone, fair enough. <laughs> I should have looked. Yeah, I heard, I heard 150. 150 also for me. You also heard 150? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I saw it's 250. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Antonia stacks more chips. So as this bubble looms, the picture getting a little clearer here, isn't it? Kulev still in the lead, Antonius on his tail, Santosh in third, Ken Tong, Chris Brewer, Roman Hrabek, Tim Adams in the top ten. Welcome. Danny Tang still in there, trying to increase that Triton player of the year, stranglehold. And, and who's our bottom five right now, Will? Stanley's been hanging around for a long time, still in last place. Roland Rokita, Leon, Henrik Hecklin, looking to avoid another disastrous bubble, and Seth Davies. Big slick for Victor. Limitless looking to get some chips back. Cool glimpse into his mind, right, with that queen five off. Very much so. Just that was looked, interesting. Just looked like he was kind of just stalling, posturing a little, but he was targeting Esty, who he's played with for a while now. I mean, it probably would have worked. Who knows? But I, I would think it usually would have worked. And as you said, that was a cool little glimpse into Victor. Arab with the 6 5 of hearts. Normally would be tempting, but. All of these stacks having to bow down to Patrick a little. Definitely. Such a good feeling to be the big stack at this point. <sighs> continues to apply that pressure. But we've seen Esty is not afraid. Patrick continues to surge. Look at this, Nick. And the type of flop if we're Esty Ace high should be good here, sometimes. It's true. Ace high certainly ahead of a lot of things that would open button.
Patrick's been hungry and he's just continuing to eat these chips. Disastrous turn for Wang. We have the best hand on the flop a decent amount, but now, I mean... Hard to see us folding this card ever. Agree with all of that. Increased by the fact that the bubble dynamics make Patrick feel a lot wider than he is. Esty going nowhere. See how ugly this gets for Esty. Oh, man. I mean, just a... I can't think of a worse run out other than a six. And I would think Patrick's going to go big here. And one of the problems for Esty is... These hands like 9-8, these clubs would bluff this river a lot. Big bet incoming. 275. 275. 275. Little more than half pot. Is there any way he can get away here? I don't think so, Will. We don't really beat value anymore. But I just don't think so. Generally, these quote-unquote counterfeited two pairs or this sort of hand optically just doesn't really ever fold. Esty really thinking about it, though. Might just feel like he's beat. Yeah, this would be an incredible laydown if he can make it. Mm. Chips in hand. Wang in the blender. Really has those chips in calling position, but hasn't made the call yet. He has them in calling position, but we can feel the hero fold as possible. He obviously doesn't like it. There it goes. Pat we'll see the bad news. Patrick Antonius just on a rampage here. Did feel like Esty kind of knew. Still had to see it. for the main event for as little as one dollar running now until 
sometime in the future, qualify for Triton events. Get in here, get in some of these buy-ins with the best in the world. Best emojis in the game, right Nick? You love that Elky emoji. Dean Eggs, qualify for the main event there. It is April 1st to June 6th. Breaking records too, the WSOP main event broke the record this year for most entrants. I, you don't like that Elky emoji, do you, Nick? <laughs> oh, she's all right, Will. Taking some bad beats versus Elky online, you know, so I had to kind of take a moment to gather myself. I didn't realize there was history there. So sick. <laughs> Patrick back at it. Leong defends. Bottom pair for Patrick. Backdoor diamonds and the overs for Wai Leong. Just six off the money. And less sort of low card heavy. Patrick goes for 40. Let's see what Chan wants to come with. He's tearing one off. Patrick, we would think he fears the six, fears the four, might be content to check. However, all the draws have missed. Let's see. Does just fire again. Is our King High ever good here? It is good occasionally, but... Seems difficult to just call down. He's gone. The heater continues. This man cannot be stopped. Patrick Antonius, one of the all-time greats. Ship leader here in the biggest 100K ever. Kind of seems fitting. We'll have some new feature tables coming up for you guys. Danny Tang in the mix. Henrik Hecklin. Alex Kulev. Make sure to download that Triton Poker Plus app. Scan that QR code. Get in the mix. Incredible technology. Red table there. Mosbach still in the mix. Been a really busy series for him. It looks like he's chipping up as well. And you're right, it has. And Paulius, the swag lord. And Patrick with another hand here. See how Patrick wants to play it. It's coming with call, which seems like a really nice choice. He knows Polyus is opening tight. And for Wai Leong, does he want to try to bang that six off? Awful tempting. Plenty of chips behind. He's going to gamble.
three ways to the flop. Ten still in the lead. Complicated flop for Wai Liang to navigate. I would certainly think he's going to lose some chips here. Although Paulius could help him out a lot. That's not going to do it, though. I would think for Patrick, bet is almost always coming here. Pre-flop with the sixes and don't hit a set. This is kind of what happens. Glances up at the clock. Sees what we see. 45 remain. Pays 39. He is tearing one off. spot for Paulius getting a great price. I think it's just a clear fold, but he is getting a, an insane price. He's not going quietly though, Will, you're right. Does he have theatrics in mind? He's check raising. We call him the swag lord for a reason. Fair enough. might very well get through, although we would think Patrick keeps an eye on him, at least now. And what's odd about this is he doesn't really have an eight very often outside of ace eight suited, which is possible and worthy of a raise. Fives are somewhat possible. Patrick is in. This is very bold from Paulius. We would assume this is the end for Wai Liang Chan. 700 in the middle. Interesting stuff from Paulius. Jack of diamonds on the turn. How hard does he want to go at this one? Six players off the money. 250. It's going 250. And for Patrick, these tens are shrinking up rapidly. But again, Pauly is a bit deficient in the nuts. He can have 8-8 eight, eight as well. This is very interesting from Paulius, and one wouldn't be shocked to see Patrick fold. As you said, Will, six off the money, 40 bigs for Paulius. It's a very kind of don't get involved stack. Patrick's in. This is a crazy hand. Paulius emptying the clip? I mean, what, what is going on here, Nick? I, I'm not sure, but I like it. We all like it.
does give up, and Patrick's going to win another monster pot up to 4.1 million. Go on, Patrick. Runaway chip leader. What a last level that was for Antonius. And I certainly thought Antonius could have folded. You could have, but he looked very comfortable there. Maybe picked up some type of live yeah, read. just, man. Paulius was off to the races. 104 big blinds for PA. Just putting on a show here, steamrolling the table. Paulius down to 18 bigs. Six players off the money in the biggest $100,000 buy-in tournament in poker history. Obviously, Nick Shulman is here. I'm here. Uh, not sure why, but I guess there's got to be a reason. But like we do in these bigger tournaments, when we get down to the pay jumps, the money bubble, a lot of math is involved. And Nick's a great player, great here commentator. He but Here we go. Math is not his strong suit. So we're going to bring in three-time poker player championship, Hall of Famer, Brian Rast, also known as the math himself. But Nick, great sweat again. Well, I enjoyed it a lot, and I'll be watching. It was indeed. Thank you, guys. We'll be back in about five minutes. Don't go anywhere. Welcome to the Daily Dose of GTO Quiz of the Day. You're playing an 8 max MTT, 20 big blinds effective. It folds to the small blind, who limps, action on you and the big blind. Why does the GTO strategy prefer to shove with hands like ace two off and ace three off, but raise small with strong hands like ace king off? Find the answer in the Daily Dose of GTO, our free ebook designed to help you master GTO poker in just five minutes per day. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Just seize the wonder.
Jeju Shinwa World. Ten bigs on their backs. Lindy in great shape. It's been a fairly challenging sort of outing for, for Ding Biao here, standing in somewhat of a contrast to obviously that tremendously deep oh, run. Oh, that jack isn't challenging, though. That he made, yeah. Spade for Lindy, but the light is dimming. Maybe this one's on me. Oh, hang on. Picks up the 10 as an out. Seven outs one time. Can Dylan find it? No. GG Dylan. Painful game we can play. It's a spot that he'll take every single time if given the opportunity, but unfortunately we know some of the time it does not work out, and this is one of them. As Lindy's run here in this 100K main comes to an end. Menu, we had a little menu shift over here at the old uh, hole in the wall and um, had some fried rice before we started. Very nice. All right, there you go. A few veggies in there for you? Or? Yeah, there were some greens. There you go. So, you know, you're getting it all. Tens for Chidwick. We'll be going in for Ponikov's 11 bigs and change. <coughs> All in. And I mentioned Stevie. You know, get, get the feeling a lot of these guys think he may be the best. I feel similarly to Ponikov's, Nick. A lot of respect from his peers. Ponikov's a very tough player to deal with. See if he can win this flip. Classic race here. I don't know about you, but I've sensed a added level of intensity in the air out there in this event. I have as well. Good start for Ponikovs. All right, he's back. Yeah, what are we beating here if we're Alex? Fives or sixes with a diamond? Struggling a touch to find other hands. Ace, ten of hearts. Nines, maybe? I think. Nines. May just knuckle. May just knuckle. Feels like the small pairs, some of the backdoor hearts combinations, really struggling to find other stuff. Ponikov's vigorously producing his time banks in front of his cards. <coughs> he obviously feels he's in the blender. And these type of spots, so crucial in tournaments, getting them right. Indeed. Hello, and welcome back to the Triton Super High Roller Series here at the Jeju Shinwa World. Will Jaffe, joined by three-time $50,000 Poker Players Championship winner, $25 million in live earnings, Poker Hall of Famer Brian Rast, as we gear down towards the money in the biggest $100,000 buy-in ever in poker history. And we bring this guy in for one reason. It's the math. We need to know the math. Big money jumps, a lot in the balance Let's start him off with a quick question, Brian. What's the square root of 4,489? 67. I mean, that's why we bring this guy in. We are down to 46, 45 players, sorry. Six off the money. Let's take a look at our new tables. We have a bunch of big names, obviously. See there at our blue table, Danny Tang. Five Triton titles last year. Edging out Jason Kuhn so far for player of the year. Seth Davies. Igor Yaroshevsky, Alex Kulev was going wire to wire before Patrick Antonius went on a run. 
Henrik Hecklin very short after bubbling the 150K and the 50K. He's not going to want to do that again. Then if you go down to our uh, red table, want to check that out. Um, a lot of other big names. Isaac Haxton, Louis Spencer, Mario Mazbach, Raman Hayajev, Ding Biao off that massive score in the 150K. And our short stack, Stanley Choi, really has been hanging around. Anything you're looking for in particular, Brian, as we play down to the bubble here? Yeah, I'm just getting familiar with the, all what's going on. So it looks like 39 cash. So we still have six that need to be eliminated, right? Because we have 45 left. And uh, the 40th stack, all the shortest stacks, those six stacks have 10 to five big blinds. And the 39th place right now, Polyus, has 13 big blinds. So we still have a decent amount of play, it looks like. Yeah. See our blue table there, Alex Kulev leading the way. And I would assume these guys like Kulev, Yaroshevsky, are going to be looking to put a lot of pressure on the middling stacks. Is that correct? Certainly, yes. This is... This is the chip leaders. It's their time to shine. It's their time to try to win some chips and take advantage of other players uh, having a high risk premium. In other words, it being risky for them to lose chips and possibly go out as opposed to gaining them. So this is the time where if you're at a table and you've got a lot of chips at your table, you uh, get to play a few more hands and um, take some extra spots. See Oleg there. One of our more unknown players. Okay, okay, okay. Chance. Mauricio Salazar. Not familiar with this guy either, but. Chance? Chance. Yes, chance. Come on. Come on. And Danny Tang now. And how did these short stacks navigate here, Brian? Well. I mean, this is a clear open for chips in the cutoff, but it's not like massively plus EV. So he has to decide. I mean, you look at who you're opening into. Two of the stacks are short, which is an argument for opening. Then again, the big blind has 2.3 million, which is kind of an argument for letting it go. And we can see both of them kind of making the same decision. Jack 10 off in the cutoff, Jack 9 off for Seth Holy on the button, shit. and neither one took that uh, their marginal oh, plus shit. chip EV spots. I I have, like, 12 or 13 big blinds. And we see but King 5 bad. going to muck there in the small blind, oh, and these guys with 9, 10 big blinds, they're not in panic mode, right? They want to make the money too, obviously. But yeah, I mean, define panic That's mode for me, Will. I mean, we're not just trying to get it in and double, right? We can still hang around we a little, pick our spots. It wasn't yeah. by a mile. Yes and no. I mean, all of these... Hold on one second. Yeah. Hold that thought, Mr. Math. Make sure to buy action. PokerStake.com. Today's event is brought to you by PokerStake, the official staking partner of Triton. PokerStake is the ultimate platform for staking and professional poker players around the globe. With no fees and any purchases, PokerStake is the go-to platform for anyone looking to support their favorite player's journey and celebrate the rewards of big victories. Check out the PokerStake.com now and stake your champion. Brian, during the MMA fights, you had a spreadsheet up with all your bets. Do you have a similar thing for these players with the PokerStake account or just MMA? You know, I haven't bet on any of the tournaments since I've been here, even though every time that comes up, I tell myself to, and I do have an account, but just at night when I go back, I forget. And here we see Hecklin under the gun with King Queen off, and this is where the risk premium, right? It's not that high for him, is it? I mean, it's not super high, but it's kind of high. I mean, that that being said, and this is what I was going to get at before the ad sort of interrupted uh, what I was going to say, is that these bottom six stacks that are all, they're actually all like nine big blinds or less. These are all the stacks that we've seen so far. I mean, Tang, Davies, now Hecklin. In a world where all the shortest stacks just waited around and none of them played a hand, they would go out. They would blind out. So, obviously, that's not really realistic that all six of them and then all, you know, whatever X number of players above them uh, are all going to just not play any hands. Some of them will get hands, decide to play certain spots. Jeez. The point is, though, 
is that to a certain extent, and your question is, are they in danger mode? Yeah, they're a little bit in danger mode, and it's because they're sub-10 big blinds. It's two and a half big blinds per orbit. And they're the, you know, their stacks where if they waited around and everybody waited around, they would go out first. Not really. Well, you're the math guy. I'm the yeah. guy that gets paid to say words. So maybe a better term is they're in the danger zone. Yeah. Math agrees. Yeah. Seven. Well, if you have a pair on that, we're flipping it. I thought I used the. Did I say something? I thought I said they're in the danger zone. You said the danger mode. Oh, I meant zone. Yeah, I meant zone. Oh, you meant zone. Yeah. Good correction. The math. It gets confusing out there. Give him a little bit. Brian Raster. He's just getting his footing here, fresh into the booth, into the lion's den in this biggest hundred k. And look, Brian. I mean, I know you don't play as much. Are you getting the FOMO here? Yeah, definitely. No, the, this is the biggest 100K ever. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. And uh, doing this tournament last night yeah, was, well, uh, was the strongest FOMO I got since I've been here. So might we see you inching back into the, the fold? I haven't given up playing poker. I'm going to be there this summer in the WSOP playing a bunch of tourneys. So you, know, you want to play? You want to play with the Americans? Is what you're saying? It is. It is true that at this point, mix mix games are probably better for me than straight no limit hold'em. But uh, that's part of it too. And Kulev now, easy shove. And Henrik Hecklin bubbled the 50k. As second in chips, which you really never see, King. all in with kings versus ace king. Trying not to bubble this one as Ding Biao has a decision. Maybe doesn't. There's our short stack, Stanley Choi. Yeah, he's five big blinds. He's going to have to find a spot. Not going to be able to fold his way into the money. Well, very likely not. I mean, six players out, that's more than 10% of the field. 45, it's just under 15% of the remaining field, so. And it's not so much about, oh, you have 50 big blinds, you have 100 big blinds. Isn't it relative to how much the rest of your table has in terms of how much pressure we're looking to exert here? Yeah, that is that is more relevant. So, I mean, you, you don't have to necessarily be the chip leader or second. I mean, you, you know, you could be like fifth in chips, but just happen to be at a table where there's a bunch of short and medium stacks and no one's even close to you, and it'd be a wonderful spot on the bubble. Spencer, one of those players straddling that danger zone. Not quite there, but are we too close to defend this here? Yeah, it's a tricky spot because, and I don't blame him for folding, taking like really marginal, marginal plus chip EV spots here where a lot of your value out of that hand comes from the fact that you're getting such a good price from the pot. But given that your opponent has a stronger range, almost certainly has a stronger hand, you're out of position, you end up losing that pot a pretty high percent of the time. So therefore it's it's like one of these, you know, invest a little bit with the pre-flop call in order to get back, but not frequently. And that's not really the type of spot that you want to take right now. Because what happens is you take a couple of those spots, you do what the most likely thing is and you lose, and all of a sudden you're one of the shortest stacks. But Spencer's in a, in a position now where by passing up a few of those spots, he can really increases chances of not slipping down into the shortest stacks and kind of wait for them to, you know, either go out or double or, you know, because right now the shortest stacks are the one who the pressure's on them and they have to make something happen, like Stanley. You see Ding starting to apply that pressure, lean on these guys with the solver bait. And this is just some stalling, I assume? Yes, definitely. Luckily for you guys, we have those red time bank chips, which are 10 seconds to avoid situations like this. 
So, yeah, so they can only do 10 seconds before Well, they no, actually. If someone opens, you get 30 oh, seconds. Oh, that's right. You get the full but time. But ni the nice thing is if, if nobody opens, you only have 10, which yeah. speeds things up. As you see, Ike Haxton, no strangers to bubbles. No strangers to math either, is he, Brian? Oh, no. When you guys see each other, do you say, like, hi, or do you just, like, say numbers and stuff? Numbers. 14, 15, 15. Spencer with fours. And do we have enough fold equity here to consider? Or is this just too reckless? No, he's he's folding. Sa exact same idea as the big blind spot with Jack Deuce of Clubs that I just got done talking about. Kind of like a spot where you lose the pot most of the time, investing the call, but because you're when you do win, you win a lot more chips. Mario now with Ace Jack in the big. Mario Mosbeck, the former soccer player, having a great series. And what a flop. And maybe Mario thinks he gets some leads here, which is why he's not checking faster. Or maybe just taking his time because he doesn't mind time going off the clock. He does still have a below average stack, so despite the fact that he's not under as much pressure as some of these shorter stacks we've been seeing. <clears throat> Ding going to start leaning on him. Mario obviously going nowhere. 14th place in the 150K for Mario, but first in a 25K for almost 1.2 million after winning the 40K mystery bounty in Monaco. Yeah, I don't, I don't think Mario gets any leads so much. He is going to raise here, Ooh. though, Brian. I wasn't expecting that. No, same here. Mario has taken a lot of creative lines from what I've seen. It just feels like such a comfortable call with the ace jack. But look at this. I agree, but Mario is going to get bow to put some gets extra ding to chips. put in more chips drawing essentially dead. Now he is drawing dead. That card is so innocuous. I mean, I feel like Mario's in a spot where at this point after check raising flop, he kind of either needs to come with check or a bet that's not too big. But because I don't know how much sense it makes to, to small bet turn after check raise, like, perhaps he checks here quite a bit, kind of simulating a hand that's giving up. Yeah, because check raise bet at this point is kind of starting to polarize your range to you mostly want to be like an eight or better and now this line is laying a trap for floats that continued and the five of clubs obviously being a pretty great card uh from mario's perspective in that if my opponent was floating me with some backward door equity type of stuff he probably doesn't have much equity now maybe at best like a gutter mario has just played this hand to perfection yeah, and Mario has, like, a very easy call here. The only thing that's going to put Mario, quote-unquote, in the blender will be if he calls, the river comes off, whatever, and he checks, and then, ding, just, like, puts them all in. Then you're not that comfortable with the ace-jack. Five players off the money here. Mario's countrymen, Roland, who also won an event, out in 45th, and Mario calling... And now he's just going to have under a pot size bet left on the river. And the river's another five. Yeah. 
neither player is very likely to have a five the way this hand played. So that card changes very little. And if you're Ding, you have to think Mario has at least an ace here, right? Yeah. Y yes. You, I mean, I, I'm pretty sure you have to put him on maybe an eight or, or but perhaps an ace or a better. little more likely an ace. Gip and just gives it up, and Mario, yeah. great job getting some more chips there. So Ding's bet on the turn was, again, as I said, Mario's sort of simulating like a check raise bluff that's giving up. So Ding's bet on the turn was to clear out that part of his range, that check raise bluff and get up. But once he called, it's kind of like, well, now he has at least an ace or better. Do we want to bluff that range? And, and Ding didn't go for that. That would have been a hero bluff. Wisely shut it down. And Mario, honestly, I'm not sure many players, obviously Adrian Mateos, they're great. I'm not sure many players have impressed me more this series, Brian, than Mario. It's not just the creative lines. He looks super comfortable out there. He hasn't been playing poker that long, all things considered. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. What's the coin? Um, a bit of 50k this year? A lot of great online players here. I just wonder if some of them, the bright I lights, the pressure, it's it's I pretty intense out there. It is, and I mean, this tournament's a, a pretty big spot. Now, you know... Yeah, did you walk through the room at all? I felt since this started, uh, the level of intensity has been raised. Yeah. And look at this, well, Stanley. Look at how much money these guys are the playing for now. KFC. It's it's a lot more. Was, Stanley uh, now has been nursing that short Diego. stack. Six six players are getting a million dollars. Like, if you win, you owe me a hundred bucks. It's crazy. And then he won. And then I paid the guy a hundred bucks and Chris never paid me back. <laughs> So he owes me a hundred bucks though. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Choi has got to take this spot. It was pretty cool. Just this random there's, guy. There's, there's no more waiting, is there? There's no passing this. You've got I'm five blinds. You've Never got a really been. good Not hand. You're, you're getting called, but, you know, Ding's been I opening a lot of hands. So, I mean, we're, we're a pretty solid big favorite against him. And uh, you, you can't wait this out. You can't nurse the nub forever, can you, Brian? No. Sometimes you got to risk the nub in order to keep nursing the nub. Ah. Yeah. I would assume this is just more posturing. The queen jack can yes. never get involved here. No, say he's using his 30 seconds. Five players from the money in this 151,000 bubble. Not a tournament you want to bubble. No, this one. This one's kind of a painful bubble, for sure. Have you had any big bubbles in your career? I'm sure that I have. Sounds uh, like nothing. you just never. You just win everything, Brian. No, 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 definitely not. I'm sure that I've had some painful bubbles. Just nothing comes to mind off the top of my head. I mean. And again, is this is getting into a slightly bigger field. I mean, right after you bubble this, <laughs> you've got a bunch of, of spots Cold where there's camera. very <laughs> little change okay. in the payout. And Stanley's <laughs> not going to love this, right? He's in a pseudo flip here with the 6-4 of clubs. Your yes, mm. it's a pseudo flip. That's what the math says. No, I have not good Don't want to go like this. Ding is very live to eliminate him. I mean, it could be better for him. He could be up against yeah. Ace or King X. Could, you know, but he's still a solid favorite here. So far, so good. Just looking to dodge a six or a four running straight cards. Yeah, this is a pretty nice flop. Oh, the four peels off it. Now Stanley needs to catch ace, king, or queen, or he's out of here right near the bubble. Oh, and that's just brutal, Brian. Brutal for Stanley, but there are many people in the room who are not upset with that that bad beat. Stanley, very successful businessman. That one's going to sting, though. I mean, if you're one of these stacks with 20 blinds or less, you very much like seeing that. And we got action over here. Potentially another player bubbling. Danny Tang has ace-king of spades, and Mauricio has queens. 
Oh, this guy. No, no, the table. Danny Tang looking to put a little distance between him and second place in the Triton Player of the Year race. A double would go a long way here. Big flip. Throw an ace out there. Don't throw any queen though. Danny's talking to us. Oh, not what he wanted to see. No, that's this is pretty hopeless. Yeah. Needs a ten and a jack to make a running straighter. He's out of here. GG. GG, Danny. Salt in the wound with the king and the ace. Yeah. Danny Tang hits the showers in 43rd place. As Mauricio Salazar, the Colombian, one Triton Cash was in the last event, 13th place. So, a little experience, time in the seat paying off. Oh, and, and off camera, Roland Rokita went out in 45th. Yeah, I mentioned that already, bro. Oh, you did, yeah. Now Stanley's out. Now Danny's out. So actually, three of the six people necessary to get us to the <laughs> bubble are, are all out. Three more players eliminated, and we will hit this $151,000 bubble. I know you don't want to bust the tournament, Mr. Math Guy, but you really don't want to bust this now. Yeah, now it's only three people, so... You know, the closer you get, the more that desire to just hang around a little bit longer goes up. Some call that ICM. Call it whatever you want. Common sense. Seth Davies, one of those players looking to sneak in here, very much in the danger zone. Just using his 30 seconds. <laughs> He's now, I th it looks like he's a short stack. He is. Yep. Going to take his full 30 seconds to fold the jack five. Can't blame him. Shingus may do the same here with the 9-3. No. Thank you, sir. And Igor with fours, and we're going to see a little big stack confrontation here. Yeah, he's he is just flatting. And uh, you're going to get to C3. Igor, a very good player in his own right from oh, the, the Ukraine. And look at this, Brian. Igor flops a set, and Kulev has the nut flush draw. Fireworks, potentially. Kulev bets really small. We're just going to slow play. Kulev would think shells are coming. I mean, it is a really pretty card for him to just keep blasting at this. He, you know, in addition to drawing towards the nut flush, he just picked out, picked up a gut shot draw along with potentially over cards. I mean, he bet so small on the flop that, um, Igor's continuing there with like a bunch of one pair hands, potentially even no pair one spade hands. 185. Yeah, so now comes the b bigger sizing. And now comes a bigger decision for Igor. Are we comfortable just calling this or do we want to put in a raise now? I don't think he's going to end up raising this. And some of that, I mean, it's not a spot where even for chips you're like really that comfortable raising, although. It's defensible, but I think just here on the bubble, you know, there's a number of ways that this expresses itself. But one of it is even like he's going to be three betting much tighter pre-flop to lower the variance in some spots. So definitely in this spot on the turn, I think call is pretty standard. Okay. 
And now does Kulev want to fire that third shell? There's some hands such as potentially like Queen X with a spade, maybe like King 10 with the King of Spades, some two pairs that all will be very uncomfortable for a third shell here that's pretty large. I would certainly, from what I've seen of Kulev, expect another barrel to come. One of the more aggressive players. Another guy like Mario, who has impressed me the most this series. Yeah, Kulev is impressed. Both of those guys have impressed me. I mean, I didn't really see too much of Kulev before yesterday, but he played great yesterday night when I was in here with Henry. How much is it going to be, Alex? It's going to be big. I mean, yeah, because... Yeah, this is going to be an going over off the strength of his ace of spades blocker. So he's basically repping big flushes, and he's blocking the nut flush, which is kind of, if you're Igor, this is a very uncomfortable bet for you because let's say he bet two-thirds pot. You're beating value there, right, with a set. But now to, like... 120, you know, well over pot, whatever, 125 or whatever this is, you're not really beating value anymore. So your hand is just a bluff catcher. You don't really have even a spade blocker. So it makes it quite uncomfortable. That said, he has a very strong hand. And one thing I found is that when people flop very strong hands, they tend to be more likely to call in some of these spots. Just being underrepped. Yeah. You can see Igor doesn't like it. Really awesome sizing from Kulev here, though. Yeah. Like you said, 500,000, that just gets snapped. Yeah, by a set of fours. But what Kulev did is he's, he's bluffing this off of his ace of spades, right? He's, he's taking the fact that he has the ace of spades, ace, and he's ace saying, ace okay, ace based on what's happened so far, it's very credible for me to rep a flush. So I'm going to make a bet here that I would make with a flush, and actually most likely a very big flush. Th and therefore, the ace of spades is a super relevant blocker. You see Igor counting out the call. Never a good sign for Kulev. No, this is, is going to be a big pot. I mean, if Igor calls this... Yeah, he'll be right up there with the chip lead. Yeah, he'll be up there with Patrick. Kulev has dominated this tournament so far. Oh Igor using time banks. Doesn't want to run out of them here. It feels like he's going to call, right? It really does, but... Just because he's got it counted out, he hasn't really been touching his cards. Although... Oh, oh look at this. Yeah. Kind of, maybe he's changing his mind. He's not thrilled. No. No, definitely not thrilled. He can't afford to make this call and still be in a comfortable spot to cash. Like, it looks like if he calls this, he'll still have over a million and a half. Kulev exerting max pressure here on Igor. Three players off of the bubble. It feels like it's going to go in. The full count out now. Kulev can't like to see that. Oh. Kulev trying to give nothing away. Looks like he's just picked a spot and he's staring at it. And Igor does make the call. Massive pot going his way. And Kulev, the aggression which has gotten him this far, comes back to bite him. I made a nice play oh. at that pot, but in the end, Igor made an even nicer call. Like many hands here at Triton, I, I think a good example of a, I thought a pot both players played well. Would you agree, Brian? Yeah, I agree with that. Shingis, Seth Davies hanging around with eight, seven bigs. Henrik Hecklin 
looking to avoid another disastrous bubble. Oleg healthy, so is Mauricio, Alex, and Igor now with 94 bigs. I mean, what a feeling, Brian. Very good player, Igor, from the Ukraine. Been around 10th place here in the 30K No Limit Hold'em for 101,000. But one of these guys who's looking for that monster score, that $4.3 million up top. Yeah, big spot for him. I mean, he was out of position to Kulev, who had a little bit more chips than him, but they were close. And now he just won that huge pot. He has nearly 2x Kulev. And he's at a table with, I mean, interestingly enough, the three shortest stacks still alive in the tournament. So, I mean, definitely a spot where now he gets to open kind of a lot. Yeah, he was handicapped, right, with Kulev on his direct yeah. left. Now he's the one who gets to lean on Kulev and the rest of the table. Mauricio, though, with ace, nine of diamonds here. Has not shown any fear from what I've seen from him, so would expect an open. But these spots always become Maybe. a little bit scarier. Kulev does still have him covered, and obviously Igor does as well. Yeah, but this hand is just too good here in the hijack. And uh, both of them are in the blinds, with Igor specifically in the small blind. But e either way, this, this hand is just an open. And this is why you play the math, not the feeling sometimes, right, Brian? Yeah. Do you have feelings, or is it just pure math? No, there's feelings jumbled around underneath the numbers. Sure there are. Now Shing is going to stall a little. And Kulev would never expect him to fold. And obviously that pop backfires for Kulev, but that aggression is really what makes him so dangerous and so good in a lot of ways. Yeah, he's shown himself to be pretty fearless in terms of pulling the trigger. Well, Salazar with an interesting decision there, to see that or not. Checks back, potentially faces up his range a little bit on the 10-5-4 rainbow board. I'd certainly expect a bet from Kulev here at some point. Just eight high, does have the gut shot. Yeah, he's got some equity that, that he can start semi-bluffing with. Now Salazar against I mean, it's only a third pot, so a More decent ace high. Always a little bit more daunting against a player like Kulev. You just feel like the next shell is coming. Yes, which can be scary, but if you let that go too far, you end up playing terribly. And he plays the math, makes the call correctly. Yeah. See the river. Feels, feels like a pretty standard call for with his hand, given the bet size. Kulev makes the best hand now. Yeah, and given his small bet size on the turn, he I think he can definitely value bet here. Salazar can definitely have some 4x, 5x. Potentially even an ace high that calls, although it's a bit harder for ace high to call on this turn, but could still do it. You're still beating missed flush draws. And yeah, and Kulev doesn't pick a big size. I mean, this is under third pot, 110 into 360. He's just trying to milk him here. Forty-two left, three off the money. Salazar ends up making the correct fold. Kulev came in sixth in the 150K for almost a million. Right before that came in fourth 
in the 40k yeah, mystery bounty for 310,000 and honestly took a pretty gross beat to bust that one to Jonathan Jaffe. Huh? Certainly one of the players from what I've seen, if you put him in the conversation for best tournament player in the world, I think he should be in there. Yeah, I mean, from what I've seen, that seems pretty reasonable to me. The math agrees. <coughs> And what did the math do today? A little sauna, a little schwitz, workout, run, what? Yeah, w worked out. Um, sauna, yes. Check, checked the, uh, the Bitcoin market, made some trades. Solve for bait for Davies. Is this enough? We don't have to go just yet, but it's getting awful close. Yeah, he's got about six, almost a little under seven blinds. But shows you the power of waiting. Davies decides. Oh, and that waiting is better there. Kulev going to put Hecklin in. And Hecklin really short. Nothing good. I mean, one of the things to remember is that when you're down here with seven blinds on a bubble, hey, Ale, will you send the waitress over here? I mean, Thank you. really most of the value of your stack at this point is caching. You are so kind of far below many of the people in the tournament that, um, and you know, the, the payouts are so flat after you do cash that it would take quite the spin to start, you know, getting into the top two tables, final table where you really start making a lot more than a min cash. So that's why you, you know, different people have slightly different theories and you see people play a little bit differently, but yeah, I mean, Seth has a pretty easy shove for chips with king five of diamonds there, but it doesn't get through that often. You know, it, it'll get called at a pretty decent frequency and uh, it just kind of sucks when you get called. like you probably want to have a bit better hand than king five. That is the math, ladies and gentlemen. Ace king now for Mauricio, under the gun. Uh. You tired, Brian? And We've been here like five minutes, my man. It's it's the it's the thirty seconds waiting for the guys to fold. I mean, it, it's completely understandable. They're well within their rights, but it's exhausting. It doesn't mean it's not a little boring. <laughs> Mauricio has a bunch of scores, only five hundred thousand in lifetime earnings. Played some in Brazil. Spain, looking to add a healthy chunk to that Hendon mob. And 7-6 off. Yeah, his stack is starting to get kind of big enough that he oh. can kind of take this gambly big blind spot. He's got j over 25 blinds, so he does. Because, I mean, versus min raises, it is pretty plus chip EV. Flops bottom pair, Mauricio, top pair, top kicker. Yeah, an opening under the gun here. Mauricio is going to have a, it's under the gun seven. His range, I mean, he has a decent size stack, but two people cover him in position. 
with the chip leader on the cutoff and Kulev on the button. So his range is probably slightly tighter than a normal chip EB range and definitely, but including a lot of the ASEX type of hands you'd normally open for their blocker effects. So this is not a good flop. Look at this though. If you're Oleg. But Oleg is still going for it here. He's gonna check raise. And this is specifically targeting broadways which have missed this board, right? Mm -hmm. the, the combination of hands 10 through king that aren't suited with spades, he wants those hands to fold. So like... So this is mostly to deny equity to those hands. Yes, a and to take it down. Because when he calls, those hands might keep bluffing him, they might improve. Well. And his hand is kind of weak enough that it can't take another barrel. Unfortunately, Mauricio has ace-king yeah. going nowhere. And my guess is Oleg is now done with this pot. I don't expect him to rifle off another bet. We shall see. Not a lot of chips left. SPR close to one for him. Yeah, and he can kind of keep this 840. He's still in great position to cash. He kind of made his play trying to get his opponent to fold a specific but large part of his range. That didn't happen. You know, we have bottom pair, we're done. So this is a one and done. Yeah. From, yeah. And if we're Mauricio. If we're Mauricio, I mean, we cover the guy, we cover Oleg by 500,000. We have top pair, top kicker. I don't think you want to give off a free one kind of feels like you just keep betting and if you're beat I guess you'll lose a, lose a big pot and I looks like Mauricio agrees and this is over yeah but this is posturing here he doesn't want to just let the table know yeah lays it down nice pop from Mauricio chipping up here on the bubble the Colombian Still 42. Hecklin now, our short stack. Really looking to avoid his third bubble in a row. Igor, right behind Patrick Antonius for chip lead. Chris Brewer in third. Roman Hrabek now in fifth. And Salazar in ninth. Again, if you haven't heard, the biggest 100k buy-in ever in poker history. Hundred thousand dollars to enter into this tournament. Two hundred and sixteen entries. Green tea, please. Green tea. Green tea. Yes, hot, hot green tea. And obviously, yes. I know these guys are animals. They're savages. Please, please. But it, it's got to be a little tea. bit of a different feeling when you buy yeah. in for six figures, right? Can I get hot water with lemon? Hot water with lemon. Yeah, I mean, the buy-ins go up. It feels a little bit different, but also just the fact that, I mean, this 100K got 216 people. So it's bigger than your average 100K. I mean, this is like the kind of field size you normally see for like 25Ks. Yeah, it used to be 25Ks, like 200 is, people. Yeah, this is like a solid 25K field. No. But it's 100K. Yeah. You know, oh, 200 people in a 25K, uh, that's pretty good. Igor now. Hasn't been leaning on these guys with that chip stack, but might want to start. And Kulev has ace-king. Well, we're going to hear from him, that's for sure. This is... So his three-betting range in this spot starts to turn polar, and it's going to be, like, a bit tighter for value. Like, Isn't this the bottom of it, in a way? Like is, is kind of yeah yeah it'll be like maybe queens plus but ace, even ace, ace king ace queen might just and call then, and then the rest of his range will will tend to be uh like suited aces and kings now this is interesting he's decided just to flat behind rather than three bet ace king and i wonder if some of that is perhaps thinking of Maybe trapping Hecklin or Ustinovich 
who are behind him, smaller pot versus the chip leader. We know he has ace-king, but his range is mostly going to be flatting there or folding versus three-betting. So I think that's an example of him knowing that and, and yeah. deciding to put this, this hand in the flatting range instead of three-betting it. Gets Mauricio to come with the dominated ace going three ways here. Wow. And look at this. Igor flops a straight. <laughs> Kulev, who just gave Igor a lot of chips with just the naked ace of spades, now has the naked ace of diamonds and a gut well, shot. Actually, that's why Igor flopped uh, a strong hand that wasn't a flush on a three flush board. And Kulev had the naked ace plus a gutter and fired off. So like this is very similar type spot. Deja vu. But this time Igor's betting. Yeah, Igor now with the betting lead, with the bigger stack. Had Kulev three bet, he would have just won this pot. Yes, this hand would be over, yes. almost certainly. Yeah, I, I, w I don't see Igor doing something about it with Jack 8 off. But, uh, but now we're going to the turn in a completely different pot because it was flatted. And a diamond, so now Kulev has that 100% on the math bar. And how many more chips will Igor put in here? He does have a straight, but he's losing to any diamond. I mean, this has got to be like the worst card in the deck for him. Yes. Yeah, a diamond coming is, is worse. I think he'd prefer the board to pair, certainly. 170. Kulev, though, this is where he gets paid in these unusual spots, Brian. It's the crazy image. But what bluffs does he have? Yeah, I mean, I would guess it would be a hand like 10 jack suited. What about ace 10, maybe, without a diamond? Does that start bluffing now? Ace 9, with that, are those possible candidates? It's, it's tough yes. to. Yes, some of those ty these type hands. I feel like Jack Ten is even more likely because cool. you're blocking hands with Jacks in them, and you have more outs to improve when you're behind. Igor's gonna look but him up. Kulev looking to take a lot of those chips that he just gave to Igor back, and another cool. diamond. And this is an awful card for Igor, who now chops with every non-diamond hand. Yeah, and it's pretty unlikely that Kulev has a diamond lower than a five. You know, he might flat deuces, threes, or fours behind in position. He might not. I mean, they are quite deep, so he, he could definitely afford to play them for the, the value of the chips, but not, not all players would. But those would be really the only hands that could be counterfeited. How much does Kulev want here? He might want a lot. Because it's a spot where if Igor had like the king or the jack or the eight of diamonds, he's pretty likely to call. He's winning in spots where... Ooh, and that's going to be a tough bet for Igor. He didn't go super big. So interesting. Earlier, with just the naked ace, we saw him over bet. Yeah. Here he bets the two-thirds. And Igor's sick. Great fold. Just quickly lays it down. I mean, I think tough to put him on bluffs there. And Kulev. And I mean, he is only chopping versus bluffs, too. Yeah, so you're never getting more than half the pop yeah, back. Yeah, so he's, he calls 575 to win like 420 or whatever it was. <laughs> now at our other table, Justin Saliba has two pair. And Ding exerting some bubble pressure with the 7 4 off. Raised the button. Saliba called. Then checked the flop and check called. And Ding is loading up a second barrel here. Yeah, and. I'm curious to see what Saliba does here. 
He, ha he does have a decision between flat and just jam. Yeah, do you want to get it over with now? A lot of bad rivers. Well, this has a lot to do with if my opponent is bluffing, will he bluff again on the river? Right? The more the answer is yes, the more calling is better. Um, I think his hand is good enough to jam. He can get called by worse, but it's kind of one of the weakest hands that you would do it with. Justin Sleba. And it also depends is how often is my opponent betting with equi equity. We can see there's no flush draws. But against a hand like an open-ended straight draw, jam would be a lot better for the equity denial than it would be against just like king nine. Yeah, which literally can't win. This is just pure bubble pressure, right? I don't think Ding is raising this and playing this normally. Saliba is just going to call. So what he... The really bad cards for him are the three and the eight. They would be lights out since he's probably calling most rivers. Now that's a great card for him. Yeah, the two pair still going to be good a lot. But Ding doesn't know he has two pair. No, Ding has seven high and can't win if he checks this back. So we, we got here with two barrels, and do we fire the third? He did give up in the other pot versus Mario, but that was like that a was little different. bit different. It I was think a this is a spot bit. he's more likely to fire the third shell. Yeah. There it is, Brian. But Saliba, I don't think he can possibly, I don't think he can fold this. Three off the money here. We can see it, but if he calls and he's wrong, he's out with nothing. I mean, you're not really beating much value, but you could talk your opponent into having, like, ace-king or ace-ten, potentially. And so you are beating a small amount of value, plus our opponent's range is extra wide. All bluffs. Yeah. Yeah, and there it goes. Yeah. Saliba going to get a huge double here. Trap Sting Biao. And just like that, Saliba vaults into the top 10. Well, somebody just told him nice call. But if we're really going to parse that down, to me, the nice call was really the turn call. Yes. Right. The river call to me is like pretty standard. I mean, it sucks when you're out of the it, tournament, but it is what it is. But the, it's the turn call that earned him the extra 600000 If he shoves the hands over. It's over. Gets the full double there. And Hecklin sitting on crumbs. You can see the look in his face. He's bubbled the $150,000 buy-in. He's bubbled the $50,000 buy-in in disgusting fashion. Does not want to bubble this one. But the clock is really ticking. Less than five big blinds for Henrik. Getting really tense in here, Brian. And we're still at 42. Nobody has busted since Danny Tang busted. So nobody wants to bust now. And it looks like Davies, it looks like Davies doubled. Does. Let's see if we can He's find that hand. Yeah. So Davies doubled, which is terrible news for Hecklin and these other short stacks like Shingus and now David Coleman, Paulius, Ren Lin is also in the danger zone. Isaac Haxton only ten bigs. Let's see if we can find this hand for Seth. He had Ace Queen suited. It looks like versus Kulov's King Ten. Did get the double. And look at this. Shingus waits long enough and. Yeah. He's. He's, He's about to be rewarded unless he gets really unlucky. Yeah, there's nothing to do here except put it in. And I mean, just in time. Yeah, because the blinds just went up 50K. Blind. He's got 50 <laughs> in the blind. It's like half his stack. He's all in. Has Igor dominated. Really just needs to fade a seven. This would be really dirty. Yeah, I mean, so far, a couple short stacks have doubled as small favorites in pseudo flip situations, but this is massive favorite situation.
So far, so good. Igor can hit some type of running straight. Shingus has the spades covered. Just needs to dodge a seven. <laughs> Big double up here on the bubble. You know you've got a lot of chips when you double up one of your opponents and you can give them a pound. Still 42. Были десять были бы закрывал бы разные. На что это дело? По любому закрывал. Почему? Потому что только что он закрыл свой десять. Он точно знает. Chingis now with ace king of diamonds after doubling with tens. Yeah, great spot. I mean, yeah, we're short and we're on the bubble. We just got a double, but hold on, got to pick up these chips right here. 125k in the pot. An eagle with ace three of hearts. Obviously a snap call without these bubble implications, but... Yeah. But how is this hand performing against a range which should be quite a bit tighter? Does he want to look him up? How much? The shove is for almost exactly 10 big blinds. Is he shoving the king tens here, the queen jacks? I mean, surely he'll have some of those hands. You will see in this three. <laughs> Sat a buy of three caches here already in this series, looking for another. Wow, he lets it go. По номиналу, короче, первая самая старшая и вторая. Сестры в мастер уикенд. А? Сестры в мастер уикенд. Да, нет, ты что, ты там, блин. I mean, I can't understand Russian, but I'm pretty sure that he just told Igor what he had. And Igor made that look like, oh, wow, I was smashed. Шинг is from Kazakhstan. Нет, на маске. Бубновый, блин. А? And I think just a cool example of with poker tournaments, the game within the game, right, Brian? Yeah. The game within the game. And if you want to learn the game within the game, check out GTO Wizard. Now is a great time. Daily Dose of GTO, the free interactive ebook, is full of quizzes and short lessons to help you master GTO concepts in just five minutes per day. Check out, check out dailydoseofgto.com. Imagine having the insights you need to make optimal decisions in high pressure situations. GTO Wizard AI allows you to study these niche spots and review your play using the exact bet sizes. GTO Wizard, start learning poker for free. And not all of us have a solver built into our mind like Brian does, so this is your best bet for your the mere mortals out there, right? Hecklin, under the gun. Has to eat the blinds, but has nothing. Mm. 
ladies for Mauricio. Yeah, he's woken up with a bit more than his fair share of premiums here on the bubble. Igor still very healthy. Is he thinking about the three bet? He is, but he decides not to. Kulev with a very pretty 5-4 suited in the big. Obviously going nowhere. Ooh. And look at this. Two pair for Kulev. Mauricio has the second nut flush draw. Very action flop. And look at that equity there. It's about 50-50 here on the flop, pretty close. Kulev does cover Mauricio. Does he want to start exerting some pressure? Feels like his hand is a little weak. That said, the bet size is very small here on the flop. It's it's like 20%. So versus a, this small a bet size, he, he decides to exert some pressure. Yeah, and I would imagine hands like 7-6, seven, even 7-8 seven, maybe with a lone club. There's a lot of semi-bluffs that would do this, right? Yes. And, and this is sort of a function of the bet size that Salazar chose. Had Salazar bet a bit bigger, I'm pretty sure Kulev just flats this hand. Salazar obviously going nowhere. Pot getting big, half a million in there already. Ooh. Terrible turn for Kulev. Yeah, he's now losing to any ace or any of the pocket pairs bigger than a five, which is a pretty significant portion of Salazar's range here. That bet, bet flop and call to check raise. Yeah, he just went from pure value to bluff catcher, right? Yeah, 100%. I, Salazar probably checks this hand back I mean, it's one of these hands that uh, you kind of either way ahead or way behind, for, especially given our opponent check raise that's on the flop. With the club as well, I mean, there's a lot of hands that are drawing almost dead. Does check it back. And a lot of those hands are folding. Alex Kulev, the Bulgarian, never know what he's going to do. Does just check, though, and now... If we're Mauricio, what hands are we targeting if we're value betting, or are we just happy to check down? Something that rivered a 10, a 5, a 4. But that's about it, right? Yeah. But, I mean... We can have bluffs, king, queen with a club, yeah, these type of hands, right? We can right? have bluffs, and that's like a decent portion of hands. Don't blame but Mauricio. It's always scarier when you have to bet there near the money bubble with Kulev, your opponent. But he'll take down the pot. Yeah, that was that was a pretty respectful check. I Very feel like. respectful. I don't I don't <laughs> yeah. know if, I don't know if all players <laughs> other than Kulev would have got that same check there, Ryan. Yeah. I mean that's. When players, when you're kind of unpredictable and aggressive and players don't always know what you're going to do and you choose large bet sizings, you get, you get that in some spots. Some players, you know, here we are, pretty close to the bubble. Mauricio has a decent amount of chips, but not a ton. Comes with a pretty respectful river check. Maybe one that he doesn't do to every other player here, but does with Kulev. Patrick Antoni is now running away with the chip lead. Five million. It's 
Igor is in second with three million. Andrew Pantling, very good player in his own right. Third, Chris Brewer, and then Kulev is in fifth. Saliba up to sixth after that very nice hand against Ding. JNT, Roman Hrabek, Mazbek, Santos still hanging around. Kulev's countryman, Faradin Mustafov. Leon Sturm, I mean, all these fields are obviously stacked, but 100K main, even more so. Oleg's chipped down a little bit. Decides to pass now. Again, an open for chips there under the gun seven, but one of the weaker hands you open, and uh, you can see his range tightening in real time. Salazar's gonna come in here with the queen 10 off. Riding the rush. I would imagine Shingis doesn't have real a decision here, does he? No. I mean, but again, remember, he can take 30 seconds by waiting. And now Hecklin, 50 in the middle already. 50 in the blind and only about 115 behind. This is gross. He's dominated too. I wonder, I mean, if he folds this here though, he gets around to find a different spot. If he plays it, I mean, queen six is definitely behind this low jack opening range. He's gonna call, leaving himself with literal dust. Essentially one big blind behind. Oh, there's a six. Life for Hecklin. Mauricio has a gutter. This is going all in for sure. And Henrik Hecklin, who bubbled the 50K, bubbled the 150K right before this, trying to avoid bubbling for a third straight time, is a favorite here. About as much as you can ask for. Can he hold? $151,000 bubble. Seven gives Salazar some chop outs. Can chop with an eight. Hecklin stays alive. Yeah, it also turned a queen into a winner, I guess, as well. But just the lowly three on the river and Hecklin doubles. Much to the chag chagrin of most everyone else in the tournament. I mean, you're playing a 50K. You're on the direct money bubble. You're the second in chips. You get it all in with the chip leader who has ace-king. You have kings, and the flop just comes ace-ace-ten. Yeah. Then the next tournament you play, it's 150k buy-in. You finish one off the money. Oh, he did? Yeah. Wow, that's sick. Avoids bubbling here. Still could, obviously. Still at 42. No one wants to bust here. So if he if he bubbles here, it would be the third in a row? Yeah. Wow. 300k worth of buy-ins. Let's, let's go. I mean, let's go heckling. Yeah, tough not to root for him. Yeah, pretty tough not to root for him. Also just a hilarious guy in general. They'll run three like bubbles in a row, that's pretty brutal. Depends on how many and like the three Maybe biggest like no limit tournaments. We don't even know how many bullets he's in for either. It could be more than one. Yeah. Davies now with ace-8 of hearts. Again, we talk about the game within the game. Early on without ICM. Wow, but here's the thing. He has ten blinds now. There's like seven stacks shorter than him. I bet he ends up passing this. Because even though he has 10 bigs, he can still potentially fold to the money. Yeah. So I think uh, he's waiting for something better. He's got to buy it, though. Waiting for them to go out or something better. Ooh, nines, though. This has got to be enough. I think so. I mean, and only four people to get through. And out of those four people, he, I mean, he covers. He covers Hecklin. The small blind. Oh, wow, he passes the nine. Can't blame him, though. I mean, doesn't want to yeah. bubble the 151,000. 
just doubled up too. And he also, even though he only has 12 big blinds, can technically fold at this yes. point to the money. Yes. 115. Play 115. And part of this is Paulius. Plus Leonidas has four big blinds. David Coleman has five big blinds. Ren Lin has seven big blinds. So there's a lot of people with less chips than Shingus. And Oleg with the decision here. Obviously would always call under normal circumstances, but or even shove sometimes. Looks like he's very low on time banks. Just lays it down. You can use this when no action. Yeah, it's probably. The su suited Doyle Brunson takes it down for Igor. That was some, that was some very tight pre-flop action. I mean, ace-eight ace suited, eight suited eight in the muck. Then nines, and then king-10 off, folding the big blind to the single raise from the, from the chip leader, oh, the table chip leader in the cutoff. And this is just an example of how many different stages there are and how different you play, right? You sit down a cash game, the blinds stay the same. Tournaments, yeah, so many different phases. The money bubble one, one of the most stressful for sure. <laughs> I don't know. And this one is slogging on. Lots of players in the 10 big blind range. Ike Haxton, Lewis Spencer. Limitless has 12 bigs. Kulev may want to lean on these guys too. Although it's, yeah, with Hecklin, you know Hecklin's not afraid. Oh. And he's definitely oh. not afraid now. <laughs> and this is kind of fitting after the bubbles we've talked about. Time for some positive variants. Although if he bubbles with aces here, Brian, he may never play poker again. I mean, he only has like seven and a half blinds. Yeah, I think you don't really have a raising range at this point other than just jamming. So I think maybe that's what he was thinking about. Decided he's just jamming whatever he's playing. And Oleg has queen jack of spades. Does I mean, cover too. This, this is a fold for sure. I mean, he just folded king 10 off to a min raise against the chip leader, so. Mauricio with Jack-10 off. Does have the 50 in there and 50 dead. Am I? Does he feel priced in here, Brian? No, I doubt it. I mean, here's the thing is Hecklin... Hecklin's not like super wide. I mean, <laughs> he has aces. <laughs> oh, he has number yeah. one. And Hecklin survives the bubble, but definitely wanted some action there. I just don't think Jack 10 off is doing well at all against Hecklin's raising range there. You can take out a few of Hecklin's weaker hands for sure for like an eight, eight big blind button shove. I mean, I think your best bet calling with Jack Ten off is just you're up they against show like, you like you are eliminated Ace Eight suited maybe or something, oh, and I'm you're here, right? yeah. like forty percent. <laughs> Tell them it's not a good sign. Yeah. Shingis just told Hecklin that he's been eliminated according to the app. <laughs> not a good sign. I guess they're so used to him bubbling, they just. <laughs> Another bubble. And he doesn't get the restaurant for that. Right? <laughs> and it's one of the few times, right, you're an individual, you're playing for yourself, but oh, the bubble's yeah. one of the few times you actually have some camaraderie where you're all kind of rooting for the same thing. Yeah, he yeah. doubled and then lost, it looks like. Unless the app is wrong. Basically everybody but the it's big chip stacks. Important. Yes. The big chip yeah. stacks want this to go on forever. <laughs> yeah. The rest <laughs> of these guys want, want it to be over. Wow, and ding, 
His situation has changed. He was he was healthy, healthy but doubled up Saliba. Constantine, one of our short stacks. S Saliba, is this just good enough to put Ike in? Yeah, it yeah. is. Just at any two card well, spot. Was. And Ike is going to oh. call. He's got a hand here. <laughs> wow, it must good. be pretty good. Yeah, like wow, decent yeah. pair. Queens yeah. versus ten three offsuit. Yeah. Isaac Haxton in a great spot to get healthy on the bubble. Each time he says, "How many is this?" Twelve. Okay. Let me let me guess. Okay. I'll tell you. So you you guess and I tell. Here's a 10, though. One card to fade for Ike. There it is, Brian. Isaac Haxton. The Queens go down to 10-3 offsuit preflop. He's out of here in 42nd place. That was really dirty. Yeah, there it is. No. It's the Another danger point. of putting the, the money in. You know, but then again, like, whatever, 80% of the time or whatever it was preflop, he just goes yeah, to well over a million in chips. He said much more. I was way off. <laughs> really? Yeah. yeah. Rough beat for Ike. Yeah, that was really dirty. Two off the money now. <laughs> we'll probably go hand for hand now, right? Yeah, someone hand at the table asked you if they're going to go hand for hand. It does seem like a good spot to go hand for hand. Guess you gotta let this one go. Yep. Two of the bigger stacks going to the flop. Sounds <laughs> are not afraid to get in the mix with these guys. <laughs> Ace head off just doesn't perform well in those spots in the big blind versus like Ray's flat behind with two pretty strong ranges. And look at this flop. Top pair, top kicker for Kulev. Gut shot and a flush draw for Mauricio. Feels like at this table we've just been getting some of these heads up spots like flops that are really outperforming in terms of just hitting both players. Yeah, this is a serious action flop. Set, not flush draw, straight, not flush draw. Mm -hmm. Top pair, top kicker versus king high flush draw gutter. Cool, a very tricky player. Check the ace queen. What does he do now facing this bet? I think they're deep enough. He, I'm not sure. Looks like Probably he's just going to call. call. Yeah. Yeah. I was thinking he was going to call, but I'm. I mean, they're kind of deep enough that check raise gets a bit uncomfortable with the range you're getting it in against. Do we have a queen ourselves? Six on the turn, pretty much a brick. Great card for Kulev. Yeah, it doesn't hit too many hands that Mario, you'd think he'd be flatting with. Like, does he flat 10-8 suited off of 30-odd 30, 30 blinds? Maybe not. Probably right? not covered on the bubble here. Yeah, right? So This is a brick, and Mario, sorry, Mauricio, Kulev just checked the flop, so he can't think he's this strong. Does check behind wisely, though. And the river's another brick. For the time being, it looks like Salazar has avoided disaster. So Kulu has to decide what type of hands Mauricio. I mean, clearly his range is going to be somewhat capped after bet flop check back turn. And definitely his hand's good enough to get value. Does he want to bluff catch with it? Would his opponent even bluff? 575,000. Kulev loves these big sizings, Brian. Bets the pot, and I mean, 
Mauricio's going to be frustrated, but he really avoided disaster there. Also got unlucky not to hit something. Yeah, I mean, Kulev beating some hands that definitely play that way, such as 9-10 suited, you know, queen-jack, queen-10, king-queen suited. Look at this. Saliba just doubled with 6-5 off not long ago. Now has 5-4 and turns a boat against Mario, who has top pair, top kicker. Wow. Disastrous spot for Mario, who raised. Saliba called on the button. And he can't put Saliba on too much 5x, right? And Saliba probably doesn't have a straight. What he is losing to, though, are hands like 8s, 9s, and 10s, maybe even jacks. Like, yeah, but probably like none of those hands 3-bet. Jacks might 3-bet. No, probably not. The overpairs, certainly queens plus, I think, would always 3-bet. I actually think queens is close. Probably mix. I'm, I'm, I'm being serious. Yeah, but... No, I yeah, mean, but. Yeah, no, yeah, but. Jax is like 100% flatting here. Well, look up your ICM. But the question look is, up your okay, ICM okay. three betting ranges in these spots. So Jax is flatting, but is Jax is, betting 400 in, and then shoving the this river? This is why I'm in the booth. Fair enough. And I'm not waffling on this one because there are ones that I'm like, I'm not sure. But this is like tens and Jax are not three betting. All right. But, you know, and I, I, Queens, I think, can go both ways. But, but I mean, he's, he is losing to quite a few hands. That said, he's got. He's definitely not folding seven. here. Yeah. This is so. disastrous for Mario. Calls the turn. Rivers wow. is six. And this is an interesting card, actually, because, okay. Diamonds miss, so we have some natural bluffs. After Mario checks, Ooh. you gotta think that like nines and tens might check this back, right? Yeah. I mean, this is a pretty scary card if you're Saliba and you have nines, tens, jacks. Yeah, now all those hands do not bet. Yeah, so now it's like eights, okay, sixes, but we have another six out there. You know, if you already had a boat, five X. So, I, I think Mario is going to think about this one for a bit. And interesting, Saliba doesn't put him in. So Mario will still be in the tournament if he calls and loses here. I think for a bet this big in this spot, I kind of think Saliba's weakest hand is like an 8, something with an 8 in it. So maybe, maybe like ace-5 suited. Something like that. So either eights or ace five suited, really. And then obviously boats and, and stuff that are better, but there's a Bad big class of hands. Good. Jack ten of diamonds. Awesome. Ace X of diamonds, King X of diamonds. So this is pretty gross for Mario. Yeah. Fours and seven. Both of these players, very good soccer players in their previous lives. Saliba was a goaltender. And maybe he's not counting eights either because maybe eights checks back turn. I do think if eights got here, eights could value bet though. You know, maybe you discount aye, aye. ace five suited because ace five suited three bets some preflop. Saliba's in position with the bigger stack, and that's a hand that really likes three betting. Like when I'm talking about the ICM ranges, that hand three bets, like, you know, a lot. So. And when there's not a lot of hands, we can put them on. Yeah, he might not be thinking it's maybe Saliba doesn't have 5-6 or 5-4 suited. We can see that Saliba does, and if he has 5-4, he'd have 5-6 as well. There aren't that many combos of those, only one each. Only 5-4 of spades and 5-6 of clubs. Five, 
Only three combos of fours does and sevens. Does make the fold. Gets away. Six, Not as easy as that looks, right? No. Six, five. Have patience, guys. It's on TV. Have some patience. We'll see. <laughs> Apologies, uh, both these guys football players, Brian, and apparently goaltender is in position, it's goalkeeper, so my mistake there. Mario avoids disaster as Kulev and Igor go back to war. And Igor turns top pair, top kicker, checks it over to Kulev. Mm -hmm. Igor raised out of the small blind. Kulev defended. Igor bet the flop. Kulev called. Now Igor checks the turn. Trying to trap Alex yet again. Right. 420,000? Kulev. Going to blast here, oh, Brian. Geez. And we can see that this one is not going to work out for him. This was, it looks like Igor raised small blind to big blind. Check called the flop on jack eight seven. And now Kulev is betting again. He's probably thinking that he has more clean X than Igor. And so gets to bluff this card quite a lot, even with low equity hands such as this. King six, obviously very low to no equity when called. But given that, the queen, like the perfect card for Igor, because it does give him quite a big hand. Very comfortable call on the turn. And I'm just kind of wondering... Oh, look at this river. What cards Kulev is going to bluff? It's an ace of diamonds giving Igor top two. And he checks again. And Brian, if you give Kulev rope. I mean, I feel like if he had the king of diamonds here and not the king of hearts, like he'd definitely take this spot. But like maybe not here with the king of hearts. Decision time for Kulev. Uh, Brian, I've seen him in these spots a lot. I don't think I've seen him check back yet. I mean, I think an ace is better for him. Now, some of his bluff continues will be hands like King X and Ace X on the turn that now just got there, but does like one pair ace hand value bet the river here? Does knuckle back wisely. Avoids disaster. Yeah, that one was probably not going to work. Igor chasing Antonius now, second in chips. Still two players off the money. That's the first time I've seen Kulev give up this trip. First time? Yeah, he's just, and it's not only that, every time he bets massive. Bubble time, Rasty. Here we are. Still got two left. Ike went out. Oh, and best Santosh of it. now, our short stack, just lost a massive flip to guess who? Elton Sang. Oh, wow. Jack's first ace queen, all in pre. Elton's heater continues after winning the 150K. He's now eighth in chips, and Santosh, according to this, has one big blind. And now these guys can taste it. And 
Paulius Plazonitis has two big blinds, and Coleman has two big blinds. So I think we're going to see stacks like this. Shingus right here be very tight. Yeah, if these guys were incentivized to be tight before, I mean, yeah. this is like... Igor with ace-queen on the button. Massive okay. hand, all things considered here. He is going to be opening this spot super wide. It doesn't matter. I would think with these short stacks, close to 100%. Yeah. I, I just I just saw a card when he folded, and I just ghost the information. Is there anything else to do? Because Hecklin's in the yeah, big yeah. blind there with... Well, Hecklin ten now eggs. has 10 big blinds, which yeah. seems like heaps compared to these yeah. guys. Check out our outer table. Santosh is all in. Looks like Robic has looked him up. There's Elton in the gray hoodie doing the Vogelsang impression. <laughs> Elton is all in here. See the rail gathering. Sorry, Santosh. I believe the action's on Frabek. Yes, Pantling has three bet here. Frabek raised to 100. Santosh is just all in by default, and he's going to get out of there. Santosh getting all in here. Looks like he's got four, four, seven, seven. offsuit. He's live though. Oh, he's got a straight draw. Nope. That's gonna do it. And now we're on the direct bubble. Santosh showered in 41st. 40 players remain. Now the shortest stack is out, but we have two stacks which have 95K right now, just a hair under two bigs. So this bubble will likely break within one orbit because within one orbit, both of these guys will be all in. So it... Paulius with one big, David Coleman with two. Bunch of guys with six, seven. Any, yeah, any hand here. Here's Coleman, he's already all in. Coleman is all in, yeah. This could be it. Looks like Theologus has looked him up. And they just wait to show their hands. So in case any information gets to players at the other tables that are playing, they can't know what the situation is for the all-in player because that <laughs> could affect their decision making and would be unfair to Coleman, certainly, who's all-in on the bubble. So that's why you're seeing them with their hands not tabled still held secretly because they're just waiting for all the action to finish on the other tables in the tournament. That's the math. Coleman got second <laughs> place in the 50K Turbo Bounty. Very healthy score for him. Very good American player. Looking to avoid bubbling this 100K buy-in. The biggest 100K tournament ever. All in here. Six deuce. <laughs> Six, Six deuce of for David. Deuce of clubs. Alex shows ace ten. Ace of spade, ten of clubs. Six deuce. Six Dewey, never Louis. <laughs> Can I see a flop? <laughs> that man is gambling. The flop is ace five three. He was oh, in the big blind. He was, he was forced to be all in. 
Needs a four. He's going to be our bubble boy. Third card, please. Oh, I was mistaking that thing in front of him as there is a three being the spades. button. But yes, the, you can see the buttons uh, there in the eight seat. And the river. Four and only a four. This bubble's going to burst. There it is. The river is the seven of spades. We lose David in 40th place. Players, we're just going to catch up a hand. And then we're going to break And the table. bubble's over. Just like that. We are in the money. All these players will make 151,000. And one of them will make 4.3 million. Six of them, seven figure payouts. David Coleman is our bubble boy. Like Santos busted like five minutes ago. So there was 40 left, now there's 39. Oh. They're not, it's not updating or something. Everybody can breathe a sigh of relief, Rasty. There it is. And for Paulius, makes the money with one big blind. That's a good feeling. We're in. And now, stacks are going to fly. Because we've got, I, like, seven, ten big blind or less stacks in the tournament. And even more stacks that are, you know, like sub-15 blinds. Here we can see four of them at this table. So Hecklin, Davies, Oleg, and Satubayev, all with sub-15 big blind stacks. So action's going to be fast and furious now that the bubble's done. Yeah, you see Igor, our chip leader there. He's second. Patrick Antonius first with 5.2 million. Justin Saliba in third. Andrew Pantling, Chris Brewer in fifth, Roman Robick in sixth, JNT, Elton Sang, Alex Kulev, and Alex Theolo just round out the top ten. I hope it's not me. And remember, yeah. guys, that right now we have a whole table of players that need to go out. It's 39 to 32 with no pay jump. All eight yeah. of the next spots get 151K. <laughs> but then if you even want to kind of look up farther, like when did the like what, does what it really spot? start moving? I mean, 18th place gets 234,000, so you need over half the players to go out at this point just to move up less than a buy-in. And yes, 151, 234, that's 83K. It's a lot of real-world money, but in the context of this tournament, it's not that much. Remember, this is a $100,000 buy-in, ladies and gentlemen. We've got 4.3 million up top, so what does that mean? That means that right now, all that pressure to stay alive, you can throw that out the window. There's a little bit, but not much. For the most part, it's just time to win some chips. Try to make a play for the final table. We've seen these guys play a fair amount of pots together. What a relief for Henrik Hecklin. Avoids that third bubble in a row. Yeah, I know. Good for him. That would that would have been a tough one. He would not have looked back at Jeju fondly. <laughs> Jeju might have been out of beer by the end of the night. We've seen from Salazar, he's not afraid. Yeah, what's he going to do with queen three here? We can see a little bit of the cone activity with the straight and the flush, but kind of a big difference there between queen three of spades and queen six of spades. And he lets it go. We're also talking about Alex Kuliv in position. Not the most comfortable guy to be floating super light. Yeah, not the kind of guy you want to. And you see that with, with earlier with Kulev, right? Like, he checked back in position. This is not the guy you want to go after. You call right there, then all of a sudden, you know, 500,000 on I the mean, turn. Yeah. Yeah. So, bubble burst there. Anything surprise you about that frame? No, not really. I mean, the cl there was a pretty close spot there with nines. That seemed like a, a pretty pretty tight fold. But, I mean, Satubayev ended up cashing, so it worked out for him. I don't know. D was there anything to you that stood out? I mean, there was a couple pretty big clashes of hands on flops on that one table as well. Yeah, nothing particular. I mean, I think all these guys, obviously, very good players, very experienced and like we said, a game within a game, right? 
we burst the bubble. Everybody's playing tight. Now, these guys aren't really incentivized to try to ladder. They need to get chips. So we're going to see the game shift. I think we're going to see a lot of these short stacks all in coming up. Yeah, certainly. I mean, a number of the short and medium stacks all playing very tight, as you saw. And now that, like, ICM cage is lifted. And because they're short, there's a big blind ante. Um, it's going to be fast and furious. A lot of all-ins. We'll probably get down to 20-odd, you know, 25-odd players pretty quickly. Yeah, it feels good when that cage is lifted, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Especially if you got free. one big blind for Paulius. <laughs> I mean... Yeah. One big in a dream. We saw both, I believe, Santosh and David Coleman. Like, they were all in with 7-4 offsuit and 6-deuce, so they kind of had their fate sealed there. I mean, crazy action. 100K, the biggest buy-in ever. We are now in the money. First place, 4.3 million. And, I mean, obviously all these guys are playing for the win, but it does feel like we're seeing some contenders emerge. We also didn't see Patrick Antonius there at all. He was on our outer tables. He's our chip leader. I mean, if you want to just take a look at these tables here, a lot of great players left. Seth, Seth Davies snuck into the money. Roman Rabeck, uh, Henrik Hecklin, Justin Saliba, Chris Brewer. Anybody stand out to you there, Rasty? Yeah, I mean, again, Patrick Antonius just doing some work off screen, right? Just vaulted his way up, won a couple million. I mean, I think when I came in, he was like second with three million. Now he's 5.2. I mean, that really stands out to me as, you know, the move. Obviously, Triton favorite JNT is in there, seventh place. And Elton you know. Sang, fresh off that massive win in the 150K. We're going to yeah. take a quick break. Don't go anywhere, guys. More action coming your way right after this. Oh, straight to the action. Look at that. Slow roll by me. Fake out. Ren Lin still in the money. Seven bigs. Yeah, I don't know if you saw this, but uh, Aaron Sang got it all in preflop with Antonius for 2.5 million chip pot. Aaron Sang had ace king and Antonius had ace queen suited and the flop came queen queen eight. So that's there where you go. That's where Antonius got most yeah. of his chips. <laughs> that's how he got it started. Yeah. Somebody looking for double up. Shafan, now you can gamble now. Sure. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now no bubble. Gamble time. Well, now we fold the final table, no? No, gamble. gamble. No, okay. You, 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 you let me know. See, Ren agrees. It's not time to fold to the final table yet. Uh, it's gamble time. 235, yeah. Well, it's about to be gamble time because I think Mauricio is going to put them all in. Yeah, we got an ace. Ace anything way more than good enough for six ah. big blinds. Thank you. Hi, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> I, uh, you got better kicker, right? Of course, yes. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry. That was as bad as I could have been. You can kind of feel the relief, right, from these players. <laughs> yeah. No, Some I need really, to find table now. I mean, the, just from the tone of the jokes. Yes. Right? Ren Lin, he's just letting ah. back, talking yeah. These guys weren't ripping jokes 10 minutes ago. No, it was silence. Maybe texting the family a little update. Yeah. We're in. I made it, honey. We can pay the mortgage. Going to Twitter. Just cashed. 4.3 up top. Let's go. <laughs> you know the lingo. <laughs> yeah. And Queens now for Satabai. If we remember, folded the nines earlier. Wakes up with the ladies. There we go. He's coming with the men. Igor with ace jack off. What does he want to do here? This is a this is a dicey spot. I mean, we're eight handed, so this is against under the gun. I feel like he's not going to come with flat. It's either kind of three better folds. Does make a really good fold. Yes, I like I like that. I mean, Igor's navigating his way around some tricky streets here. He's done pretty well, you know. Called with the set of fours. He trapped Kulev twice. Kulev didn't yeah, bite the second time. Trapped him the other time. And now Henrik with King Jack at clubs. Nice little lay down with Ace Jack there. Can he get away? The answer is no. He's going to be all in here. An Ace Queen of Diamonds for Oleg. 
all wow. these players with 10 bigs, roughly. I think he's going to stick it in here. I think ace-queen suited. I mean, we saw Hecklin just went with king-jack suited. Ace-queen suited is ahead of Hecklin's range. But like you said, there's no pay jump for a while. Yeah. These guys are all incentivized to gamble, and Oleg's going to do that. Little does he know. And Satsubayev actually has a good enough hand to overcall with. And we're going to see a three-way all in here. Satsubayev in a great spot to knock out two players. But both over cards are out there. Yeah, these guys are very live. The king and the ace. King Jack suited surprisingly live here, actually. How, how does that have 26%? Is oh, no. that king? It's just king high, you, you probably win. Two suits. I mean, we can see queens only has 42% equity. Now, that's pretty good, but you think with him dominating one hand, the other hand having an undercard, it could be better. And look at this, top Whoa. set for Satabayev, <laughs> top pair for Oleg, but a flush draw for Henrik, he's extremely alive. Oleg is pretty much dead, and they have a side pot as well. Henrik only has... And that's oh. it, that's going to do it. Yeah. Shingis Satabayev okay. uh, okay. finds the case queen. <laughs> Double elimination here. Wow, and he comes pretty close to tripling up. And if you remember, Satabayev was very short on the bubble himself. Now he's going to have, what, like 1.8 million? He's gonna be, he just went from pretty short to above average. Not by a lot, but yeah. Actually, with two people going out, it'll probably be pretty close to average because the average will move up. Two more soldiers hit the felt the yeah, game. He's, he's above average by 150K. He's got 1.66 million. It's got to feel pretty good. And with that, we are down to 36. Ren Lin or a short stack now. Again, no pay jumps until we get to 31st place. Ben, meanwhile, had an extra 225K bubble because of the last long off. Yeah. Wow. Constantine, who's been short, has a king in the big blind. There was no way he was going to bubble, like zero. Percent. Yeah, the only hand he played, he jammed and showed kings. <laughs> Nice Actually, little he jammed the Mario. Eight button for like eight lines. Seems kind of insane. It was like uh, it was like five off. I mean, it's like a good play. Yeah. Oh. All right. Good luck. See you, Justin. Good luck. Good luck. Justin Saliba with a mountain of chips. Remember, he made yeah. that call against Ding, trapped him. Yeah, he's got a lot. I mean, third in chips, three, almost four million. It looks yeah, like. Yeah, 78 big blinds. We'll be moving to another table, though. The snowmen for ramen. Ding has ace queen. Confrontation incoming. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be seeing a flip or a pseudo flip. This is a flip, Brian. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's close enough. See Brewer quickly fold the sevens. A bit odd from Constantine. Really no incentive to stall here. It's possible he didn't get the mem <coughs> memo that it's gamble time. Yeah, can you go down there real quick and talk to him, Ras, for the <laughs> sake of our viewers? 
You can stop stalling. Let it go. He's really committed to it, though, from a theatrical perspective. Yeah, he's all in. Like, did you see after the muck, he get a little table tap? Like, it would have been hard to know that he really had 9-3 offsuit total napkins. Fair like, enough. I would have thought, looking at him at the table, like he had a decision, actually. But whatever that's worth. We're going to flip here. Haji have it in front slightly with the eights. And there's another one. Third Ray snowman. Pretty good fall. <laughs> It's a 100%. Yeah, Ding is drawing dead now. He just has zero, right? Yes, sir, yeah. yeah. It's tough to flop someone's zero. <laughs> Good game, sir. <laughs> it took me a second. I was like, trying to figure out there had to be some way. I thought it was, I thought it was, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, was I thought like, it was zero, and then Mario said almost dead, so I started looking for battles. Yeah, I was trying to see, I, tried, I was too. I was like, three, four. I was like, there's not a fifth. <laughs> Ramen, one of the right. yeah, ding is like great guys. Right. Yeah, thanks. All right. <laughs> thanks for the info. Uh, Hajiev, no stranger to big scores, big won an inv invitational here for over four million himself. So he's a big game hunter, Brian. Yeah, he's he's ready here. So lucky that was fifty-five forty-five. Will. It's That's a that flip, though, hard. Brian. Can't fold is eights it? At Let's not get too. The most Someone has ten percent edge. Are we no, calling I think that a flip? it's sevens and then fours. Over pair versus over uh, Seven, pair versus over cards. Always a flip, Brian. Dude, I feel like <laughs> tens. Check tens, out the glossary. Oh, there's like the hand I end up in a full bet pot with and flop a set and stack someone's aces. <laughs> Never do that with sevens. No, because it comes queen jack ten and you get stacked normally. That's my okay. experience of tens and four bet pots. Nah. Masbach going to open the ace jack, and Brewer has ace 10 suited. You got a million to stall? Um, Brewer flat here? Does he come with a three bet? Yeah, he's, he's coming flat. And six is now for Constantine, Ooh. and this will be actual decision. Yes. For the first time, we get to see what Constantine looks like when he's actually thinking about something. And I gotta say, he looks a little different. He does look. <laughs> he does look different. <laughs> but he's going with it. A hundred percent. Maybe that's why he was practicing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and now, what does Mario do? The all-in isn't for much more. I mean, I don't think Mario can fold. He's just got to figure out how he wants to play this versus Brewer. I mean, I guess we probably jam and just pray that Brewer wasn't trapping us. It's really uncomfortable, though. He is going to jam. And then super relieved to see that Brewer snap folds. Constantine in a great spot, though, to triple up. Would you fold if I jam? Mosbach looking for the knockout. Probably not. No. That's a great start. Two sixes left. Or Constantine's going to be out of here. Good game, sir. Oh, well, well, and like you said, Brian, starting to see the blood here. And another run for Mario Mosbach. Yeah, I think so. Where are you trying to say to? I think it's only at 24. So 
So they're now down. And then they're just going to randomly break a table. Yeah, they're breaking I a guess, table yeah, I now, think, I think. I don't know. I think they'll just have to break a table and put them everywhere. I don't think they'll be drawing. They have to break well, a table. It says complete redraw at 24, 16, 9. Yeah, they'll just break in a table then. We flew through the next eight piles. I mean, to be fair, there's I mean, so many sub tens. The... I think it will very quick to 16. What? Yeah, no, I think I don't think we have a that Four, much play left. Of that. Take a quick little pause. You guys should check out Bet ACR. Bet on these players. Elevate your sports engagement experience. Get a sweat. Why not? I'm making a mental note tonight to go to my ACR account and bet. After I do like five hours of this, I've got to bet on. Yeah, the you're last getting day too much info. You got to bet, Brian. You're yeah. picking, you're watching these guys. You got to have and favorites. And so is everyone at home. I mean, you might want to bet on it. I don't know. It's kind of fun. This is not financial advice. <laughs> Lewis Spencer, 13 bigs here. Faradine, another one of these Bulgarian crushers. Mario, Raman. It will make it interesting to be calling the commentary tomorrow, though. Because I guess I'll have, like, you know, small financial interest in who wins. <laughs> go, go, go. Get it. Win. <laughs> Bust. No, we wouldn't do that. Never. Antonius still out in the lead with five million. Andrew Pantling now in second. Oh, Pantling's moved up. He's he's a name. Did he just come out here for this main? I think so. Yeah, I didn't see him earlier. Yeah, because I didn't either. But he's been around the poker world for a while. He has no stranger to big caches. Yeah. No Triton scores though. I think he's been doing some uh, business stuff, Brian. Yeah, I mean, it looks like most of the tournaments he's played have been the Invitationals. Great sweat, guys. Thank you for sweating with us in chat. It's been a fun one. And I mean, we still got a pretty sick sweat ahead of us. Top six get a million. First place, 4.3. Yeah, this is just a great tournament. Really is. Triton Poker Series here in Jeju. The last No Limit Tournament, the main event. We do have a bunch of PLOs, short decks, so we're getting in the mix. But for, for these two card players, Brian. This is it. This is like the last chance. What's your do stop you have, saver? Do you have a favorite tournament that you've won? <laughs> or is, is it the three times you've won the 50K? It's definitely the, definitely the 50K, yeah. Each time was your favorite? No, my favorite was the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Because you were broke or... I mean, I had a lot less money back then, for sure. Felt yeah. good. Felt felt pretty good. Also, it was like, it was the first like major tournament I ever won. Yeah. I had won tournaments before, even embraced, but it was like fifteen hundred. It wasn't even on the main. Like that was in the Thunderdome. Did you beat Helmuth heads on up ES for that one? Yes, Thunderdome. Oh, that on feels ES good. On ESPN, I beat Phil Helmuth. Was he talking smack to you? He has talked smack to me. He didn't do it like when we were heads up, but. But that must have felt real good showering him for that one. Cause he, yeah. he must have really wanted that. He had singled me out prior throughout this tournament. And, and as like, you know, when someone's aggressive at the table and he's trying to like yeah, put yeah, them yeah. in their place. Yeah. yeah. I, I've gotten that treatment from him. You're playing so bad, you you're raising hands. Uh, you think but to me, that's like a uh, signal that you've made it. That Helmuth is talking, talking smack Helmuth to you. Helmuth is talking smack to you and trying to put you in your place, you know? You haven't made it until that happens. <laughs> <laughs> at least on the WSOP. Obviously, we don't really see Helmuth out here, so, and a lot of these guys have made it. And Robek came to our feature table earlier, Brian, with this orange and hat and orange, and, and they moved him immediately, and I think our producer just made a decision. <laughs> we got to get him back. It's time, though. Raman, Robek. I, Welcome, know, I managed sir. to find a way to not have value all the time. <laughs> good to have a time. Pretty good at that. <laughs> Faradine also. Haven't seen him. Part of the Bulgarian delegation. And Faradine and Antonius played an epic hand. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do tell. Uh, Faradine tried to bluff Antonius at one of these Triton final, I believe it was a Triton final table, and Antonius made just like the most insane call ever with a deuce. 
Check it out. I think it's on YouTube. Oh, that this is from a uh, previous Triton stop. Yeah, previous yeah, Triton. Okay. Yeah. I feel like I've seen this hand before. So potentially yeah. a chance for these two to clash again. Antonius can be a scary guy to bluff. He really can, right? He stares yeah, at you. Just, yeah. He just takes his time. He's, he can be sticky, man. Little stalling now as we do find ourselves here, Rasty. No, we're, we're actually all these players now with 31 left will get 168k. So not sure what Spencer is doing. Maybe I'll looking to the off. heavens. It's fine. I already used the time back. <laughs> I'm a little confused here. I mean, maybe we are on a pay jump. Mosbach with ace eight of clubs in the big. Does look like everyone will get 168,000. We saw a lot of Robeck earlier in the series. Yeah. Been a few tournaments, but he's back. He's got his hat. He's got a decent amount of chips. He cashed the first five events, Brian. Really? Yeah, including a fifth place in the 25K Silver Main for 441,000. And then but he took a couple off. He took a couple off and maybe thought the hat was starting to be unlucky, so switched it. And it looks like he didn't play the 150. No, he didn't. So. He's here in the 100, though. So, yeah, he's he's putting a W. He's in the green on this series for sure. Nice math there. Mosbeck going to continue versus this small size. Does have the best hand. Look at that. Backdoor clubs now for Mosbeck. Yeah, great card for Mario. He's going to be able to stick around versus a bet. But is Roman going to double barrel this hand? It doesn't seem to have too many qualities that you would want. I mean, the queen of clubs being the only kind of relevant card. We don't really have any draws. Roman is pretty aggressive, though, Brian. He is. He's thinking about it. And this is not going to work. Mario's just got too much hand here with the nut flush draw. Certainly will want to see a river. Ace high could be good. We're drawing towards not the nuts because the board is paired, but a very strong hand that rates to be good. And we're happy playing for stacks with a 1.5, less than 1.5 SPR. And a super plank on the river. Doesn't seem like the kind of card Roman would bluff. Really, I think if Roman's betting this on the turn, the bad news is that he probably ends up bluffing clubs on the river, which would not work out well had a third club came on the river, but I think probably queen high here. I don't know, Brian. I've seen Roman do some crazy things before. Sure. Probably checks and gives up. He's not maybe a, not. He's not a quitter. May want to put Mosbeck to the test here. I mean, a bluff here would be designed to get, I guess, the king and ace highs to fold, maybe even a six. 
shoves that rack of blues in. 500,000. And let's see what Mario thinks about this. Yeah, Mario's reads have been spot on all series. Can he figure this one out? It's a bit of a tricky situation. If you're Mario, I think you probably don't think you're chopping very much, given that it was a three barrel, right? Like, does my opponent really have a lot of ace highs here? Let's it go. And Probex, raw aggression pays off. Again, not a spot you thought he'd go for it, Brian. I think this has been working for him very well. Obviously, these guys don't think so either. Yeah, nice hand by Roman. Very interesting pot and uh, worked out pretty well. I mean, ace, ace and king high flush draws, and there's two of them on the turn come along, and maybe if you can get those to fold, it's a lot of value in bluffing the river. Pretty sick. Roman, our chip leader over here at this table, sixth overall, his sixth cash of the series. Very profitable trip for him. And all these players still alive for the $4.3 million first prize in this main event here at Jeju. Record-breaking main event. Biggest 100K ever. I mean, it's been crazy to watch. I'm going to have to step out, unfortunately, but we do have to keep a Jaffe in the booth. So Ali Najad's going to come in for me. John Jaffe's going to tag in for Rasty. Rasty will be back later, I believe. But, uh, yeah, it's been an amazing sweat. I'll see you guys tomorrow probably and uh, enjoy the rest of this. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up to $250. Become a part of BetACR.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
just sees the wonder. Jeju Shinwa World. Covering Davies. Goes for call, Seth. Who's behind? Oh. 620 behind. Or less, 595. Wang not going anywhere. The question is do we call or raise Davies? Raise certainly seems understandable. Seth will have some traps, but oh. does go for call. Ponikov's is live. He said call. <laughs> and what a flop for Esty. Bonikovs can kind of sense it. He certainly can. And how does SD want to play it? It's interesting. Could see merit to both. No side pot. Hand is incredible, though. Sixty. That's small here. Understandable, let's get some chips in. And for Seth with the back door, no side pot. SD did come along for six bigs pre. He is ahead of the flush draws that fall to ace high. There aren't a ton of them, he is calling. Now there's a side pot, as we can see, of 120, the 260 Ks, and the stone nuts comes in for Esty outside of the straight flush. GG, Ponikovs. And Esty now, figuring out how he wants to get more chips from Davies. read on the situation has been perfect. Just kept Seth in pre, kept him in on the flop with a small bet, now turns the nuts. And You're right, Will. That's going to be it, though. Uh, diamonds? Yeah, you're dead, man. <laughs> Indeed he is, Seth. They were trying to help me, but I played too bad. Oh, wow. A little salt in the wound. You can feel the sting from Ponikovs here in the main, not your average tournament. You can. He'll be back, but uh, the mic comes off. Joe's off all in. Looks like Sturm has already called. He hasn't. Looks very close. It is quite close, 23 and a half, but he's in. And he'll see the very good news to have Michael dominated. See if he can hold. Michael Jozoff, very good player, looking to stay alive. Normal jam from him. Let's see. King 6-5. Hello and welcome back to continuing coverage of the Triton Super High Roller Series Landing Casino Jeju Shinwa World here in South Korea. Alina Jad alongside Jonathan Jaffe taking you through the next frame here of the 100K main event. Money Bubble did burst during that last frame. 39 players paid. We are currently sitting with 30 remaining 30 and 60K blinds. As I understand it, taking a peek at the Triton Poker Plus app, we see 4.5 million for the Finn. Patrick Antonius up there in the 4 million club. Also, Andrew Pantling and, of course, Justin Saliba. And we've got a couple of new featured tables on our hands. I know you're getting an early glimpse at them, Jonathan. You played this main event. Was there anybody that you rumbled with across these two featured tables? Anything stand out to you in terms of stack dynamics and seat positions? 
Yeah, I'm looking over these tables right now. Um, I played with Ken Tong in the last couple events. He was giving me some trouble. He's uh, feisty, got some moves. In a little trouble with 10 big blinds, it would True. seem. JNT, always a threat. Um, he hasn't had a big run at this one, so this would be an exciting one to make a run. He, yep. he got second to Tim in the uh, London main, right? That's correct, and obviously there was an opportunity there potentially for JNT to actually win that one. Shulman was also making a deep run out there in London, so we do have some spicy characters, and then when we look down toward the bottom of the field, you, we already touched on Tong being down there as a short stack. Seth Davies, shortest of all stacks, the only one sub-10 bigs. Lewis Spencer, there, under the uh, Union Jack, 10 big blinds, 610,000. SD Wang, also kind of in that neighborhood. And, you know, I don't want to harp, but Sean Winter, Jaffe, 13 bigs. True. Not quite Winter-esque territory, but obviously he's just cozy down there and, you know, operating. Could very well slither about, his way to an FT. How about Elton having a chance to top his 4.2 million score with a 4.3? Doesn't it's, want somebody to top him. It's pretty remarkable. I mean, when you're on form, you're on form out there. As we toss it back into the arena, there is your official look brought to you by GG Poker. At those two feature tables, the Greek Alex Theologist, not to be slept on, 3.4 million, 56 big blinds. Pantling, by the way, very unfortunate to find himself at Patrick's table. He would be the mayor at just about any other but at patrick's in particular he finds himself second in chips deputy mayor deputy mary vice chancellor whatever you want to call it it's not the top slot in the hierarchy that much we know up top 4.33 million dollars current payout one jump realized from the min which was 151k wang yang collecting the first of four $168,000 payouts. Three Half remain for 30th, 29th, and 28th. And then we take a hop up to 190K for <sighs> four slots. So then, Wiley Young Chan. Pocket Queens. It's a nice hand to wake up to with 10 and a half bigs. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't realize it got close to 20. So oh, is the under the gun player had 645? So it, I believe that might have been the glimpse. Gotcha. More like 1.1 to start this one for Chan. Pantling, by the way, wants to take a peek. Flatting the upfront open with the ace nine offsuit feelings. This yeah, not a standard see. peel. I think he, uh, you know, really going for the win, trying to play pots in position with that bigger stack. And I'm sure he knows it's pretty loose and. Uh, just looking to see what he can do post flop. Yeah, I was going to say, might that flat be in part responsible here for the Malinowski activation out of the cutoff? Ace five suited. We know the affinity the Silicon Overlords, as Rast likes to put it, have for this particular combination. Yeah, you don't business. see Ace five suited hit the muck without yeah. taking a shot first. It does feel very much like that these days. And on the topic of shots. <sighs> Let's see if an even larger bullet will be fired. Back across toward the Polish salvo. Money? Yep. Very good. Very good. Surely those queens go in, but uh, you can imagine the spot he could find himself with a hand like tens. So this is for an extra 605. The intentions for Malinowski were not to find himself in a situation such as this, and yet here we are. Too much invested to step away? Chips are pretty valuable at this point. I think I think you probably fold. But it's an absolutely brutal spot for Wichter. Mm -hmm. Wow. You should try that. What is that? That's good. good one. He knows it. Good? Very good. Sean Winter's eating something real tasty. Anyway, we can get the camera to flash over to Winter. I want to see what he's eating. Well, I'm sure in due time, but obviously the story for the moment is this confrontation. Was it? Yeah, I did. Between Chan. <laughs> 20 bigs, right? Huh? 20 bigs. I think so, yeah. You had a lot of short stack experience. <laughs> L less. Charney. You were short for a while. And kind of. Uh, not really. Was I? Nothing crazy, but... No, not Boy, so. the discomfort is very palpable. Uh, I'm not a very good short stack. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, these spots are difficult. It's not <laughs> final table, I see him. There he goes, going for it. Yeah, makes the call and does have that one over card along with diamonds working. Just look at how much equity that combination has against these two queens. It is a straight three to two. Yeah, or two yeah, to one, forgive me. At ace four. Math is hard. <laughs> Not good news for you. <laughs> Here we go. Two oh, and a half million oh, chip pot. Oh, and the oh ace, God, ace finds four. the window. I told you this was the lucky seat. So deflating for Chan, Jonathan. You've been on the receiving end of this. Not over yet, of course, but the lack of a club nope. is an issue. And the lack of a queen no as well turns, on the turn. Two outs once. Not where we want to find ourselves. Like queen and then an ace. We fought so hard across two long days. And then it comes down to just one hand where 66% of the time those queens are supposed to haul in this two and a half million. Instead, they find their way out the door as Malinowski ascends. Yeah, that's painful. Looks worthy of a cigarette. 2.5 mil at this point would definitely uh, be a healthy stack. It's a tough one to get over quick. Although, you know, the cigarette wouldn't necessarily be a healthy way to synthesize. You know, I just saw him with the pack, uh, you know, yeah. just you narrating. Know, I do feel compelled, a little public service announcement. <laughs> I don't Fair. know how, how much right legs it's going to have out here at Triton. Were you ever a smoker, Ali? Never yeah. puffed anything in my life. Wow, good yeah. man. I took one puff of one cigarette as a joke one time. That's all it took, huh? Well, that was it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I guess I would have to see a flop anyway. No judgment. This for suit. Can get stressful out there, taking the edge off, certainly, one way or the other. Love Stevie's handlebar mustache. Oh, Very unexpected. How wonderful. Absolutely amazing. I mean, he can't go away from it now. I mean, it's no. just, that's the look that from should here be there. forward. Five years minimum. Earlier during the festival, I suggested that if I ever found myself tied to a railroad track by a bad guy, I could see him coming over, uh, you know, with a freshly crafted old-fashioned as well, and, uh, you know, rescuing me. Yeah, uh, I like the cartoon reference from, like, the least cartoonish personality, but it, it's just a perfect contrast. Oh, it's so great. Also great, ace-queen suited, under the gun, Joey Weissman, the American, taking it upstairs. Yeah, good to see Joey out here. He's a great player. Uh, this is his first Triton, right? Joey's first Triton indeed, and he's nice. just notched his first cash, having gone 0 for 6 to this point. This is the one for the first cash. And note the other ace queen for Ken Tong rips it. Just another 470 to go. Wow. Chidwick awakens to two jacks. So jacks are getting sent in here, but, you know... What's he doing with tens? Nines seem like they're hitting the muck. <coughs> Probably have to go with tens too. So conclusions foregone with this kit in 620? Yeah. Even though it would be just a very modest extra 30K, is there nuance to just flatting Ken versus putting all of it in? Um, Probably is. Uh, Wait, no, because it's just I don't think there's going to be a Weissman covers, there. of course. Yeah. 590? It does go for the call. Uh, it's yeah. my turn. Yep. Oh, sorry. Just ask me. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, earlier at the desk to start the day, Nick Schulman touched upon the fact that Matthias Eibinger is sneaky funny out there with oh, a yeah. tremendously dry wit. Oh, yeah. Matthias gets uh, a laugh out of me almost every time I'm at his table. Love that. Nothing funny about this spot here for Weissman, however, as the flat from Chidwick reads very strong. You know another German sneaky funny? Christoph. Christoph Vogelsang. Christoph gets laughs out of me every trip. Okay. Yep. Now, is it the intentional funny? It's I've intentional. It's intentional, yeah. Patrick Antonius to me is hilarious, but mm -hmm. he's not always trying to be funny. That's He just yes. entertains me. That's he's just true. got something comedic about his affect. Yeah, but and again, the voice, too. Yeah, of course. Oh, and look at this. The ace-queen suited, ushered out of there. So Ken Tong left alone. 
has the covered stack up against two jacks with two of his outs into the bin already in a 1.4 plus pot. I folded a jack though. <laughs> Seven, six, three. Absent are the ace and the queen. They remain that way as the field goal comes in on the turn. Not lost on Tong. And ace and queen free are the river. And that'll do it for Hong Kong's Ken Tong. Eliminated. How many do I owe? One of the top players in the field, getting up to 25 bigs. Yeah, let's not sleep on that. Really? Ken, by the way, this is third yeah. cash yeah, in four right? attempts. He had an eighth in the 15K eight max to start this festival. 50K turbo bounty won by Dan Smith. He notched a 17th place finish here at his second ever Triton Festival. Not to be, however. Coming on strong, though. He final tabled the main in Monte Carlo. Is that right? All the swiss queen? Huh? All the I space don't queen? believe that was right. No. Let me just take a look. Got, like, yes, seven. you're right. He did final table to main. 125K, sixth place, sixth. winning 902,000. Nice, Jaffe. Look at you, the archivist. Tong out there in 28th. The collection for him will number 168K. 27 remaining. Pay jump realized. By the way, as Lewis Spencer quietly departed in 30th, we saw Chan and then Tong. A7-0 plus one. You know how many handed we have? There's 27, so this could be a six-handed table. Actually, it is seven-handed. Seven-handed, okay, so. Big differences? Yeah, yeah, I just saw plus one. I was like, that's not getting opened eight-handed by Patrick, even with this yeah, stack, like but. Uh, Seven-handed, I can see. So this is a low jack open. Pantling, going Limitless duck hunting. Limitless can smell the wine in the air, and he got dealt ace five, and he's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can smell it. Flats the small. He is in front on a paired board. Let's see what Patrick has in mind here. Is this texture that we one, really Ollie. fear? Can you, win some you know, in general, board? if yeah. we're not crazy deep, board pairs are pretty board good for the opener, um, provided he has somewhere he, he, near he as many uh, trips. Yeah, and, bubble, you know, as we see with this ace 7 0 open, Patrick certainly has uh, a fair number of trips. Pamela not going away with the twos. Mm. And now a seven Where was that? on the turn, putting Patrick really? in front. After the check call of 75,000, slides another 150 into the middle. Pretty nice life raft for Patrick with a hand that's gonna have a lot of trouble barreling otherwise. I think his hopes were rather low, find a good blast off without this turn. It's an interesting bet. How much? 300 into 530 for a moment. I thought he said 800, but obviously the chips didn't number enough. Yeah, I wonder what the design was with that bet. You know, it's, it's going to be tough to get value from many hands. Possibly a king-queen continues. Mm. Um, but every hand that beats a7, we have to imagine, is calling. Um, additionally, you might find some check raises from a queen 10, uh, maybe the king queen or king 10 check raises. That, that's going to be some some really tricky spots. When we're barreling in spots such as that one on the turn, are we ever doing so with designs on reducing the probability of the river bet coming forward as opposed to when we check back and now we must face something such as that even on a board where the river's dry absolutely that's why you know maybe had he had the pocket twos i could imagine that bet coming in even though it achieves very little from a bluffing perspective moves a couple of pocket pairs out um i could imagine it's to protect ourselves from having these difficult decisions on the river the a7 not quite as much i think we're just going to have a good bluff catcher on brick rivers um and we're just going to comfortably fold on an eight plus
There it is. Right, right, it's like you have this adrenaline and it goes And then you max late reg something and you do well and you got your adrenaline back. Mm -hmm. Hat trick. Two jacks under the gun. Much improved from our A7-0. No? No. My first when the V-pip goes up and the stack is oh, you large. Won that 1 million, right? Yeah. Obviously, oh, there are and only. different characters <laughs> that emerge in terms of willingness yeah, yeah, yeah. to tussle. <coughs> Pantling <coughs> certainly has appeared to be the man willing. 20 million or 20 people? Yeah, we can imagine. Uh, yeah. We can imagine an 8 million chip pot happened. happening yeah. between Pantling and Patrick. Uh, uh, it you know. feels possible. Uh, You're very right one, about no. that, especially on the inside of the bubble. Yep, one guy's opening ace-7-0 uh, yeah, no, under the gun seven-handed. The other guy's flatting ace-9-0 yeah, no right. low jack. That's Note, by the way, ace-free board texture as Pantling's flat on the button with the 10-7 suited turns into second pair. Malinowski backdoor diamonds and the gut shot. Note the jacks are occupied in Patrick's hand. Yeah, Patrick has a reasonable hand to go ahead and see that, you know, get value from a 10, get some protection, you know, fold pantling off a hand like king eight suited or whatnot, provided it's not diamonds. There's a lot you can accomplish with jacks. If you're looking for something other than a big ace or this better to bet, jacks is looking people. like one of your best candidates. Yeah. Pantling did not flat 10-7 suited to fold when he flopped second pair, but this is a creative raise. Exactly the holding Patrick has, along with folding, you know, limitless off of that king queen that was certainly going to proceed had Andrew called. You know, if if Pantling could see the cards, which maybe he can with this raise, this is exactly what he'd do. This is deeply unanticipated from People the second biggest stack that finds itself oh. here we'll at this table off. against the big stack. And I got a, I got a sense it's very annoying oh. for Patrick as well. Absolutely. Can't blame Patrick for folding that. You're saying, what am I doing with these jacks? Should I call? Yeah. If they happen to be best, what turns am I looking to proceed on? Even a diamond, a queen of diamonds. Right. I kind of want to get out of there. Yeah. So Andrew Pantling giving us a glimpse of the cloth from which he is cut. The Canadian yet to notch a cash up until this event here at his fifth ever try. Now, with that said, limited number of events played. Only one back in London. That was the million pound. Cyprus 2022, Coin Rivet Invitational 200K. He likes the big stuff. London, 250K, Lux on Pay Invitational. Dabbled in the 25K. PLO, mm -hmm. Monte Carlo, just played the Invitational for 200K and now has worked his way here to South Korea to hop into this 100K main and has finally broken the seal. Comes out for the big boys and that 10-7 suited raise, I mean, that was just savage. That was like Dur 2010 type stuff. Yeah. Um, you're just like, oh, you're a pip ahead of me? I'll just take this hand that's a standard call and just raise. Yeah. Some embrace the variance. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Andrew does not seem worried about missing a pay jump. <laughs> well put. And Paulius does not seem worried about his open as he jams King Jack from the button over the top. Five. Yeah, it's scary jamming a hand like King Jack against uh, a dude like Andrew because he's just not worried about ICM. So if he thinks it's, you know, making chips, I feel like he's probably going to call. That said, his cutoff opening range may include 5-3 suited. So at the same time, Fair. jamming King Jack-O, you know, is going to get some folds. Just for chips seems sound, seems reasonable, and it doesn't seem behind. It is 3-2 to two dog to the 8-6 deuce board. Paint free. Pantling holds. My water, right? Oh. Will it be showers for uh, Paulius? So. Yeah. The turn doesn't help. Now he's got six outs once. No, sir. No king, no jack, and no further participation here in the 100K main for Pauly V. That's at five. Five people. Did pick up a title in the 25K silver main earlier here for over a million. 31st in the 15K, eight max. This is his third cash in nine attempts. Payday. 
as mentioned, $190,000, the first of four of those, as he falls in 27th. It's a nice series. Was uh, was this his first Triton? It was indeed. Gotcha. Oh. There were a few new Lithuanians, right? Oh. Yeah, and you know what's interesting is I've had a conversation with the back-end team because in the search feature in the app, I was wanting to type in the country mm -hmm. and then hope to have all uh, players yeah. associated with that country in there. Feature not yet there, but will be deployed in a future update, I'm being told. So obviously gotcha. that's nice to know. What do you think? Someone was mentioning this at the table about a Triton World Cup event. I don't but know how we, it would work. Uh, but forgive me, Monte Carlo was his first ever uh, okay. event, conflating with the idea of first event at which he cashed. He went 0 for 6 in Monte Carlo, so this is in part why That's we why didn't we didn't remember, remember him. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Apologies to Paulius there. Misspoke too soon. Malinowski, this is not his first rodeo, whether we're talking Triton or super high stakes action, likes to play the cash games. An online legend. Bad boy, Esty. Bad boy. Put it away. All right. The phone's during hands. We frown upon such things. 140 to skate. Baby suited ace in the small for the boss stack against a button open. Might Patrick wag a finger in the face? I think Patrick's got notions to three to five him. Three bet. Shove over the four bet from Wichter. Well, let's see what Malinowski's response will be. Are these King Queen O's candidates for the four? No, I think what Wichter's got in this situation looks like a great call. Um, had he been early position, absolutely a really good candidate for a four bet. I had kind of a similar situation with Linus at my first Triton. Uh, he four bet me with the King Queen O, and I uh, closed my eyes and ripped the Ace three O. <laughs> Yeah, pretty nice hand to call here on the button. Sure. <sighs> Club in the window, wow. followed by another and a king as a collision is brewing. Malinowski, top pair. SPR two and a lot of hand for both guys. Yeah, not flush draw for the three better pre. In a seven figure pot. And note Malinowski's not shallow here with 2.2 back. I'd be interested to see what size Patrick goes for. Looks like half pot. Half milli. <coughs> This is a quarter of Malinowski's chips, just shy, let's call it. You can imagine the immediate folds as Garner's from nines, possibly tens without a club. Um, you're gonna see pretty much ace nine suited down fold to you. And you've got a jack in a really tough spot where it probably calls, but then folds turn very often. Wichter going nowhere with top pair. A very good kicker. <laughs> Definitely had an option to raise, and I think he would have raised facing quarter pot or one third, but half pot just don't need to play that many raises. Probably way ahead or way behind. And look at this development now. If he liked the king queen on the flop, now he's really starting to catch feelings as the open ender. Added to the equation here, pot up to two million. Note the SPR sub one. Antonius also picking up the Broadway gutter. It's one of those spots where if you're Patrick, you know, you have plenty of hand to jam, but at the same time, you kind of see it getting called every time. You're thinking, what am I getting to fold aside from a six, seven suited, six, five suited? There's just so few folds, maybe a jack nine suited. Um, it's really, really tough. You know, you can imagine Wichter might fold a queen jack. Ace jack probably hitting the muck as well. So as I talk it out, you know, th there are some folds, but if I'm in Patrick's spot, I feel like I'm walking into pocket sixes, king queen, king jack, king ten suited at a pretty high One clip, goal. but we still just put it in. Interesting that he doesn't shove him. I think... Uh, more of a meta play than anything else.
Tough to imagine, Victor, not going with this. 1.2 million. It's such a large quotient of his remaining stack. Plus. Whoa. My what goodness. What a fold. The 1.2. I wonder if did that number had an there? impact. Did you have That's Ooh. a heck of a pickup without having a... See a river. Yeah, brute force on display there from Antonius as Malinowski decides this is not where I want to make a stand. Okay. Very okay. respectful. Okay. I mean, when we look at the macro, we have opened the button. Patrick's on the big <laughs> stack. There could be not just some suspicions, but some disciplinary kind of initiative sure. Sure. out of Antonius with a wide array of holdings. But maybe it's the fact that he came with that big second barrel that we begin to remove a lot of the riffraff, and it starts to feel a lot more legit for obvious reasons, and a lot more chips now for Patrick. Look at this, 5.6 million as Pantley tries to keep pace. The two have been far and away the most active and have been willing to collide, courtesy of Pantling's initiative. ST wing, sub 10 bigs, Malinowski down to under 30. You know, at third times, we've got 4.3 million up top. It's 100K main. 29 bigs is plenty for Wichter to work with deck? from yeah. this point forward. You know, he just assesses that situation and says, I don't know that this is the one that I wanted to go with. Maybe a little bit of that, you know? Yeah, right. I think whenever we yeah, think yeah. about I'll have chips yeah. remaining, there's some hubris there. I think that works well when you're playing a WPT, a WSOP mid buy in event, and you say, My ROI is astronomical. But no one's working with an astronomical ROI final 26 of this tournament. These are so many good players in there. Um, even the weaker players are very quality players. No one's grabbing that big of an edge at this point where I think they can say, Oh, I still have chips, let me fold. If Wichter folds, I think it's it's coming primarily from a place of, man, I think he's got ace-king or aces, and I just don't want to get it in dead. I think this is the right move. And I think this is a couple of gut shots as king-queen squares off with king-10. And to your point, Jonathan, I would put our Triton VIPs up against any others out there in terms of performance, you know, the opportunity to kind of sit and bear witness on a regular basis to the greatest to ever do it and pick up ideas that they can redeploy elsewhere, cool. you know, I mean, these are, these, Absolutely. Aren't, these aren't dull knives out yeah, there. Yeah, if you're a businessman and you're jumping into poker, this is the deep end of the pool, and you learn real quick when you're mm. facing the best. That you do. This one was limp pre-blind versus blind. You saw the lead from Sang for 60K. Winter sticking around. And now break check from Elton. Interesting limp pre from Elton facing the shorter stack. Wow. Binks. Hello, 10. Gutter slides right in as the turn went check, check. Note that Winter has paired the 10. I'm not sure how much of an affinity he's going to have for that card. Backdoor hearts have arrived, have arrived as well. Winter has no heart in hand. A lot of possibilities there for Elton. Goes for two thirds. Limp, bet, check, bet. That's the line here. Out of Sang. On the one hand, if you're Winter, you can see how, look, you're beating no value, but you do block King-Queen, you block two pair on that 10. It's a reasonable candidate to do exactly what Sean's doing. 550,000? That's a lot of his tokens. Expressing ambitions here, but as you suspected, Jaffe, this was a possibility. And of course, once the call comes in, Sean yeah. deflates. Elton with uh, an automatic call there, of course, yeah. King of Hearts. Exactly. But still probably beating value at that size, too. Yeah, some smaller straights. Mm -hmm. Lurked. And with that one. I didn't think you were blocking. Slips. <laughs> Down were you were you bits. bluffing? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, 
Winter dealt with that question gracefully. <laughs> yeah, they both troll a little bit at the table. That would have been a good trick. Oh, I slip some Sean is a legend in the troll. <laughs> <laughs> the art of the troll. Oof. Let's see what Andrew's going to open under the... What? A fold? Okay, 6-3-0. Hmm? Both have big hands. It's like they even raise. Moment it's of truth for Patrick. No, here. quick fold. I wonder if it was 8-5 uh, suited. Maybe the salmon's getting cold. <laughs> Unclear. We only catch them at these feature tables, Jaffe, but you're out there at outer tables with the dude. He really, Great. truly is uh, just on a continuous ingestion program. Yes. Yes. Race Orders two meals at a time, usually. Oh, no. Uh, I'll, put oh. The Sorry, no. I'll put the calorie. Oh, oh. Okay. He did say raise two. He said raise to 60. So I think raise is the first word. Right. So yeah. he's allowed he's to put in the min. It is interesting spot going into an 11 big blind stack and an 8 big blind stack. Winter having, you know, 11 big blinds essentially being 22. He jams the nines, now SD. Ace five off suit, doesn't feel like the spot. Yeah, Sean took our uh, spot. Wow, he goes with it. I think he did not watch the 150K final table. This is very surprising out of Wang, maybe tempted by the prospect of a triple in the event that Elton were to join them. But if he did, it would likely be with the kind of hand that performs rather well against this ace five. All in call is gone. <laughs> Giving that wine a big sniff. Yeah. Decanting and looking to hold. Which he does. King 6 4. Obviously, two to come. Not out of the woods yet for SD Wang. Situation is grim for the time being. And now. Right on cue come the extra outs, an open ender and the ace all work. Can the nines hold? Yes, just a lowly pair of fives in the end for Wang as he wraps the felt. And the they give me the winner every hand? Will eight, leave us every hand they give you the winner? with nuts. 24 remaining. As back to back, not straight. Leon Sturm, <laughs> back to back. 26th place finish for him. Fifth. SD. Yeah, nines versus nine. You know, nine Leon Sturm yeah, yeah, is only 22. Yeah, yeah I, I did. Pretty phenomenal. It really is, just in terms of conduct, the way he carries himself. You know, I, it's now I understand why drinking age in Europe is 18 in a lot of places. These guys mature earlier. Seriously. Than we do on the other side of the pond as Americans. So then, Antonius sticking everybody in the sauna. 5.6. Pantling, though. He's got some heat tolerance. 83 bigs deep. And certainly has been showing a willingness to tussle with Patrick. As Winter now sits with 22 bigs. A little bit of a roller coaster for him here, but certainly up from where he was to start this frame at this 30, 60, and 60 level. Five players remaining here. I would imagine we're going to be drawing one from elsewhere in the field is 24 are left we could we could see a break here and and get down to three tables of oh. eight i would imagine it's that time i don't want to see that i really want to see more patrick and andrew i want to see that that has a chance for a heck of a collision you're not we could have an overwhelming that. chip later yeah i do that often people usually win the max first <laughs> that is like usually. Selfish desires. Five seconds. Witter wisely muffed the threes under the gun. Tricky spot for Sean here. This is 23, 22 big blinds. Button against cutoff. Ace 9-0. Announced call here. 
Yeah, you know, for chips, we're not playing much in the way of three bets there. There is some ICM in effect, but again, this is kind of that, you know, stale period. There are some move ups, but um, it's more chips play than a final table by a long shot. I mean, also caution is somewhat the order of the day when we have the frisky fellow in the big pantling. In a sense, three bet is the more cautious play, I might argue. Because when you flat, you're inviting that squeeze, you're inviting three-way pots, you sure. know. More people where it's very difficult to, uh, you know, it's still gonna be difficult with 20 big blinds getting away from a top pair and with two players to hit better hands. No disagreement there as we take the Jack-Jack A2 club board, three ways, 435 in the middle. Pantling flops the club draw and checks it over to the gutter of Elton. He started this party. Mesa clubs. Don't sleep on Sean with, yeah. yeah. Interactions. Everybody interacting with that club. Round of checks, however. Ooh. And now the 10, which hits both Elton and Pantling. Advantage Sang, as he currently has the best hand. Winter, however, picking up the open ender. imagine a lot of Sean's button flats interacting really well with that turn. Queen 9 suited, possibly a 9 7 suited, 10 9 suited, Queen 10 suited. It's possibly flats a King Queen, King 9 suited. Wow. One big fold with the ace of clubs. You think Pantling's presence behind him has anything to do with it? Two checks out of a big blind defense? Yes. Yep. I don't think he's folding heads up there against Elton. Okay. Nevertheless, he would have made the queen high straight. As you can see, Elton improving to queens and jacks. But the four-liner on board leaves him a little bit bashful, understandably, on the end, and he'll be delighted to be shown nothing more than the 10, as the clubs did not complete for Pantling. And almost three-quarter of a million will head toward Elton Singh. Wow, big flop, big turn. Have you had a chance to be around Elton since he picked up the W in the 150K, Jonathan? Yeah, I got a chance to congratulate him. He was at my table when I busted earlier today. Um, a seal-breaking first title and just pure with emotion oh, in yeah. the moment. And still giddy, riding the wave, really. Yeah, he is thrilled. Well, there's one last look at the five stacks at that particular table. As discussed, we are going to be breaking down to three tables of eight. You know... Adjustments need to be made. If you are out there playing six-handed, seven-handed, it, it's a different story when you get up to eight. Is it not with ranges and, you know, kind of being mindful? Absolutely. I don't think we're going to see the plus one open from A7-0 anymore. Uh, you know, that's a very final table-like uh, open, but they're at kind of a more chip stage right here. You're going to see more three-betting, less flatting, um, but the opens are going to be more high card oriented. And a lot of those pocket threes fold that we saw from Wichter, that's the flavor of the day. Not so much suited connector, low pocket pair. Also, what you're going to see is a short break as we send you along with the players to this little pause. When we come back, we'll unpack the redraw as 24 remain here in the 100K. Stay close. Welcome to the Daily Dose of GTO Quiz of the Day. You're playing an 8 max MTT, 20 big blinds effective. It folds to the small blind who limps, action on you in the big blind. Why does the GTO strategy prefer to shove with hands like ace two off and ace three off, but raise small with strong hands like ace king off? Find the answer in the Daily Dose of GTO, our free ebook designed to help you master GTO poker in just five minutes per day. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. 
Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience. Just sees the wonder. Jeju Shinoa World. Continuing coverage of the one hundred thousand dollar main event from here at Shinoa World on the island of Jeju in South Korea. Jonathan Jaffe, alongside yours truly, Alina Jad. Redraw is complete. Let's not waste any time. Let's dive right into it, Jaffe. We were watching the seats get populated. Your first reaction, of course? Oh, Pantling's not sitting next to Antonius. That really was the ingredients for uh, a spicy soup, dare I say. But let's take a look at a spicy Jean-Noël Torel to the left of Pantling. We know he likes to dive in there and do some things. Elton saying top five stack directly to the right of Patrick Antonius down there on the red table, which is already complete. So let's start there. What jumps out? Yeah, we do get Alex Kulev. That's that's another guy who's going to fire chips in. Um, sure. Your chip leader for part of the day earlier today. Played a fantastic set of sixes. Was that on the stream? Yes, it was indeed. I was front and center for that one against the Ace King, I believe it was, and he went big, big turn river. He made a lot more money than most players are going to make there. He is a very experienced deep stack. Not to say he's not a fantastic ICM player, knows what he's doing everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, you know, seeing him there with Patrick, you know, you can imagine some of their button big blind confrontations. They could get a lot of chips in some yeah. spots others wouldn't. 24 remaining, and certainly one could make the argument that we have a cream rises sort of setup right now. The Greek, Alex Theologius, not to be slept on. Let's just take a look at how this festival has been treating him so far. How about that, CV, Jonathan? Four caches in his first five attempts. Sixth one out of nine, I believe. Eight, let's call it. This is a really on-form performance for him here so far. That's a lot of yellow. You see him in that picture a moment ago. It looks like he's bringing on, bringing on more. I mean, uh, you know, very, very chiseled in terms of online experience for Theologus. I don't think there's any situation that's going to kind of intimidate him as he operates there at that red table. Now then, blue table is filled in. Let's cast our eyes back into the app. We find Mosbach and Ibinger along with Weissman all to the right of Pantling. Third place stack of Kevin Rabichow is in there. And let's take a little peek at his resume. This is his first ever Triton Festival. And this is the first 
cash as he was 0 for coming into this one. So obviously nice to get the monkey off one's back. Yeah, definitely. A fantastic player and possibly uh, the best coach in the world. He is an excellent poker coach, been at it for a long time. Um, he might get my vote for the best Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So those who teach can do as Absolutely. the vote comes in from Jaffe for coach of the world, let's call it. And there are all three of your remaining tables here in this 100K main. $4.33 million up top. The current payout will be $190,000. We are on a jump up to $212,000 if you can make the top 23. As we proceed at the 30, 60, and 60 level, all of that brought to you by Poker Stake. Not to be looked over, Saliba 67 Bigs able to enjoy, in spite of his fourth place stack, a chip leading situation. So all of the other bigger stacks found themselves elsewhere in the field. A nice little setup for Justin, needless to say. Another excellent poker coach, yeah. Nice. Pantling scooping chips, no yeah. surprise. I want to ask you with regards to coaching. Being yeah. the best player in the world does not even remotely necessarily correlate to you being the best coach in the world, does it? I mean, Correct. obviously you have to have talent, but what is it that makes for a wonderful poker coach? Yeah, I think how skillful the player needs to be is relative to who they're coaching. So there are some guys out there who, let's say, would struggle beating 2-5 online, but they can be a good coach for a 1-3 live player because okay. those are the streets that they've been working in and they know what's going on. Okay. But what it really comes down to is your communication style, matching up well with your student. I think, you know, to be a great coach, you have to understand what are the buzzwords that are flying right over my student's head? What is he not picking up on? When do I bring it down a level, uh, you know, to get him speaking this language? Sometimes you need to start with, uh, you know, explaining uh, certain terms and concepts and not assume that everyone knows them. No concept needs to be explained here. This is a problem for Chris Brewer. An under-the-gun open with ace-jack offsuit and Davies glimpses down at needles. Five seconds. Yeah, we could see a flat or a three-bet. Can't imagine Seth's going to play a jam here. Three bets. Seth's looking strong, not just the aces. In the lab and the gym? Yeah. I think Brewer's got a pretty straightforward fold here. We've, we're eight-handed now after a redraw, so that plus two open, uh, or plus two three bet, that's pretty strong versus under the gun open. And of course, when Seth activates against our under the gun open, we do tend to give him some credit for having done so with legit kit. And as we can see, it gets more legit than that. Back to the coaching discussion, Jaffe. Thank you. Have you ever sought out coaching and have you ever done any coaching? I've never sought out official coaching. Nick Petrangelo has given me plenty of um, uh, free help uh, as we're really close. I used to coach him back in the day. Then I stopped playing anything challenging for a long time. Okay. Watched my game deteriorate, and uh, Nick jumped in to help. Yeah. That's nice. An opportunity to reciprocate and an opportunity for you to get yourself a $50 Global Millions ticket with a minimum deposit of 20 bucks. Use the promo code Triton underscore 2024 and get yourself an account at the world's largest online poker room. Our partners over at GG, also the only place where you can officially qualify for Triton events. Don't hesitate. Use that sign-up code and get yourself involved today as we flip back over to our other feature table. Antonius and company. Kulev. Look at the table side massage. Love to see it. By the way, have you gotten a massage over here at the, the spa yet? Jennifer? I have not gotten a massage at the spa. Uh, I've had one at the table. Okay. How's the spa? Uh, listen, during this long break, I hopped in there for a 90 minute. I confess, I was sort of profiling the therapist, <laughs> thinking, I'm not sure these hands are going to get in there and do what needs to be done, and yet. She turned it out. Fantastic. Jeffy, Was that you, here at the Marriott or at I, Somerset? Uh, at the Marriott Spa, and right over here. Pretty reasonable uh, price. And oh, okay. I'm feeling just, good. I'm ready to take us down case, to 16, which is what I'm being told we're going to play down to. Obviously, nice. these environments are fluid in case things get like, a bit too protracted. Like million, and this is, I think, you, you would agree, one of the well, delightful things about Triton. Player. They're very I player like first. If, you know, consensus is, guys, you know, unless there's some real reason we can't. 
they're going to work with you guys. Absolutely. Right? There are uh, some, nice you know, very well-known tours, one in Vegas that runs <laughs> over the summer. I'm not sure if you know about it. That uh, <laughs> Not <laughs> quite as player-friendly, not quite as interested in consensus as uh, bottom-line big corporation stuff, you know. Yeah. No, Triton is absolutely the best. I mean, it's it, if it wasn't so true, it, it would get tiring hearing at the table all the flattering things the players are saying about the tour all the time. I'm not <laughs> saying it being in the commentary booth for Triton. Right. It's just true. It's just like that's why I want to commentate for Triton is because it's awesome here. Well, we feel very fortunate to have you in here. Malinowski feeling fortunate. Pocket Jack, small blind, takes us up. Note the upsizing. This is very standard when we're opening small blind against big and the covering stack of Kulev peers on with some interest. Ace four off suit, that which is responsible. Yeah, this could jam, this could call. I don't think we're gonna see a three bet as there's not enough pressure to be uh, put out. You know, Wichter's not in the streets playing tournaments all that often, so I don't imagine Alex has um, a super clear idea of how Wichter wants to play these spots. So I think it's going to be more feel when Kulev decides whether to call or jam there. Well, certainly more Malinowski on a Jack-5 deuce board. Top set, spade working, a spadeless wheel gutter for Kulev, and the strength of just the ace high with 460 in the middle. Got to hand it to Wichter. He looks as pained as he did before he fooled the King Queen O. Malinowski plays it as a check. Does this feel like genuine disinterest or deference that Kulev could pounce upon? Only he knows. I don't think Alex is going to want to jump on it with this hand. Uh, you can see how right away it's not going to fold any better hands. Too weak to go for value. Just a nice hand appeal card. He agrees as the check fails to improve his holding. Tough decision here for Wichter. You're wondering what might Alex delayed C bet? Well, a weak jack, but that's not going to happen. We've got three of them covered. Um, a seven, eh, it's possible. A five, not super likely, but yet Alex has plenty of hands that could be bluffing the turn. That said, I like a bet here. I think what Wichter's going for looks fantastic. Start putting the pressure, get some calls from that 5X, 2X, 7X, and of course spades and clubs are going nowhere. Same with nine, eight, eight, six. Got plenty of draws in Alex's range. Would have liked a bigger bet from Wichter here, and that would lead nicely into a check on the river. As it is, though, the one and a quarter gets called in a very nice river for Malinowski's purposes in terms of extracting value from Kulev. 7-10 in the middle. How much ASX does he assign Kulev as play? Defense from the big, check back, on the flop, call the turn. Yeah, the defense certainly limits it. The call on the turn checks out for a fair number of ace -X, certainly the ace-4, ace-3. Um, but again, those could have jammed preflops, so we don't know how many to assign. This is a really right, tricky okay. spot Wichter's found himself in, and I think, you know, I'm still harping on that turn size. I think he was betting his hand more than the board texture. Really not sure what we like as Wichter. He just... What is his air? Maybe a 9-8 suited, a queen-10 of clubs or spades. Um, it's just tricky. If he blocks, it's, yeah, just goes for it. And Alex puts his hand up like, you clearly have me beat. What would your bluffs be like this? But I got a call. Yeah. Don't blame him. Yeah. Sometimes the situation just warrants, and with mm, comfort, <laughs> but disdain. Alex did click call in a big capital infusion to the Malinowski fund now. Balance transfer to the right out of Kulev. Do you think Alex saved a little money there with Wichter's small turn bet? Meanwhile, Joey Weissman doesn't have savings on his mind. Six of 700,000 deployed. King Queen has got JNT. Interested. Mayor of Triton gonna introduce Joey to 
60-40. Chan T, by the way, genuinely at times does struggle Seven. to kind of see the boards, you know, especially here at these feature tables. Some glare coming down, a lot of light. So he will stand up, <laughs> make sure that no, everything that he thinks is going on. And then he said seven. I don't know. Seven. seven. Presumably a raise. Yeah. I mean, it's it's obvious that he wants yeah. to raise, right? But uh, if he raises to 700, you just get a ruling, right? Okay, so it looks like we got to bring the floor yeah. over. Yeah. And Jaffe, you've been at tables with JNT. He isn't the most well-versed in, you know, every all of the nuances. He wanted to simply put the full amount, mm -hmm. it would seem, that Weissman has out there. But as we can see that's not an allowable re-raise. Yeah, I'll be interested in the ruling because I've seen, you know, some latitude given to JNT based seven. on intention, Please. but this is this is very deep and a tough seven. spot for Joey. Um, I, I think she's going to go with the rules. Okay. I think it's going to stand <laughs> as a call and Joey's going to get to see a flop. That said, I don't think we see a difference coming in here. Okay. JNT is understanding. So, set sant will go as a call. Oh, flashing a little bit of French. Yeah, je parle un peu. Jaffe, very impressive. Ever the Renaissance man, unimpressed. <laughs> will be Weissman, whose king queen just shrivels on Brutal an ace nine Shirley. four board. And with the knowledge that JNT wanted to put more into this pot, and now asks for the final one hundred thousand. Might there be an exit in spite of that 14 yeah. to 1 that we're being laid? It I don't certainly think so. feels that way, or no? No, I think he's going despite the fact that JNT had a big grin on his face while he put the money in. Going as in, we're, we're going to see th I, two more? I think he's going all in, you know. It's, of course, if we know he has the ace, but there's so many other hands, five, sixes, sevens. Uh, this is just, it could be a catastrophe if Joey folds and uh -huh. JNT does happen to have a hand like pocket sixes. Mm -hmm. Even just mm, king nine soon, eh. I mean, it's tough. I imagine there's no payout move on the horizon as we just redraw. Taking a peek at those payouts for you, Jaffe. Fold's looking possible at this point. He's thinking about it. Producer James has hopped in to verify we are in a $22,000 pay jump, so ah, this is somewhat okay. relevant. So, yeah, we might be waiting here for a moment. T is making some towers over there, placing them very gently. He really sympathize with the spot here for Weissman. It just feels somewhat futile. Obviously, using the time banks in the hopes that maybe somebody else meets their maker elsewhere in the field. Uh, Looking around at the stacks, they do track them. Green oh, so the most <laughs> of them. Yeah. Is there no Ten reason? Yeah. So if someone passes in the same hand, then it's I see. I see. I see. Thank you. So, and Weissman all done waiting oh. to find a bust Just elsewhere and does take the price <laughs> and will be taking a walk out of the arena unless he can draw live courtesy of a turn. It's got to be 10 through king here. And Ooh. instead, it's the 8. So it? then, Good luck. we've come to the end of the road. But Joey Weissman... Finding a cash here. The last of the $190,000 payouts will be his, courtesy of a 24th place finish here. <laughs> Weissman was the second shortest stock <coughs> in the room coming into that one. As we touched on, got the monkey off his back. First career Triton cash. Close spot here for Elton. Close. Next 
I like that fold with Patrick directly behind him. Okay, well I think attack. he would be well suited. And it just it depends too, because sometimes we'll see yeah, a passive so big stack kick. at a table. I don't know that Patrick's <laughs> the man. But mm -hmm. if that's the case, then we feel a bit more emboldened to kind of open. And sometimes we test the waters a little bit, right? Absolutely. And, and we see, okay, am I going to get you know these big three bet ICM sort of moves out of my man directly to my left or not? But Elton, obviously, maybe snugging up a little bit. Mustafa off, 120 from the button. Luke Greenwood now realizing this pay jump. The next four payouts will be, uh, three payouts rather, will be $212,000. So he chooses to play the ace five as a three bet for near all of it. Theologus will be uninterested. Good luck. And it's gonna flip back over to Fahredin. I did it. And now I got to do this. Make sure that that last 20K gets in there and takes way the best of it into battle for 970,000. As Luke Greenwood, who took a big break from Triton and, you know, the high stakes tournament scene to run the family business after he and Sam's father passed away mm. some time ago. And now he's got everything in a place that allows for him to maybe take some more time away. Very touching interview that he did with us back in London. You just could tell how much pop meant to him and his brother and their entire family. Shout out to them. I know they love to watch on. But what we don't love is that flop, turn, or river. When we've got ace five, the situation was always dire. Well, the conclusion was not foregone. It is official now. So dispatched with the first of the $212,000 payouts is Luke Greenwood. Mustafa off, absorbs. What is the family business? You know, I'm not sure what it is. I didn't inquire hmm. as to what it was. Good question, though. Yeah, both good poker players, great guys. Yeah, well liked like by the one community. One? Mm -hmm. You know, there is kind of a, a continuum in terms of people who uh, what does that mean? hold many friendships mm. or, you know, know. positive acquaintanceships yep. out there in the field. Some kind of just uh, quietly operate in the shadows, do their thing, not necessarily looking to one one. chum it up. I guess. Sure. But I think by and large, Jeff, friendship. you would agree, most people, there's this sense of, hey, because you're, you're part of the ilk. And, you know, we seek out, like, hey, little conversations, <laughs> get to know somebody, and to varying degrees, people so are receptive, and you can kind of tell who, who wants to engage and kind of, you know, there's some very private characters that come out here, obviously high net worth individuals. Absolutely. I think at, at every stop, there's, you know, a couple of newcomers where I have this conversation, and they're just saying, everyone's so friendly here. It's so nice. And, yeah, I mean, it, it just is. The table talk is... Not, a not, lot not better good. than pretty much any other poker tables I sit at where it's the mood, the vibe, no one is complaining, yeah. no one is over-celebrating typically. Um, people are friendly, chatty, everyone has won and lost a fair amount of money and is acclimated to it. And no one's looking to capitalize on like fortuitous or opportunities to... <laughs> I don't know against the spirit of the game, you, gain an edge. Them? And I think that JNT moment earlier <laughs> would really support yes. that. He, in particular, yes. has created some scenarios yeah. such as that. And I think on each and every occasion that we've seen it, everybody <laughs> recognizes this is not a man <laughs> looking to gain an edge. This is not somebody who's intentionally creating these scenarios. It's just honest mistakes. And in, in order to continue to create that welcoming mm -hmm. environment that draws more goods. and more VIPs in mm -hmm. here and stands in stark contrast, by the way, to other tools in which one could maybe seek out this level of action, that is in part okay. why people continue to feel comfortable coming out and giving their business to the Triton Super High Roller Series. Yep. Absolutely. They have Company. latitude to run things how they want and, you know, change from stop to stop based on player input, based on what didn't work. You know, you saw um, Joey cut his stall short with that uh, with the king-queen because players at the table informed him, hey, just so you know, if somebody busts in the same hand, um, it will be, uh, this, the payout will be split. So go ahead, and, and he put it in. Yeah. And they, they've done everything. You know, Luca Vivaldi's 
taken input from everyone uh, and made the best rules possible to discourage things that are going to make for a worse experience for the players, a worse experience for the viewer. And we've really come out, you know, we're, we're getting closer and closer to the kind of perfect poker tournament experience. Yeah. I mean, even just us from the booth, we take tremendous pride in sort of this product and doing our part to try to help grow it and aid others as no aid on this board for Elton Singh was going to say eight others to become aware of it. What we're aware of is bottom set is up against second pair on a queen high rainbow board here. Elton the covering stack, 330 in the middle. Mustafa goes to work, just 80. Looking to retain a wide array of holdings at that size. See Elton centering himself a little bit. Yeah, I think Elton's got a pretty straightforward call here, but he likes to balance with his timing, likes to look his opponent up and down. Six on the turn. Be curious what size we see Mustafa go for here on the turn. Note Elton drawing dead. There is some dampness in the form of backdoor hearts and some straighty combos. I think we're going to see pretty large. Uh, the smaller bet might be 75%, and the larger bet might be just over pot. There's a little bit on the smaller side of things. That looks 72%. You know, this is just from the cutoff. Faradine does have, you know, some 7x, some 9-10-0. Um, there's, there's an assortment of bluffs in that range, but the 6 overall hits Elton a lot better. You know, he might have the 7-5-0 perhaps. Um, definitely makes more two pairs on this turn. Is the 10 of spades a below average card to have tethered to that 8 as played? Yeah, it is below average. We certainly don't like blocking the 9-10, Jack-10. Um, that <coughs> said, <coughs> it seems really close. I'm surprised Elton called that quickly. Um, Drawing dead, and now this is the kind of river. Yeah, you yeah, can imagine some leads. Five of hearts on the end. Might Elton turn the hand into a bluff? So, considerations for Elton. Where are we in our range? Well, we're pretty low, but are we dead bottom? No, we have some ace-high heart draws. We have 4x of hearts, um, but there's not too much that's worse. And we can imagine Faradin's going to be checking a lot of strong hands on the river here, meaning if Elton did have a 7 or a flush, he'd want to play some leads. Does it go check, check? Faradin... Not looking to put any more chips in the pot when the flush and four line are complete. No, that really was a, an ugly river, but one that earned Elton a free showdown. As Mustafa content to haul that one in. I think he's pretty impressed with himself beating Elton in a pot. That's so. a tough thing to do in the past few days. Yeah, no doubt about that. He has very much been on form. You can see the efforts that he's put in between stops. Yes. Yeah. Paying off. Shout out, by the way, Chartle B in the YouTube chat. Talks about being a fan of the production quality here at Triton. It's certainly not just <coughs> the players that we're focused upon, but you out there as fans seeking to give you the best possible poker stream on earth and we certainly hope that you're enjoying it if you are all we ask is a click of the like and the subscribe while you're at it and then back to your regularly scheduled programming can i tell you my favorite uh ali commentating moment oh sure. not a well, moment so much as a time hang on we've got oh, a moment yes. on our hands here put a pin in that as malinowski's ace king suited gonna book a date with the Bulgarian Ace King off, up we go to 375. And the rest of that 900 will be on request shortly. 
And let's talk about Alex's decision to three bet as opposed to shove. I think it's fantastic and it's representative of a guy who has all the bluffs in this spot. So he has to balance with value. He can't just have aces and kings in this situation. Um, you know, when we were doing the 150K, we saw a player shove 12 big blinds with ace king o in a spot where a player as aggressive as Alex can't be making that rip because he wants to play the bluffs. So this is, this is real balance from Alex where every inch of, you know, body probably just wants to shove, take this down, get it in against ace queen maybe. But, um, you know, you hate getting flatted in this situation, but it's just something you need to do if you're going to play the bluffs properly. So in sails the rest. Both parties quite happy to get chips forward with these holdings. Majority of the time, of course, it will be a chop. 5% edge for the diamonds. <laughs> and the flop does produce a couple of diamonds, a threat to Kulev. The reasons are clear. Reroll for Malinowski. It doesn't come in on the turn. Now he slips to 20%. I'm sweating this river, I'm not going to lie to you. Alex says he's sweating it. <laughs> <laughs> and a red I'm card, but it's a hard. <laughs> Got one brewing elsewhere in the room. Looks like Webster Lim and Igor Yaroshovsky, and Webster appears to be on his feet. He raised it to 500,000 pre-flop. Yaroshevsky flatted. It came 996. Webster jammed. Yaroshevsky made the call, and it was pocket eights for Webster. Best hand on the flop and the turn where he picked up a gutter, but the river was the nasty berry ace. Showering his hopes at another title here at Triton. Yaroshevsky not complaining as we flip it back over and find more violence in the room. This time, Rabichow, the aforementioned praise from Jonathan Jaffe, calling him the best poker coach anywhere. He's got an ace 10 off suit in, having played it as an open to 160,000 from what looks like the cutoff. Mario Mosbach. On the button, jamming, getting called, and the flop is king, eight, six, as Mosbach connects. The dominated ace now hopping well in front. Rabichow, the covering stack, does have the ace of clubs working now. Real threats for Mosbach. Can he hold on? Yes, he can. Aces and eights going to be better than ace, 10. Forgive me, better than ace, 10. Healthy pot hauled in by the Austrian. Mosbach, the guy who once upon a time was a professional footballer out in Austria, fairly early relative to a lot of the pros out there in his poker career and yet has been very impressive. Runs with Fedor and the Poker Code boys. Obviously, such things, such minds being able to, to tap into those. Yeah. That'll be helpful. Mario's a great guy. I've played... Um a fair number of uh, kind of games with him now uh, in the last two stops. He, or maybe Fedor is the one who brought code names to um, Monaco. We played some code names. That was great. There's a game we like to play at the table. We've played a fair amount of as well. Um, footsie? <laughs> footsie, yeah. That's it's, not uh, it. <laughs> a subjective uh, guessing game. Okay. A little oh, is difficult. that the, um, like, Laden Thinks? It's it's in the genre of Laden Thinks. It's okay. a little bit different, but a uh, great game. I'll explain it to you off air. Sure. It's a little tough without a visual, maybe. Uh, I don't want to bore the viewers, but... Um, I like games. Yeah, fantastic game. And now with a little bit of a pause, forgive the self-indulgence of it, but uh, you yeah. embarked upon this notion that you had a favorite moment of mine here in the booth. Deeply curious am I. You know what? I feel like I forgot. <laughs> no, just kidding. Um, you if only they could see the look on my face, by the way. <laughs> Producer James reveling in the troll, by the way. Anything to take me down a peg. Man loves it. I remember. It was Norman Chad, not you. Know. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> No, did you know that I'm uh, I'm kind of blackballed at WSOP uh, from uh, any praise? I, um, you know about the dolphin trainer bit? I don't know about the dolphin trainer. Oh, I all know right. about Queen Jack suited on the button though as okay. Ibinger deploys. Pause briefly once more. Pantling. 
no matter for him. Brewer doesn't look like he likes it. And sure enough, the fold. So the dolphin trainer bit. Well, I can't believe I'm about to segue oh, from praise about you to a story I, about me. I, no, I think I remember this. It was like a trolley bio. Yes. That you put exactly, in. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I remember this because I think I fell for it as well. Uh huh. So okay. Norm and Lon were not happy about having to re-record some stuff, and um, uh, Maury, the producer, uh, all of them are uh, pretty upset with me. Okay. Um, and. They, yeah, uh, my name came up in some conversations, and Norman Chad was astounded that somebody was friends with me. They thought I'm just the worst guy ever. Uh, that said, Maury has trolled me multiple times since, and so when I have my bio sheet up at like Poker Go or whatnot, it says Jonathan Jaffe, zero career WSOP bracelets. <laughs> It's <laughs> pretty strong. He's fighting fire with fire out there as Ibinger fights off of 11 big blinds. Did raise and take there from the button. Trying to keep his head above water here as the orbits have gotten more expensive. 200,000. A rotation. Pantling up top. As you see the distribution. Go on then, Jaffe. So, the Ali uh, commentating. Okay. It was three-handed that I tuned in, maybe four-handed, to the super high roller bowl that Negranu won. Okay. Um, beat Petrangelo heads up, and I, ch I tuned in to watch Nick, and yeah, I hadn't watched poker with the commentary in a long time, and right. you and Nick Shulman were just on point, hilarious. Nick sounded like he was ready to get out of the booth eight hours ago. He sounded crusty, and he was hilarious while he was crusty, and you were just playing into it the whole time, just Love like it. poking him left and right. Oh, you know, it's funny because I think a lot of people have this weird sense that I'm intentionally doing things <laughs> to irritate Nick. <laughs> I just naturally <laughs> irritate Nick. You know, and yep. I think he's got some thick skin <laughs> on him, but for whatever reason, <laughs> I tend to get subcutaneous on our boy. <laughs> I have not heard that word. That sounds like an excellent word I need to look up. Uh, beneath the dermis. Ah. Pantling yes, above the flat, 175,000. Jack three suited. JNT, a customer in the big. Here we are, top pair for JNT up against bottom pair and diamonds. 470 in the middle, more chips are headed forward. Andrew playing with pace, by the way, not one of these guys that chews on a spot too much. JNT, also a quick player, this is great. There it is, extra 300 into the middle. Three million could change hands in 30 seconds. Queens and eights now. And Cut a barrelable card for the jack three. For Pantling. Goes for the check. I think he might perceive, as JNT fills up on the river here, that JNT in particular, and, you know, Pantling as a man who has some adhesion of his own, is sticky. And so maybe we show a little bit more pause. Sure. Than we a might lot otherwise. of options for JNT. Going for the block. Tough spot. If you're Andrew, you imagine your beating's just about nothing. Can't really rep much for a raise, but it's 125. Tough to not pay. Could see a king 10, a king jack, perhaps. <laughs> Maybe an ace low suited with a back door on the flop. Can't blame him for paying off there. Sees the trouble he dodged by uh, checking the turn. So then, just the flat from Pantling. Yep. JNT. Yep. Oh, good. good. Yeah, Munches. Yeah, Kevin rocking that new Triton hood. You look you, sharp. You got it good this time. Yeah. yeah. You know, the black one and, and one other color, they've got that on the inside of the hoodie, the lining that has the I Triton like logo that. on it. And then the white one. Which is, you know, same same layout, mm -hmm. does not. Oh, uh, okay. And I was I talking to our designer, Janice, over there. It's like, what's up with that? She was like, you know, just got to keep everybody on their toes. I was like, come Give on. Give the people choices. Can I buy the liner maybe and just, you know, but is what it is. I bought the white one with the red. Okay. I like that liner. No free gear for the guys in the booth wrapping it? Listen, yeah, this, these are so. sore subjects. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't want to go getting anybody in hot water. Davies. I'm thrown. Queen five tosses it. Yes. Yeah, he still got it. Oh no, it. he still it's got it. Uh, Forgive me. Cut off 
wants to play with Pantling, but Queen 5 out. There tough. it is. You're dominated by even the, the garbage holdings that Andrew's opening. Do you find yourself making adjustments just based on the perceived frequency with which your opponent is just going to put you in the multi-barrel spots when making the decision pre and the big to defend? Sort of. I put it this way. Sometimes if there's an opponent who you know That's is quite loose and I want to play pots with them, I'll expand my defend ranges. But once you're in ICM situations, particularly at a final table, then it's not so much how skillful is my opponent as much as how much is he going to put me in the blender, just like you said. So, you know, blunt aggression is what you want to avoid um, when you're one of the shorter stats in heavy ICM. Got it. Passes in front of Malinowski. He won't be doing the same. Ace King suited. He gave Kulev a sweat with this holding in diamonds. Alex isn't going to be a participant here. Victor's run it up since that King Queen fold. Might this be our first opportunity to observe the on form Alex Theologus? It will not. Nope. Deuces for Sean. Yeah. This is a decision, you know, you could get Wichter to fold a lot of his mid to low offsuit ace uh, opens in this situation with a jam. Certainly not the ace king suited, but I think a lot of players are finding a jam here. But Sean, we're expecting more of a defend typically. Nope, goes for it. There's the rip, and he's run into the ace king suited. The epitome of the fake flip. I like you in there. Advantage winter in terms of... Oh. Actual <laughs> holding right now, a pip <laughs> ahead of Malinowski, but it is a, you take a stone you flip. A <laughs> By the way, the sniff to sweep <laughs> ratio <laughs> on that <laughs> glass of wine <laughs> is <laughs> four to one, I think. I think he's teasing Wichter, you know, push. who challenged Fedor. He said he would play him drunk, and uh, it didn't go well for Wichter. <laughs> Were they really? Bo they both played drunk. He, no, Fedor was sober. He was. Uh, Wichter was kind of making oh. a publicity stunt out of it. Gotcha. Saying how Fedor couldn't play heads up. Well, from Fedor to Fader, Sean oh. was fading, uh. and I spoke too soon. Perhaps uh. this one's on me. A king rolls right on off on this river. The king of diamonds <laughs> note wouldn't to make work. A joke after you wanted, but now I, I like his show though. I want to know what Alex is. <laughs> it was in relation to you winning the pot. It's not very relevant now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, you can't make that joke. All right. So Winter, out of there. Six hundred. Managed to get the wine down. Twenty-first place finish. Two hundred twelve thousand going his way. Two thirty-four now locked up for the next three payouts. JNT gambling it up on the TS. Twenty remaining. King Queen flats the UTG open from the cutoff. Yep. To the flop we go, and it's an ace on board. Heibinger out in front, Broadway gutty. Spade works for JMT. Rubbing his lucky marble, I don't know what that's about. I haven't seen that before. I haven't either. You know, Keith Lear is here. He's been playing some events. He would take his eyeball out and randomize sometimes with it. Now that's a little wow. bit uncomfortable. But Ibinger comfortable enough to send 250 in there. 1.4. Already in the middle. Oh my. Easy call for John Noel here. Just 250. Got the queen of spades. Gutter could still be up against tens, eights. Jack 10 suited. <laughs> Pretty understandable. And how does he have 22% equity? Or point then. That's a great point. It feels like more than the eyeball test would suggest, but now that 22% erodes as one of the tens does not find the turn nor the river. Trip aces on the end for Ibinger, and obviously 
Disappointed by the participants here at this table to see him picking up chips. One to tussle with. All right, calling a Davies double up in the next six hands. Okay. Jaff Sputin with the prophecy. I like it. Trying to flash back, by the way, as we do flip over to the other feature, preflop action here was an open from Mustafov. The min, Elton, flatting. We've arrived at ace, queen, 10. Advantage, Sang. Facing the 100K C bet. Check calls. Pot up to 600,000. Jack on the turn, uncomfortable for obvious reasons for both parties. Although things were uncomfortable already for Mustafov once Elton came along. Looks like one of Faradin's better hands to bluff in this situation. We still have a drop of equity, which is a difficult thing to have when you're bluffing on a Broadway board. Oh, it does go for the check. Both parties unimproved on the end. Elton's got enough hand to find a check against the cutoff here. Question is, what does Faradin go for facing a check? Oh, Elton goes. Hmm. Fake out. At this point, could definitely see himself value betting with less than a king, so that expands the potential. Two seven to five. Pocket eights looking like a nice hand to use. 275k. Will the King X check back the turn with some frequency on a board such as that in spite of the arrival of the backdoor spade draw? Sure, it will at some frequency, um, but he also just gets to value bet with less than a King at this point. Elton is going to have sent some chips in on the river himself with most of his King X. And so with that knowledge, Fatadin targeting what he doesn't anticipate is Broadway, and note that Elton's not all done with it. Trying to come up with what the value range is for Mustafov and how this ace-3 would be performing against it. Value in particular, the ace-3 falls to just about all of it? Or are there combos that he can just chop with another lowly ace? No, he's he's got a pure bluff catcher here. Faradin is looking at two pair minimum for a value bet. I don't think we're seeing an ace-9. Um, Go in there with a bet, yeah. I think this is... Wow, makes Almost a really straight. tough call. Almost. Almost straight. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> you know, from the cutoff, the question is, how many of these mid to low suited connectors, the 8-7 suited, 6-7, um, get in there? Because that's what Elton's calling, hoping it's a low Almost pocket goes. pair or a low suited yeah, connector. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> well, Fahreddin Mustafov didn't need an introduction to Elton Sang, oh, but perhaps a reintroduction in the form of version 2.0, very much on form here. Hmm? Hot off that 150K victory, fishing for mm -hmm. another trip to an FT, and who knows, perhaps back-to-back -back titles. 4.2 mil followed by 4.3. That wouldn't be a bad uh, 8.5 mil five days. No, not at all. It's okay. I think Exchanges you believe like me, but you don't I believe me. I cannot find the full button. Y yeah, <laughs> I see. I see. <laughs> My I mistake. I cannot find the call and the raise button. <laughs> yes. I'm like, where's the full button? I cannot find it. <laughs> Maybe the raise button better. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> King 10 suited UTG open from Malinowski. Alex folds the ace 9 0 quickly on the button. And Tony has been largely uninvolved. By the way, Pocket Deuce is in the big, though. We'll see him participate. I was going to say, when you're a spectator out there, <laughs> you see an exchange like the one that we just observed between Mustafov and then that big call from Elton. Do you take note? Do you kind of go, oh, hang on. I'm not saying it was the most incredible pot, but, you know, it it's emblematic of some gears turning, yes. you know, in the ace-three seat. 
Yeah, I think the Elton call is what registers. Ooh, what do we got here? Well, registration in the form of top pair against bottom set. We'll put a pin in the thought, Jaffe, is 440,000 is going to be a lot more than that. Malinowski tussling with the big stack. 110K incendiary gestures. If there's a number one hand you're check raising in Patrick's spot, it's pocket twos. Pocket twos, you could say pocket fives, pretty equal against UTG, but this is the hand that just so desperately wants money in, and you unblock the king, leaving room for Wichter to have a hand just like he does. Goes for call. Very cagey. Patrick likes to play tricky. Six on the turn. This is a card that favors Antonius' big blind defense range. After he check calls the flop, now you see Malinowski. How cautious will he seek to be with King-10? Obviously, he could check back and then face a river barrel, potentially make a decision. And Patrick knows that twos are just about always check raising here. This is a pretty straightforward thing, so it tells you something about how he views Wichter's tendencies, in this case, probably inaccurately, as Wichter makes a conservative check, reasonable check, but on the conservative side with King-10 zooted. Patrick missing that check raise on the flop. This could be a disaster. We don't think about disasters very often when you scoop the pot, right. but this is a massive, massive miss. Um, the amount of chips that could have gone in had he check raised the flop compared to what we're going to see here, I even presume, if he gets an overbet in. I presume on balance we will see the check raise from Patrick with reasonable frequency? Yeah, I think there are players out here who are doing that 100% of the time there. Mm. Ooh, this might end up one of the routes that gets him paid a little more. Yeah. The block, we see a raise, potentially. Cheeky little 150 sub-quarter pot into 660. I think he's repping a lot of 5x in this situation, putting Wichter in a tough spot with ace highs, pocket fours. It's just, what are the bluffs there? Broadway backdoors, say a queen ten of diamonds, clubs. Suppose you could imagine an ace three even bluffing in this situation. And here we go. He does get a chance to make some more money. You know? That's a small raise from Wichter. Here's the thing about that raise. You have to be real sure that your man is blocking with a one pair hand worse than your king if you're going to go that small because the reward is 250k. Mm -hmm. That would be nice, but that's not a huge, huge reward to reopen the action and face the pain he's about to face. Right, risk reward calculus perhaps not soundly intact. Typically, if you want to reopen the action in this spot, you know, a raise to about 500,000 might be close to the minimum you would consider. And I think he has a super tough spot, Wichter had, between raising and calling. Um, and I think what he did is he kind of middled it. He says, I'll raise, but I'll raise smaller. And now Patrick can really just drop the hammer and trying to decide what size do we want to do here. He still has slight concerns. His man could have pocket kings or pocket nines. Both are going to play like this frequently. Um, so, you know, I don't think we're going to see an all-in from Patrick per se. But put me down for 1.55. 1 1.3, 1 right. the declaration in the vicinity. And now this is a very gross feeling for Malinowski. We don't generally anticipate this response. The line that Patrick took, a defense, then just check called the 110. Wow, wow. Check, great check, fold check. by Wichter. Show the buff. It's very great nice fold. buff. <laughs> Seven, eight? <laughs> Faradin potentially forgetting the flop. Uh, it was a nine high straight on the end if it was seven, eight. You know, yeah. I see King two, five, flop, not too yes, many. Yeah. yeah. Maybe some seven, eight of clubs yeah. specifically. Like the, In any hand, case, we flip like it back over to the other feature as the chip leader grows stronger. Now, Rabichow. Victor's going to be thrilled when he sees that but one because that oh, could yeah. have been his stack. Not to be overlooked is Wasn't much more. Malinowski, yeah. who really didn't chew on it. Yeah. Tricky play can really, really I mean, I hurt. I think it's so satisfying when you get your man to barrel off with some light bluff. Pulling, but but like I think what we saw there was an example <laughs> of Patrick potentially missed oh. about $3 million in chips by missing that check raise. That's really, really painful. That's Pipped the kind of thing that catapults you. Is Pantling, you're absolutely right about that. 
JNT closing the action from the big as a third participant on a queen jack three board. Top two against top pair. The problem self evident for Pantling. And flatting queen 10 on the button against this early raise from Rabbit Chow, these are the th situations that we sometimes encounter. Interesting decision for Kevin on the one hand, one of the best hands to see bet here because the man on the button shouldn't have as many bets as we're blocking top pair and second pair. Um, but at the same time, you do have Andrew Pantling on the button with that incredibly wide range. A check might garner a bet from five, seven of hearts perhaps. In this case, of course, with queen 10, probably either option works well. Facing a raise. A very small raise. Here's a spot where most players are playing close to no raise, given that Jean Noel is yet to really say anything about his hand, probably checking his entire range on this flop. So JNT still could have had the queen jack, pocket threes, and whatnot. Andrew has very little in the array of pocket jacks or pocket queens in this spot. His two pairs are limited to queen jack, uh, as don't anticipate any jack three suited or queen three suited there. So playing a raise is really difficult when Kevin's uncapped and you've got Wow, and he sees the problem. Yeah, Pantling stepped into a fresh pile of you-know-what. Big fold. Just lets it go. A respectful release there from Pantling. And I do want to say this. If we're going to have that line in us, I think it is incumbent upon us to have the responsible release there in the face of the three bet. We yes. can't just suddenly go sailing off you know, with queen 10 kicker and really <laughs> I do absolutely nothing like more. <laughs> Pantling's a sharp guy. He understands that these guys are processing how many really hands he's playing. Um, so. <laughs> and he probably imagines that Kevin is playing pure value on that re-raise, thinking that, look, Andrew's not going away if he has a piece. He's not going away with a 9-10 with diamonds, etc. That 10 of diamonds that Andrew holds there blocks a lot of the potential bluffs. If Kevin is bluffing, we expect maybe an ace-10 of diamonds, something that's going to get all in. That's probably what you'd really get for it. Great fold from Andrew. Still a very healthy pickup for Kevin, who's really sound like such a bargain starting to approach the stack he had like before doubling up Mario. Just be stopped before the <laughs> transaction ever happened. <laughs> that was a nice pickup without having to go any further in the pot, although like deeper into the streets, the yeah, yeah. Chow was ready to go with <laughs> top two. Mosbach ready to dance. Jack eight suited, dominated by Pantling. And when these high V pip characters sort of have this wet blanket effect. Wait. Things Ooh. can be a bit discombobulating. And now the two queens for JNT just rips 2.1. Teppy. Easy release in both parties. And this is kind of one of those spots where, you know, some tutelage for JNT would allow him to find other sizes. Sure, if he wants to play some bluffs there, he can find a squeeze. Uh, if he wants to play pure value, then maybe shove is best. Fair enough. See our dealer, Alex, one of the newer arrivals. Trying Super High Roller Series. Gave us kind of a funny moment when Aram Oganyan was three-handed at his final table earlier here at the series and took a very open interest. <laughs> <laughs> it was not what we would have anticipated. That's hilarious. Yeah, maybe not so much for her, obviously, <laughs> but uh, she dealt with it very gracefully and... Uh, and she deals well. Like she all also of our warded do. off Nacho advances very uh, yeah, but, humorously. You know, listen, you know, Nacho, he's, he's going to put some lines in the water. He's a fisherman. <laughs> <laughs> Pantling fishing with 7 6 off from the hijack as you really begin to see the scope of holdings that he's willing to dance with. Flops himself a gut shot straight draw. Rabbit Chow. Defend it. And these barrels just come in so hot. 
175 without hesitation. On the larger side for a texture where, you know, paneling could find a lot of checks as far as ace high flops go, the ace high wheel boards tend not to be so good for the openers as their bluffs often being broadways. Uh, they're pretty airy and you're going to have trouble continuing. Certainly the seven six a little bit different, but Kevin can flop a lot of two pairs and certainly has a lot of gutties on this flop. Board pairing ace on the turn, and let's see whether or not Pantling continues to tell a story. No. Pauses. And by the way, that doesn't necessarily Ooh. remove the ace from his range as he binks the six, and one wonders whether or not value pursuits might be upon him or whether or not Rabichow would activate. It does seem like King-Queen has some showdown, though. Yeah, I think, you know, Kevin's got the 5x bluffs and the 2x bluffs. Certainly some of those 5x in the form of 5-7 and 5-6 have, you know, bumped that King-Queen down in his range. But yeah, he checks yes. beating all the broadways. Pantling with the full shutdown there, Rabichow. mindful of maybe some middle-y pairs. Not sure. Can't be happy to see that one. Oh, yeah, he might have been able to carve some value out of Rabbit Chow there. Oh, yeah. No, I was thinking, Kevin, when you're... Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, forgive me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that maybe he could have... Andrew got bailed out. Taking that one down with a different line. Hindsight always twenty twenty out there. Yeah, not sure a bluff would have worked, but maybe 10% chance. A lot of praise coming down from the YouTube chat, by the way, for Mr. Jaffe, whose commentary is being met with quite a bit of delight. So obviously feeling quite fortunate to have you in the cockpit here for this 100K main event as we work our way down to what I'm told will be 16 players, perhaps even a deeper run than that as 12 levels, I believe, is what we're targeting to complete here today. It is a three-day event. This is day two. Max Late Ranch was at the top of the morning. 25 bigs was available to anybody that wanted to plunk down the 100. Very the small three bet from JNT. Likes the Just 2x. Clicky. Not going to lose Andrew. Pull some whites back, put some whites in. Over under 24 seconds for this hand post flop. <laughs> These really are the two that play with the most pace. And two clubs, two overs, and the gut shot versus top pair. And that top pair comes in the form of the very relevant eight of clubs. The over's so looking good. 375, snap barrel here after the pantling check. Another 750 into the middle. Because the queen does not connect with either queen. party. There it is. Tapi. Tough spot for hand. Wow. Immediate fold. That was barely over 24 seconds. I think we were in the 35 zone. That flop. <laughs> Yeah, well, yeah, here's yeah. the interesting thing, you know, there might be some presumptions that only with a hand JNT behaves in this mm -hmm. manner, and obviously Pantling's perceptions are that. The sizing has a bit to do with folding the ace-8, yeah, not to sure. mention the arrival of the queen. But as we saw, the combo draw, the value of the equity, things not lost on JNT as he plows and takes there, and we flip it over to the other feature where we find the 5-6 offsuit of Theologus looking for a cheap peek. I Limping. think if Andrew was more of a Triton regular, he might be familiar with JNT having a lot of pocket fours, pocket sixes in those spots, and, you know, taking a little longer to consider. Uh, I think it's a very tricky spot he had there, but certainly, um, you know, he just comes out for the big events. I'm not sure how many hands he's played against JNT, and it's easy to imagine that JNT might be nitty. Elton checked back from the big. Theologus looking up at the bad side of the open ender. Eight. And he just spirals. Spoken like a true nit there, Ali. The bad side of the open ender. Come <laughs> on, we've got an open ender. <laughs> Enough to lead. Some back doors for Elton facing just one big blind. Pretty standard continue. A 
like call. So, just going to peel is Elton. And he does pick up a gutter on the turn. Didn't find the spade that he liked and saw. It. This could get spicy. The jack would have been a pleasant one, too. 400 out there. Let's see. Theologus. The nine less pleasant now for obvious reasons for Alex. Very uncomfortable spot for Alex. On the one hand, you're seeing, you know, we've got six high, we do have an open ender, but at the other end of the spectrum, just while we're holding a six and a five in our hand, that 10 is looking particularly bad for how we match up against the guy who just called, albeit a single big blind in position. Elton working probably with all 16 combinations of jack nine. Looks like a pretty standard check back. Love Elton pouncing on this. Could be met with a check raise, though. I almost tried betting 60 on mm -hmm. the flop, and then I realized, no, 60 doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Has to be more. Elton's yeah. look good, and I'll tell you what, when we're feeling confident out there, it does seem as though those floats, those peels come in with greater ease. You know, we don't sense that things are going to be too convoluted for us, and from cents to dollars, if you want to earn some, hitching your wagon to some horses here at the Triton Super High Roller Series, the place to do it is at our exclusive staking partners over at Poker Stake. Pay them a visit at PokerStake.com and go on and buy a piece without any rake, any transaction fees, and with guaranteed winnings. Why else would you seek to do so anywhere else? PokerStake.com. Flipping it back over to the other feature, one in progress. The opener, Rabichow, cut off, Jack-10, a flat from Mosbach, and Pantling says, okay, amigos. Got everything covered from eight to queen. 6.45 in the middle. Certainly some interfering textures not could arrive. Bad. This is not among them, ace, king, deuce. Antling is checked. Broadway gutter for Rabbit Chow. Yeah, very reasonable spot for Kevin to find some continues. Mario's got a lot of hands like the one he's holding, mid pocket pairs. Does go for check. Mario still could have the winner with the eights, as we see he does in this moment. Not anymore. Ten on the turn as Rabichow declined to see bet. Let's see. One could understand. Continued caution. Yeah, seems reasonable to play a check and then decide whether he wants to play check raise, check call, or check fold, depending on what he sees out of Mario and Andrew. There it is like these spots where everything's on the table. Mario's hand shrinks up here where he no longer, you know, sees himself as winning very often by checking down and decides to start stabbing. And what I love about the modern game is that this stab, despite being a position bet on the turn after another round of checks in front of him, doesn't have to be light. Mm -hmm. We've evolved to a place where a lot of times on the turn is where we want to get busy. Yeah, Mario can have ace-10, queen-jack, um, king-10. Still plenty of value. Maybe not pocket twos, certainly not ace-king, but... Kevin goes for call. Definitely had a couple of possibilities there, and I think correctly identifying that Mario has enough bluffs here that we can just play call. So keeping an eye on Mosbach is Rabichow, a very seemingly irrelevant river. 
Yeah, interesting as Mario, you know, a few of the bluffs might be coming from threes, fours, fives. Those are some of the familiar hands that Mario uh, would have either bluffed, potentially flop, potentially turn. So not a pure brick. There's almost nothing that I'd call a pure brick at this point, maybe a nine. Tough decision for Mario. Yeah, look at him find the courage to barrel 900. This is not a petite fillet as the butcher shop is open. So Kevin's got a real interesting spot here. I'm not sure his hand bluff catches much worse than a hand like ace-5 suited from the perspective that he does block the queen-jack and he does block the ace-10 and king-10. He blocks, mm, not the king-10, there's no king-10 diamonds. Uh, it's already blocked by the king of diamonds. But he does block ace-10, does block queen-jack. Very close spot, very uh, understandable fold though. I think that was some fucking bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> I think Brewer yeah, I correctly like identifies. He's on it. <laughs> He's all over Mario. <laughs> and he said sevens, by the way. Yep. No way, no yeah. <laughs> the bluffs are coming in from pocket pairs there, uh, as Chris knows. Mario looked like he wanted to reveal how, uh, how close Chris was. Honest guy. Mario told me the other day he's never lied about a poker hand, that, that he only tells huge. the truth. Okay, but he did lie about never lying about a <laughs> poker hand. I can tell you that much. He's got me sold. I, I buy it. Reminds me of that old adage, how do you know when a poker player is lying? His lips are moving. So you would have called the check from suited. <laughs> Brutal. Brutal. Here on the stream tables in particular, <laughs> Nick really loves the guys that will still go hard at the, at the fib. That's like the only time I'll lie at the poker table is when I think it's going to go on the stream, and I think it's really fun. Yeah, that's a good point. And just come with like the it's most absurd. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So like, I don't do aces. I do it. <laughs> like, what? You'll see in an hour. Like, what do you want? I was like, what should I bluff there? I'm not bluffing Queen Tender. <laughs> Just a gaze, though. <laughs> not even check 10. Sorry. The talk of the table, I think, about whether or not Kevin, had he bluff caught with Jack 10, might have found himself in the awful situation of seeing a Queen 10. Mario says, no, that would not be the case. 10 cents. The hard way for Pantling, played as a limp from the small. Let's see if Jack-6 has any ideas here. No. Brewer checking back. Chris rightfully imagining that Andrew is folding no better hand to, than Jack-6 to a raise. Oh, and a five in the window, <laughs> coupled with a seven and a four. Look at Pantling wasting no time, leading out unafraid to lose his customer with middle set. and. Do you think in terms of ranging our opponent, we sort of remove hands this strong as the preflop limp and lead tandem? No, I think that's possible. Along with, you know, interesting on a board like this, there's still straights available too. So, you know, while there's a wide variety of holdings in Andrew's range, I don't think Chris discounts the possibility of a set. Obviously, he peels for the 100 dimes with the open ender and now passing. Sneaky check. Naughty thoughts. Open ender and a heart for Chris. I think this may say something about how he approaches Andrew. If he does find the check, this might be a case of under bluffing. Full 40? Does not. Full pot. A couple of lookovers from Andrew. Now, in the face of full pot, with the dampness out there, is the raise compulsory at this stage? I don't think it is. I think he can play call. I think he knows that Chris Brewer is capable of bluffing it off. And it's really tough to get called even just by an ace if he does play a raise. Unfortunate part is he is going to let Chris realize a lot of equity if he plays call. Yeah. First time Andrew slowed down, take note. Oh, no. Goes for it. Just jams it, and obviously that's a deflating. Yeah, Chris can't be thrilled about burning his equity, but at the same time, you know, uh, 
you have to imagine that money was sailing in on a bunch of different rivers and uh, it might have just saved his tournament. By the way, not for the faint of heart, going hard at Andrew Pantling, as Chris did there in the turn. But as you mentioned, if he didn't, it might have been a case of under bluffing. As we get a last look at the counts here, Brewer descending down to the bottom of this particular table. One of just three that remain in this 100K main. Blinds will be headed upstairs as the players are headed to a scheduled break. Pantling up top alongside JNT. And with that, we welcome you back to the desk here in Jeju, Alina Jha, Jonathan Jaffe, who is unfortunately gonna be bidding us adieu. However, we will bring you the stylings of Czar Brian Rass, so obviously not too much to be disappointed about. Always a pleasure to have you in here there. Any final thoughts in terms of what we kind of witnessed there? Any particular hand that you felt like was coolest of the ones that we soaked up? Hmm. I have a very short memory, so I've forgotten, but it was good action. I'm looking forward to seeing the Big Stacks clash. I'm going to be watching the stream upstairs. You know, I've heard that in terms of being a poker player, having the memory of a goldfish can be very good. We don't want to necessarily hang on to any of the trauma that takes place out there, a little of which we observed in that frame. So then, just a few minutes' time, we're going to come back here and wind down the night with one final frame. Brian Rast in for Jonathan Jaffe, as always, my friend. Thank you for joining us, and we will see you shortly. Take your game to the next level with GTO Wizard. Practice against GTO on all your devices. Study any situation using our revolutionary AI-powered solver. Upload your hand histories to uncover your biggest leaks. We have hundreds of hours of coaching from top pros, cutting edge theory articles, and custom study plans to help guide your poker journey. GTO Wizard, the number one app for poker players. Introducing the all-new BetACR.eu, the premier destination for sports enthusiasts. What sets BetACR.eu apart is our exclusive offering of live-action prediction options on the Triton Series. Experience the excitement as you predict the action while watching your favorite players live. But that's not all. By opening your account now, you can take advantage of our incredible offer. Receive a generous 15% free play on your first top-up, up, up to $250. Become a part of betacr.eu and elevate your live sports engagement experience.
Just seize the wonder. Jeju Shinwa World. Pots in position with that bigger stack. And I'm sure he knows it's pretty loose and uh, just looking to see what he can do post flop. Yeah, I was going to say, might that flat be in part responsible here for the Malinowski activation out of the cutoff? Ace five suited. We know the affinity the Silicon Overlords, as Rast likes to put it, have for this particular combination. Yeah, Risky you don't business. see Ace five suited hit the muck yeah. without taking a shot first. It does feel very much like that these days. And on the topic of shots, oh. let's see if an even larger bullet will be fired back across toward the Polish salvo. Money? Yep. Very good. Very good. Surely those queens go in, but uh, you can imagine the spot he could find himself with a hand like tens. So this is for an extra 605. The intentions for Malinowski were not to find himself in a situation such as this. And yet here we are. Too much invested to step away? Chips are pretty valuable at this point. I think I think you probably fold. But it's an absolutely brutal spot for Wichter. Mm -hmm. Wow. You should try that. What is that? That's good. Good one. He knows it. Good. Very good. Sean Winter's eating something real tasty. Any way we can get the camera to flash over to Winter? I want to see what he's eating. Well, I'm sure in due time, but obviously the story for the moment is this confrontation. Was it? Yeah, I did. Between <laughs> Chan. <laughs> 20 bigs, right? Huh? 20 bigs. I think so, yeah. You had a lot of short stack experience. <laughs> L less. Charney. You were short for a while. And kind Winter. of. Uh, not really. Was I? Nothing crazy, but. No, not Boy, the discomfort is very palpable. Uh, I'm not very good short stack. Yeah, these spots are difficult. It's not <laughs> final table, I see him. There he goes, going for it. Yeah, makes the call and does have that one over card along with diamonds working. Just look at how much equity that combination has against these two queens. It is a straight three to two. Yeah. Or two to one, forgive me. At ace four. Math is hard. Not good news for you. <laughs> Here we go. Two oh, and a half million oh, chip oh, pot, oh, and oh the ace, God, ace finds four. the window. Told you this was the lucky seat. So deflating for Chan, Jonathan. You've been on the receiving end of this. Not over yet, of course, but the lack of a club nope. is an issue, and the lack of a queen as well turns, on the it. turn. Two outs once, not where could. we want to find ourselves. Like queen and then an ace. We fought so <laughs> hard across two long days, and then it comes down to just one hand where 66% of the time those queens are supposed to haul in this two and a half million. Instead, they find their way out the door as Malinowski ascends. Yeah, that's painful. Looks worth No, I mean, it's no. just, that's the look that from here forward. Five years minimum. Earlier during the festival, I suggested that if I ever found myself tied to a railroad track by a bad guy, wow. I could see him coming over, uh, you know, with a freshly crafted old fashioned as well, and uh, you know, rescuing me. Yeah, I like the cartoon reference from like the least cartoonish personality, but it, it's just a perfect contrast. Oh, it's so great. Also great, ace queen suited, under the gun. Joey Weissman, the American, taking it upstairs. Yeah, good to see Joey out here. He's a great player. Uh, this is his first Triton, right? Joey's first Triton indeed, and he's nice. just notched his first cash, having gone 0 for 6 to this point. This is the one for the first cash. And note the other ace queen for Ken Tong rips it. Just another 470 to go. Wow. Chidwick awakens to two jacks. So jacks are getting sent in here, but you know, what's he doing with tens? Nines seem like they're hitting the muck. <coughs> Probably have to go with tens too. So conclusions foregone with this kit in 620? Yeah. 
even though it would be just a very modest extra 30k, is there nuance to just flatting Ken versus putting all of it in? Um, probably is. Uh, wait, no, because it's just, I don't think there's going to be a Weissman covers, there. of course. Yeah. 590? It does go for the call. Uh, it's yeah. my turn. Yep. Oh, sorry. Just asking. It's your turn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, earlier at the desk to start the day, Nick Schulman touched upon the fact that Matthias Eibinger is sneaky funny out there with oh, a yeah. tremendously dry wit. Oh, yeah. Matthias gets uh, a laugh out of me almost every time I'm at his table. Love that. Nothing funny about this spot here for Weissman, however, as the flat from Chidwick reads very strong. You know another German sneaky funny? Christoph. Christoph Vogelsang. Christoph gets laughs out of me every trip. Okay. Yep. Now, is it the intentional funny? It's I intentional. Find... It's intentional, yeah. Patrick Antonius to me is hilarious, but mm -hmm. he's not always trying to be funny. That's, he just yes. entertains me. That's he's just true. got something comedic about his affect. Yeah, but and the voice, too. Yeah, of course. Oh, and look at this. The ace-queen suited, ushered out of there. So Ken Tong, left alone, has the covered stack up against two jacks with two of his outs into the bin already in a 1.4 plus pot. Sorry? I had one. I folded a jack though. 7 6 3. Absent are the ace and the queen. They remain that way as the field goal comes in on the turn. Not lost on Tong. And ace and queen free are the river. And that'll do it for Hong Kong's Ken Tong. Eliminated. Am I do I owe? One of the top players in the field, getting up to 25 bigs. Yeah, let's not sleep on that. Really? Ken, by the way, this is third yeah. cash yeah, in four right? attempts. He had an eighth in oh. the 15K 8-max to start this festival. This 50K turbo bounty won by Dan Smith. The green one. He notched a 17th place finish the green one. here at his second ever Triton Festival. Not Dello, mm -hmm. Monte Carlo, just played the Invitational for 200K and now has worked his way here to South Korea to hop into this 100K main and has finally broken the seal. Comes out for the big boys, and that 10-7 suited raise, I mean, that was just savage. That was like Dur 2010 type stuff. Yeah. Um, you're just like, oh, you're a pip ahead of me? I'll just take this hand that's a standard call and just raise. Yeah. Some embrace the variance. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Andrew does not seem worried about missing a pay jump. <laughs> Well put, and Paulius does not seem worried about his open as he jams King Jack from the button over the top. Five. Yeah, it's scary jamming a hand like King Jack against uh, a dude like Andrew because he's just not worried about ICM. So if he thinks it's you know making chips, I feel like he's probably going to call. That said, his cutoff opening range may include five three suited. So at the same time, Fair. jamming King Jacko, you know, is going to get some folds. Just for chips seems sound, seems reasonable, and it doesn't seem behind. It is three to two dog to the eight six deuce board, paint free. Apparently. Holds. My water, right? Oh. Will it be showers for uh, Paulius? So. Yeah, the turn water. doesn't help. Uh. Now he's got six outs once. No, sir. No king, no jack, and no further participation here in the 100K main for Pauly V. That's at five. Five people. Did pick up. A title. Would have been a good trick. Oh, I sip some Sean chips is and a legend in the troll. <laughs> <laughs> the art of the troll. Oof. Let's see what Andrew's going to open under the. What? A fold? Okay, 6 3 0. Oh. Hmm? Both have big hands. It's like, did he even raise? Moment of truth for Patrick. No, maybe. quick fold. I wonder if it was uh, 8 5 suited. Maybe the salmon's getting cold. <laughs> Unclear. We only catch him at these feature tables, Jaffe, but you're out there at outer tables with the dude. He really, Great. truly 
He's uh, just on a continuous is... ingestion program. Yes. Yes. Resistance. Orders two meals at a time usually. Oh no. Uh, I'll, put oh. The Sorry, I'll put the calorie. Oh, oh. Okay. He did say raise two. He said raise to sixty. So I think raise is the first word. Right. So yeah, he's allowed he's to put in the min. It is interesting spot going into an eleven big blind stack and an eight big blind stack. Winter having you know eleven big blinds essentially being twenty two. Oh. He jams the nines, now SD. Ace five off suit, doesn't feel like the spot. Yeah, Sean took our uh, spot. Wow, he goes with it. I think he did not watch the 150K final table. This is very surprising, out of Wang. And welcome back to continuing coverage of the $100,000 main event, day two of three, whittling our way down to a final table. Is yours truly, Ali Najad, alongside the Tsar Brian Rast, back in here at the desk after a short hiatus for Jonathan Jaffe. And I understand you were actually out listening to the stream with Jaffe in there for the bulk of that frame. Yeah, no, I, um, listen, I come here to learn and work on my game and having a pro who actually was playing in the very tournament that he came in to guest commentate for, you know, uh, I did a few things, but then was listening to the stream while I was gone. And, uh, you know, my dream, hopefully we can do it for the next stop is to get like a third mic set up so that when we're in, when we're in here, you and I can kind of tag team it and, uh, you know, you can do your thing. I step back a little bit, but get to ask a few questions, you know, hopefully, good questions here to learn uh, what he thinks about what's going on. Well, as we wind things down over here, obviously those of you streaming us out there, don't hesitate to ask some questions of your own. We'll do our best to hop on them as Rast is obviously one of the sharper minds out there as well. Hence your presence over here. And on the topic of presences, Patrick Antonius diving into the Triton Poker Plus app continues to be a presence at the top of the leaderboard. Five and a half million at present, having put some runway between himself and the emergent second place stack of Justin Saliba. Igor Yaroshevsky in third, Malinowski in fourth, and JNT right there in the top five in a very pro-heavy field. Not to be overlooked, of course, Andrew Pantling. And if you were watching that frame, Rast, you know that is a man that needs to have an eye kept on him. That much we know. Yeah, he was very active in there playing some pots. I mean, uh, JNT was actually... You know, I was watching. He was in a number of pots. With Pantling on yeah. an occasion as well. Jamming that Jack-10 suited. Interesting development there. And a big collision could certainly be upon us as we flip it back into the arena for the resumption of play. Lines of 50 and 100,000. 100K big blind anti-dilution across the board. And JNT will be neck and neck with Pantling. Both of them chip leading the blue table. Saliba standing slightly alone. Yaroshevsky yeah, on his heels. And the, blue a nice table, gap for the blue table strikes me as the one doesn't have like a chip leader. Right? There were three guys up Correct. top who were all close. Whereas the other two tables have a have someone in front, someone who's kind of uh, running the show in terms of a chip lead. Yep. That was the thing that stood out to me the most out of that table, the chip distribution. And the blue table, uh, that's the blue blue table, one of our two feature tables. It, on the app, it'll be blue. So that'll be one of the tables that we're watching. Is that table right there with, it looks like three guys who are all over three million. Pantling, Mosbuck, and JNT. It's the one we've got our eyes on right now as Pantling opens from the button with very legitimate pair of tens. No takers. JNT with a tight fold there in the big blind. The queen suited three queen. suited. Yeah. yeah. To the beat of his own drum. That's how JNT marches. He you know, did finish second in the main event out in London. Tim Adams actually two outed him. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. I remember hearing this. Yeah, pair over pair. Mm -hmm. You know, I, there was a hand that he played that stood out to me a little bit that I remember from uh, when you, you guys were just in the booth here and I had stepped out. I think he had queen eight and ended up making a full house against Pantling with right. Jack 3 and then he like uh led river after check check turn small with I queen's thought. full but very small yeah but it's it's a very interesting kind of uh you know it shows that he's 
very aware of what's going on. He has like the different bet sizings and I thought it was a pretty interesting spot to lead his hand because he might induce some bluffs, right? From the from that check back spot. Mm -hmm. Like kind of encourage somebody to try to bluff him. I think that'll happen more than you get back value raised there after check back turn. But uh yeah, I don't know. I thought that play was kind of good actually. Four seventy five. Pantling. Not so good seven four of hearts, but he's never one to shy away from a fight. Brewer taking it to him for four seventy five here. You might recall Brewer went full pot with an unrealized open ender on the turn up against a set of fives on the flop for Pantling, blind versus blind. That was an expensive experience for Chris, who does claw it back. No, Pantling doesn't want any further involvement for the extra 275. And I touched on this concept, and curious your thoughts on it, Ras, but if you're going to be as frisky as Pantling is and do some of these unconventional things, you do need to have some of the discipline then to not end up in just really ridiculous spots. You know, for example, perhaps one looks at the extra 275 with the seven to four hearts. I don't know if that's the example to focus upon, but you need to balance sort of that activity level with, you know, okay, I know when to step away. I'm not just gonna all of a sudden go blasting into orbit you know, in a bad spot. Certainly. And I think if you want to actually win with that style, you also need to have a, a good feel for these bizarre spots you're going to find yourself in. So, for example, let's say you're opening more than your fair share of pots, and you're here with some really good players who are going to pick up on that fact and start three-betting you a bit more. It'd be nice to, I don't know, get a good feel for some of those spots and know when to let go and be disciplined, like you said, or maybe when to come back over the top. Well, over the top is where John Norel Torel is going with Ace King on the button. One brewing. We've got Barley and Hops in the cauldron. Pantling with a couple of jacks. He is going to jam. JNT announces call. All of a sudden, we've got millions in the middle here. Relief, of course, not to be up against Queens Plus, but the threat quite clear. 6.75 million chip pot. This would be for the chip lead, Rasty. Yeah, this is a massive pseudo flip. I mean, it's a flip, but I mean, we're talking 14% edge for jacks. 10, 3, 3, and a couple of spades, and now the edge grows greater. Can't make Broadway, because the three's paired, but yeah, can make backdoor spades. Two immediate overs as well, as the spade does roll off. Extra outs to fade for Pantling, and might it all be coming together for JNT. He's the covered stack. d Miking. let's not get hasty as the king of clubs. Finds its way. Yeah, yeah. To the board. Now, I was under the impression that Pantling was the covering stack here, Rasty. We're going to do a little accounting as apparently they are close. Everybody joking with JNT about the expert move of standing up and taking off your microphone when cards were yet to be put down. There's a lot of uh, reverse juju superstition about this procedure. You know, some, some people call it the, the pre-stand-up, where you're standing up while there's still cards. And this superstition that maybe it makes you more likely to win on the end, and, theref and therefore it, it's bad form versus your opponent. One, two, three, four, six, well, eight, it's bad, but it could be worse for Pantling, as officially he will have 275,000 left. He was indeed the covering stack. As we take a moment to remind you to download the Triton Poker Plus app today, it truly is the only way to soak up any Triton Super High Roller Series, any given event, so robust. Scan that QR code there on your screen. And boy, that is uh, That's a huge pot. That's a big wound. Yeah, I just want to give you guys at home this idea that poker's a... A rich game full of its own traditions and quirky 
themes, superstitions that people, they might not even believe it. I doubt most of these players do believe it, but it's just practiced and discussed. And well, looks like we've got another collision here. Let me bring you up to speed. This is blind versus blind. Pre-flop jam from Malinowski with ace jack. Kulev woke up with eights. Board came five, five, six. Turn four, so a gutter plus the two outs, but the river was a queen. And the ace jack falls as what appears to be the covering stack ever so slightly. We well, he's still got some black oh, chips. Oh, he does. Looks okay. Like. Yeah, but yeah, one point nine left big for big chunk of of his chips. Malinowski, let's call it just under half of his stack, as he came in with three five. And for Kulev, a, a nice double, of course, and a nice watch for Matthias Eibinger. Don't need to tell you where he got it. Our partners over at Jacob and Co. They don't sell you that one. The Epic X collab only goes to main event winners. Another one will be awarded to whomever it is that claims the title in this one here tomorrow. Baby suited ace activates JNT. Rep Chow. 25 blinds is out of position, but a nice playable hand. Yeah, flat seems reasonable. He wants to take this one post-flop. Could, this is a dicey hand to flat for 2.5, but could he get bluffy with it? I mean, there is 700,000 out there. Oh, you know, he's got ideas like your own. Does Mosbach out of the big blind with ace, six, off suit, three betting to 700,000, squeezing Rabbit Chow and asking JNT a question. Let's see what kind of answer the I mean, newly minted overall chip leader is going to have in store. Chip leader with a suited wheel ace. Very comfy, just four bet jam. But he doesn't take the spot. Turn Rabichow's queen 10 suited shrivels up and goes into the bin. So nice activation there from Mario Mosbach, Rasty. Massive pickup with not a very good hand. I mean, 700,000 coming his way. His red line shooting upwards. That's online yeah, player lingo, lingo for. Money fast. you've won without a yeah, showdown. I think so, yeah. Mm. Oh, we're, we're no, we're the ones the behind. Red line. Yeah. I like it. I mean, we just had the big all in. I thought we oh, were yeah. talking yeah. about a tachometer, given my affinity for the automotive sports. Red line. But uh, <laughs> I see what you're saying. Like it's just going boom, boom, I guess it oh, I think sort everyone's. of works yeah. like that, too, because the, he was definitely speeding. Does make Google play <laughs> you don't have a red line anymore, Rasty. You've become a Tesla man. Yeah, true. True for quite a few years now. Yeah, no more burning of the dinosaur goo for Rasty, but LOL gas for Pantling. Is that your license plate, by the way? No, but oh, it should uh, be. It. That's exactly what. Uh, oh, that joke has been made. Rasty, JNT naughtiness afoot as he flats and solver bait enters the equation for Mosbach, who just activated moments ago profitably. Might he have another idea? Pantling, of course, all in. So that does change things a touch. Yeah, but if he knocks JNT out. But yeah, this is all this is quite reasonable here. To <laughs> look at Ibinger. Yeah, he's gonna get to C three here with ten nine off. He's certainly gonna call the one seventy five. I mean the price is also right. Yeah. Call it six to one on your money. It's actually kind of 
I mean, for a hand that's not that good, it's it's a pretty decent hand in this spot, actually. Like, you'd rather have this than, like, king's six off or something. Does he want to be a co-conspirator in the Let's Shower Andrew Pantling operation? I mean, we're still in the part of the tournament where you should be gambling for chips. That fold is a little too tight for my taste. Well, Matias, obviously, one of the better to ever do it. No question about that. Would have had himself second pair and some issues. The reasons are clear. JNT lurks with the two kings. A gutter for Pantling. He's going to get two free pulls at it. And from Osbach, some back doors, but 400 into a dry side. That'll dispatch him. On their backs they go, and might JNT be ready to finish what he started with ace-king against jacks moments ago, now king-king against jack-8, a nine. The only parachute for Pantling. As his stack careens toward earth. Losing further altitude. And a splashdown. J and T came for the rest. What do you that he did. No mercy, by the way, in the form of that flat. As Pantling's 20th place finish will yield him the first of the $234,000 payouts. Two more remain before we take the hop up to 266. <laughs> Don't look now, Rast. JNT's almost two million up on Antonius in the lead here. Rest, I'm not losing my mind, right? You hear that. Now it just went away, of course, the minute I said something. I I, I did, yeah. Okay, thank that you shot, that. You really could have messed with me there, by the way. That's This is how I know. That was a, a nice guy. dual shot of, well, Brewer came back in, but for a while it was just JNT with stacks of chips and Seth with a short stack, but hanging on. Seth Davies, 13 blinds. Ready to do some damage. And Rabichow coming in with a modest hand. Queen seven suited from the cutoff. But raising into some short stacks. Some stacks that might be feeling some ICM pressure. I think you might call. He might shove. Yeah, he's going with shove. Which 1.2. Oh, sorry, he was the small blind. I thought he was the big blind for a second. No, heavy yeah. right now. that was a declaration just given his depth. I really cranked yeah. that fog. One that <laughs> was not indulged in. You think we just look like incredible on stream right now? <laughs> they should put some caffeine in that fog. I guess nice. Yeah, excuse me, from the small blind, I think he's just always jamming that. Just playing in the tundra. Yeah, <laughs> frozen in tundra. Uh. gas in the south. <laughs> I think they got like a 24 hour quota. Now a 10-9 suited. Available as an open from the button for Ivinger. I imagine he's going to have some different feelings about it than he did in that other pot with 10-9 off. Yeah, and he's coming with limp. Oh. 
deciding to keep the pot smaller, SPR higher, being in position. And not going to be a flop that's good for an Ibinger here. Yeah, up against JNT's top pair. After the defense, Frenchman comes with a check. Monotone texture, second pair for Ibinger. Whispers. Wow, and JNT snap check raises this. Well, while that one develops, we've got another one on our hands. It looks like the Bulgarians have collided. Kulev, Button, Jam, Mustafov making the call. It is A6 suited for Kulev, A10 for Mustafov. The paired flop, a lot of opportunity here for Kulev. He is the covering stack. And Fahadine will submit tokens for replication. Are bigger than yeah. Yeah. Just one. Mm. 1 Roughly 1.9. The balance transfer. Tokens for replication, it sounds like. <laughs> Crypto a Streets. A sci fi movie. No, it's like Blade Runner 2025. <laughs> Submit the tokens <laughs> for replication. I always feel like it's the uh, the tokenomics. I hear that a lot. The tokenomics. These crypto guys. These crypto guys, Rasty. Those crypto guys, what are they doing? They're printing is what they're doing. All their crazy coins. You know, stay out of the altcoin streets, kids. You know? Ace Jack suited. Hyping are not going to be staying out of any streets from the cutoff here. He takes us up. Ooh, Brewer doesn't seem done with this. I don't think it's going to go well if he continued. Does find the fold. Seth going to de defend this, try to realize some equity. It is one of those spots when you get to these short stacks where you can actually realize some EV. I like his defend. 10-9-3 rainbow board, a gutter for Davies. One of the jacks required. Busy across the way in Ibinger's hand. Action checked over. S seems like an okay spot for Seth. I mean, the jack is like a m money card for him. An ace okay. is obviously a terrible card for him. His range versus Ibinger's, and it improves Ibinger's hand. He's got some clean outs to win. All of his three improves win when he hits them. He might be able to bluff later with a hand that pretty clearly unimproved turns into a bluff. So could be worse. See how he feels about it. Just 100K. 10% of his remaining stack, though. Yeah, this is this is kind of a mandatory call there. Now oh. that's a card that's better for Seth because he can actually have three X and like Ibinger almost can't have a three. I think the only three he's playing is Ace Three suited, and there's two combos of that. Whereas Seth can have a bunch of three X suited hands. So like, this is a pretty good spot to lead, and I think his hand really likes leading because. Queen high is almost certainly not good. So I would not be surprised if he leads here. He, he ends up not leading. So I think Ibinger just checks this card back quite a bit. Like, we're not getting better to fold. The three was a better card for Seth than for us. Thank you. 
So Ivinger does check back. Pot stays static at three quarter million. Unimproved is the queen eight. Now backdoor spades arrive. Yeah, and runouts like these are maybe one of the reasons why you want to lead turn and press the advantage that card gives. I mean, now it gives hands like ace high a chance to call where maybe they fold. And he might not even bluff because of that. We'll see if he ends up bluffing. He does have the queen of spades in his hand. And it would make sense at this point to value bet a lot, like a three, a nine, a ten. And then, I mean, obviously backdoor spades, but that's not that likely. You know, and then there's obviously bluffs like queen high, jack high, eight high. I wouldn't bluff if you somehow had king high like king jack that didn't shove pre, which is dicey. King jack off might just call versus cut off. And Seth gives it up. White flag waved. Ibinger, happy to take the check back. Modest pot collected. Drawing into the wee hours of the night here, local time in Jeju. Ali Najad alongside Brian Raz, day two coverage. Final frame of it, playing down to 16 or 12 complete levels. 1 a.m. local time. Welcome to those of you streaming us on the Triton Poker Plus app, Twitch, or YouTube. We see you in the chat. Let us know where you're streaming from. Feel free to pop in with questions for Rasty. We appreciate your engagement and always appreciate the like and the subscription buttons being mashed as JNT appreciates two red jacks on the button to the tune of 275,000. Queen 8 offsuit for Rabbit Chow. No takers. Definitely one of those times you'd like some action. Raising the button with a hand that strong. But the blinds ain't nothing to sneeze at. Shout out Belgium, Champaign, Illinois, out in the States, Northeast Montana as well. Just waking up to this Triton Super High Roller Series is the U.S. King Five suited bows out and JNT continues to run white hot here. This chip lead, obviously no shame in it has certainly come courtesy of some choice cuts. Mixing up his raise sizing. Jax, I believe it was 275, 275 on, the button. on the button. Now just a min raise, pocket tens, and the cutoff. Ooh. And Seth maybe picked up on that raise size mix up. Now maybe thinks he has some fold equity versus the min raise sizing shoves over the top. Now look at this. Two people with pocket tens. Mosbach, how awkward is it, if at all, off of 3.2? Obviously, I mean, I think you behind us. I think we take this spot. Call. Yeah. And by take, you do mean call, not do anything silly. And comes back around to JNT, by the way, and might he feel like ripping? He's in position. It would be kind of a nice thought, would it not? 
for him to jam the two tens after the Mosbach flat? I mean, you might. Side pot's dry. You might get jacks to fold, maybe. Mm -hmm. I don't think queens are better. Than, I mean, kings and aces obviously aren't. I, queens. And all of that stuff is played as a flat by Mosbach? I see that. I'm not sure. Right. Yeah, right. So this is. I think his decision to call in position here makes a lot of sense. So. The side is dry. The main complete, 2.8 is what Davies is playing for in this queen high rainbow board. Doesn't rate to be the one that's gonna keep him in his seat. Time will tell, of course, with two to come as tens. Both look up at the lone over card. This feels like a board that might get a small bet at some point, but the other players surely won't fold and they likely get to show down with a small side pot. 400's a curious bet. How so? Well, I'm not sure, like, does Mario, maybe it gets ace-jack to fold. Does Mario have, like, king-jack, even king-jack suited? Probably not, right? Hopping the fence there. Curious in terms of what it accomplishes, or for yes. that matter, does not accomplish. I don't know if it accomplishes too much. Maybe the maybe it does get Ace Jack specifically to fold. Maybe not because it's so small. Well, Mossbach did make the call. Now a second overcard arrives. Okay. You see Mario eager to get. Right. A check back, and instead, wow, dine on this milky 500 into the side, sir. Well, this is interesting because this might get tens to fold. Like, what are you beating here? Yeah, if you're Mario and you have tens, that's the feeling, isn't it? You know, yeah, wow, this is sick. <laughs> this yeah. is sick. And how sick is Mario going to be when he realizes that he could have chopped this entire pot potentially? With JNT. Look at that smile. Have you <laughs> He's like, whoa. So I guess JNT just kind of probably had it in him that Mario had like a smaller pair, and I'm just going to charge it, like nines or eights. Well, I'm not sure what the thought was, but whatever it was, it served him well as he continues to accumulate chips. On this occasion, all of the remains of Seth Davies as he is showered. Out in 19th place is Davies. He was the second shortest stack in the room in that moment, Rast. That was kind of a big pot. I mean, don't go on tilt now, Mario. Some beef stew. He's he's at like 10 mil now, <laughs> JNT. Eight he's double man. Saliba. Now then, the Citric Roman Hrabets. Jeju Island known for its tangerines, I believe. Perhaps Roman went off-site to a, a grove of some sort, nabbed himself the, the beanie. I do remember him indulging in local headwear when we were in Vietnam, so perhaps it's somewhat of a thing for him. Mementos, keepsakes. <laughs> it's, the, it's the orange at the top of the beanie, by the way, that really is, is bringing that one home. It's like the old Denver Broncos colors, mm. orange and blue. Yeah, but they didn't have actual fruit attached to their helmets. Oh, no. No, no. Yeah, just the, the, the color theme. That is, that is a slightly absurd beanie. Orange crush. I'm here for it. I just want Roman to know. Love it. You're, you're, we're playing a 100K event out here. You're looking across the way. And some deep ICM spots. Some guy's got an orange attached to his beanie. John Elway is ready to <laughs> launch one. <laughs> launch a nasty bluff. Oh, I love it. I really do. Boys, got a lot of personality on them out here. Sometimes it's easy to forget how GF. And I ran into Ramin uh, at, 
I think just outside the poker room here, and he reminded me that he saw the broadcast and that the invitation was still extended I'm for us to you, come. The man is deadly serious about yeah. hosting us in Baku, Azerbaijan. He's incredibly patriotic. And I've seen the city. Patrick Antonius actually spent some time out there. Yeah. Not necessarily with Ramin, unclear. But he told me that it was a really nice city. They got oil, Rasta. You know, I got that Middle East, the sandbox DNA. Where there is oil, there is cheddar. And where there is cheddar, there is luxury. And where there is luxury, Rast, There's Ali. I'd like to be. Okay. <laughs> no, I like to be. <laughs> and my name is Ali. There, uh oh, beatbox. Let's bring it. Saliba yeah. bringing it, by the way, over the top of Hajiev's King Seven. And into the bin it goes. Saliba, by the way, the man that ousted Paul Pua in this particular event. It was an ace king against ace queen altercation, and it wouldn't necessarily be particularly eventful were it not for the fact that when I ran into boss, he told me that the button failed to move when they played that pot, which means had it moved, it would have been Pua with the ace king on the button and the small blind would have been won over, unclear who that party would have been, uh, and they one. would have held the ace had queen. So just think about that. Pretty messed up little it's spot he beautiful. found himself in there. It wasn't until all the action was complete. This is when ace queen beat ace king. No, the ace king beat the ace oh, queen, okay. but he was the holder of the ace queen in the small but he took the small twice. It oh, was supposed so to be he was his supposed ace king. To, he was supposed to stack Correct. the first in the small blind or Correct. whatever. Correct. Yeah. Pretty sick. Oh yeah, that's that's Very, kind, yeah. that's pretty tilting actually. Yes, he was not. It's like just just a happy if man. procedure was followed correctly. Yeah. You know, I would have doubled up or stacked somebody instead of mm -hmm. getting stacked. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. Pretty clearly, by the way. Ace Queen then for Chidwick. Saliba, one of the big stacks in the room, obviously rode that Pua bust all the way up to 5.2. Cobbling away, but almost a 2 to 1 chip lead. Chidwick for JNT is still in here. We haven't seen him too much. He's just been kind of one of the shorter stacks, never one of the shortest. It feels like, but just kind of hanging around with a below average chip stack for a, a very long time. And let us examine how this festival has gone for Stephen Chidwick. He plays them all, Rasty. 12th yeah. in the 15K 8 max, 35th in the 25K GG Millions, 27th in the 40K Mystery Bounty. Has yet to make a final table drawing live to get there here in the last of our long deck events. And if you want to sharpen your skills and maybe work your way up to the levels that you see on display out there in these fields, well, GTO Wizard is a good place to, sp to start. They help you play optimally. You can even run hands that you've seen here today. Check them out at GTO Wizard. Their user-friendly software provides clear, accurate solutions to poker's most complex scenarios. Start analyzing your hands today at gtowizard.com. Chidwick has over 18 million in winnings at Triton. 18.6 with only one title. That's pretty crazy. I mean, another one of those guys that we kind of touched on, and it's beyond the Triton borders as well. Only three seven-figure scores for Mike Watson throughout the course of his poker career. Not pictured here, but he's got 25 million plus you know, inclusive of his Triton earnings. It's not easy to put those figures together, Rasty, without, no, not at all. you know, some very, very big scores, some outliers. Nothing outlier about King Queen up front. Kravitz takes us up. Now then, Mauricio Salazar. Jack three suited. 33 caches for Chidwick in Triton. He's just in there this man yeah. has a nose for a money and also for some deep deep finishes 
Yeah, I mean, I wonder how high up 18.6 million is on the... All-time list? Because, like, I know one Triton title is, like, there's a lot that have more, but 18.6 has to be pretty high up there. Oh, right. For Chidwick, I mean, yeah. he's one on of the, the total money cashed players it's ever. Over. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just even mean with just within the context of Triton. Understood. Yeah, Chidwick is, like, top five on the all-time money list. Chidwick's nice, yeah. Rast. These things no, are, I, I know are well-known. You know, if he popped up on poker stake, I would be first in line. Like, like listen, Coon, Triton Goat, 26.4 million in Triton earnings with 10 titles. So he has less than 6 million more in earnings. That number's about to go down because Chidwick's cashing in this. Mm -hmm. But with like nine more different entire, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so yeah. Chidwick's just been cashing. If I'm not mistaken, the loan title did come in the form of a main event victory. It was short deck. Yeah. In short deck. Okay. All the way back where? Yeah, like Ivy, for example. Madrid, the 100K. Nine, not even 10 million in earnings, but five titles. Yeah. So, Ch I mean, Chidwick's cashing for a lot. 18.6 is probably top couple. I mean, Kuhn's probably number one with 26 million, and Chidwick isn't that far behind. Here we are with Rabbit Chow. Opening hijack, pocket sixes, ace five off defense from Brewer. Yeah, for example, Chidwick is just has a hundred thousand more than Makita. Eighteen point five eight. Brewer has a lot more than Rabichow. Ace Queen eight. Top pair versus the under pair. Checked over. Yeah, and this is a board way better for Rabbit Chow. He's going like third pot here, which is the type of bet. This is he. What he's saying is, I'm doing this as a range bet versus the big blind. This is an interesting hand that sometimes in these spots kind of ends up bluffing unintuitively when when the runout ends up being one that's just so much better for your equity, but. One seventy five check called. Another three fifty into the middle. Let's see whether or not Rapichow has designs upon a three street approach here. It would seem to be four fifty. Yeah. A strange candidate. See? Rast, but nope. here we go. Well here's why. The seven doesn't really change this board very much at all. Right? No draws got filled in. So Rabichow's still preserving um you know, he did filter Brewer slightly. Like maybe a few of Brewer's worst hands full folded, right? But seven eight is, is despite something. doing that, Rabbit Chow still has a massive equity advantage, and he kind of gets to bet with a lot of his range. But it's a bit more polar here. So what'll happen is Rabbit Chow will check back some of his middle strength hands, like some eight x queen x, maybe king a few like king jack stuff, and then ends up betting with some of his weakest holdings and then a lot of his good ASEX and better. Well, in terms of designs on a third barrel, how does the queen change the scenario for Rabbit Chow as Chris checks a third time? My guess is he doesn't bluff this because Brewer probably has more queen X than him. He probably doesn't have that much queen X betting turn with this size. Yeah. And the shutdown, as on this occasion, it is ASEX on its back and hauling in 1.8. Eighteen remain. Browse for out over there for Kevin. Earlier, Jonathan Jaffe laid mm -hmm. high praise upon him. Said he is the best poker coach he knows of. Yeah, I heard that. That that's high praise. Yeah, no question about it. Did you grab dinner already, Rasty? Uh, yeah, I already ate today. It's got, we got that updated menu, by the way. Did you did you indulge in the updated menu over at this uh, the mess hall? I feel like I'm Neville at the slow table. Like I'm a, a I, Belgian I, I no, ass you, you went, I don't you, know what's oh, you going went to I up here. I played two post ball pants. Okay. I'm like, yeah, you're way behind. Well, I haven't eaten. <laughs> Rasty, so you'll forgive me, but I'm diving into one of these biscuits that they've been 
These are prepackaged. Wait for it. Moon cakes. That's that's wonderful, Ali. Two hundred. Mm. <laughs> Rasty, now you know what it's like to be Nick. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're bringing a lot, adding a lot of value right now. <laughs> It's a big value add having you in the booth at the moment. I need you to understand that at 1.30 in the morning, you know? You, uh... I'm <laughs> authorized to <laughs> rest. <laughs> okay. Oh, we still got a ways to go. Ramp that up. What do we be saying at 2.30? <laughs> Listen, the biscuit's going to be replaced with an entire bowl of chow fun. Mosbach, King 9. Brewer. Ace 5 suited. Ooh, JNT. What does he want to do? Just lay down the law on these short stacks getting frisky. I mean, listen, he's the riot police out here. Let's all be kept in line, courtesy of the eight-figure stack. 600 of it launches in. Mosbach, obviously deflated. Brewer as well. It's everything going JNT's way right now. It's really his show. Big bank take little bank. As we flip it back over to the other feature where a very lowly stack is tethered to Kazakhstan's Shingis Satubayev. Just three bigs. Nice little spot for Justin Saliba. He's found a table where number two in chips is Roman, who's seventh in the tournament, and then number three in chips is Chidwick, who's 13th. So. I mean, with three tables left, he's got no one else in the top five, only one other player in the top ten. So his stack, which, I mean, yes, he's number two in chips, but like way, way behind JNT, has a huge advantage at this table. Antonius, by the way, who held the chip lead for the bulk of the day, he is now running in fifth with 3.8 in front of him, behind Yaroshevsky and Elton Seng, who run four and three behind the aforementioned Saliba and JNT. Now then, those three bigs that I was touching upon moments ago have been deployed. King four offsuit, the responsible kit. Yeah, not a great hand, but I think under the gun, when you're gonna have to put 100,000 dead as the ante in the very next hand, I, I like his decision to shove here. Uh, forgive me. It's just the imagery. <laughs> I mean, this dude is dialed in. We know Rabbits is a killer. <laughs> it's just, it is slightly difficult to kind of come away with that perception, just given the orange. Oh, my goodness. Six deuce off. A customer. Saliba can well afford to make this call. Already big blind and big blind Annie invested. In goes the extra 200. I mean, how happy is Shingus? Like, well, the dude's got three bigs. He's not that happy, Rasty, but yes, the situation oh. is good. And now it got bad. Queen nine six. Saliba connects with the pair. An empathetic look on his face. Shingus on his feet. Gutter acquired on the turn. Now, cowboy or a 10, keep him in his seat. And there is the king of diamonds, and he's fired up. That felt like justice. Six deuce off is so dusty. Yeah. Well, going all in with king four off, under the gun for three bigs, somehow... We're up against six deuce offsuit. I mean, I, I mean, could, having to take a trip, worse. having That's to take fun. a trip through the blinds, you know, across the next two hands, having a lot to do with the choice, of yeah. course. No, no, of course. I'm just saying that's why. I mean, it's hard for that to work out better for him. Oh, right. I mean, he's yeah, not yeah. getting folds, right? So he's just now no. he's like a two to one favorite with a hand as dusty as King Four. Now then, Igor Yaroshevsky. Enters the fray. Min raising is 
the Ukrainian just north of one million in career Triton earnings. This his third festival. One cash coming in, tenth in the thirty K eight max for a hundred and one thousand. This is his second cash in nine attempts. Here in Jeju. No customers. Grinding the Triton Poker Plus app. Yeah, if I'm Saliba there, yeah, may, maybe learn something new because I probably would have just folded do six off. But like maybe you're just supposed to call anything. I mean, that's what that call kind of implies. I don't know. Listen, I'm no sophisticate. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're asking These me for 200 dimes and I'm looking at all the biscuits in the middle, I'm like, yeah, yeah let's spin the wheel, sir. <laughs> Red or black? Brewer. Red. Ace. Six. Hearts. Fives for Rabbit Chow on the button. Brewer red. Rabbit Chow black. I'm saying that because of his hoodie. Not because both his cards are. I think this is going in. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're not really happy about it, but... Ooh, we only have eight blinds. I guess it's possible you can get a fold here. You know, if Brewer happens to have a hand like Jack-10 off, some of his I very lightest down, opens, right. which actually I mostly I, do well against us. I think I have to us. call, but I'm not happy about it. <laughs> okay, Brewer with an advisory. Says, I think I have to call, but I'm not happy about it. Reasons are quite clear. Would hate to be shown a dominant ace in this spot. Yeah, Five but he has five. a lot more chips, right? Two and a half million. Yeah. And he's getting over two to one. Yeah, I don't think yeah, I he, don't think those are enough. Maybe I'm He'll be happy to see he's not that far behind here. Two overs. Certainly could have been worse for Chris Brewer. That's Rabbit Chow. Hangs on for his tournament life here in the main event. And how about this? That was he not blocks the straights That's with the fives, me. holds a club. Miss dead on a bold pail. It's weird. What a flop for Ravichow. Uh -huh. Yeah, and now remove the ace of clubs. Aces Actually, forgive me, gone. they were already dead. So... Yeah, he really was <laughs> in a horrendous way. The five was what he needed in order to make the straight, and yeah, oversights on this. And maybe I need another biscuit. Ras, do you think I'm low on <laughs> from calories? Maybe. Uh, you've been in here for a long time today, Ali. All right, got to take care of yourself, buddy. Another feature table. Th these biscuits are You're not the, are not the path. <laughs> I got the ninety minute. Earlier today, everything's all right. For Salazar, things would be more all right if he wasn't up against Ace Jack as the open is defended against Hajiev. Similar stack death, but the covering entity in more ways than one as he smothers Ace Four. 600 in the middle, Ace in the window. Seven and a five behind. Wow, and this SBR, I mean, it's a little under two to one. I mean, there could be runouts that prevent it all from getting in, but Ramin might just bust Mauricio here. I mean, I actually think with Ace Jack off, it's almost, it's like one of the best hands you can have at this point. Curious to see if he just raises flop. We await the choice as Saladar, Salazar, rather, pardon me, C bets. 250. We can call. Our opponent might keep bluffing quite a bit. We keep those in. Raise. We can get it in here as a big favorite. They both have merit. Hajiev plays it as a flat, perhaps keeping an eye on getting the rest of Mauricio's chips assuredly into the middle. 1.1 in there as he makes top two. 
Salazar drawing dead, doesn't know it. The Jack of Diamonds is a card that will probably get Mauricio to bet more often than not because it adds an extra flush draw, so backdoor diamonds are now an official draw. It improves the equity of hands like 8-9, so it makes you want to deny that equity in a spot where just having an ace means you're probably good. All in. Yeah, so, and he's drawing dead now. Yeah. Not a fun experience to have no sweat whatsoever on the river. But we certainly hope that in spite of that, the experience overall has been a pleasant one for Mauricio Salazar Rasti as he is dispatched in 18th place. The Colombian here at his first ever Triton Festival, back-to-back -back caches, 13th in the 50K Turbo Bounty for 68 times, and now picking up 234,000, I believe it was. Pause. Don't quote me on that just yet. All right, we have a new yep. pot here. Looks like Rabichow raised from the cutoff. Igor defends big blind. We get check, Rabichow bet. Kind of small, 175 call, and now Igor's made a straight and leads. I think lead, I don't think Ra Rabichow has no way of improving here. I mean, other than hitting an ace or a jack, which might not be good. No heart, no straight draw. Able to escape. Yaroshevsky plays check call lead. Didn't have a heart in his hand, don't believe, so. I think the idea is that he has a lot more flushes and, and straights. Um, so the six of hearts is a better card for him and he gets leads on it. And I think he feels that specifically with maybe a straight uh, maybe he can make sure he charges some hands and, and get the whole stack by leading. Sure. And now he and the rest of the field have fewer BBs. Blinds, 50, 125, 125, 300 in orbit, the current price of poker. And there's the boss man, JNT. He's been waving his baguette around. On the day, 300,000 the open. This seems like too little hand here for the situation. Mario's probably just letting some time go by with a short stack. Another suited Jack. Five finger folds the button. Pay jump has been realized, I believe, Rasty, as indeed 266,000 for the next two spots, courtesy of Salazar's departure. Flipping over, it looks like we've got one outer table action here. Wow, ace king to ace Jack. Malinowski. Involved. This was Fahadin Mustafov making it 200,000 pre flop. Antonius Flanning. Oh, forgive me. Hang on. Antonius has the ace king, and it looks like Alex Theologus. Pundidi online had the ace jack, and he is out. Okay, forgive me. I had wrong intel. Yeah. Gotta yeah. remove producer James from the Christmas list. Elicited, on TV, bro, quite so frankly, he wasn't on to begin with, so <laughs> much as I love him. <laughs> James says December's a long way away, perhaps a shot at redemption a little bit later. Nevertheless, pictures told the story, and Rasti had us covered. Satubaya, covered by all parties. Shortest stack here. Pocket nines. Hoist the main sail. 
A million launches. is now sub 10 bigs. That's where we are. Blinds keep going up. Launches his boat. Hobbits, by the way, looks like a guy who fell asleep drunk at a Syracuse frat party. You know, maybe somebody got a hold of some clippers and then he had to reach for the first thing that he could to kind of cover the lid. Anyhow, yeah, my imagination is wild. Here we go. Ace, Queen, Chidwick. Clash of two shorter stacks. Who can launch up? There's your answer. Toward being more average. Ace, high, flop. Nines. In bad shape. The King Four was in similar territory before. Is that a club? Yes, but of course, that's bad for Satubayev. Stone one out. Red Nina needed and unavailable. So Shingis with a bit of a head fake there. Doubled, but not long thereafter. Worked his way out of the room in 16th. Theologius busting in 17th for 266. Satubayev doing the same, and another pay jump realized. We're bagging? 15 remain, 298,000 secured, and we're bagging is what the boys have been told, Rasty. And here's a peek at the chip counts as those bags will get dropped off. Producer James suggesting that the bags might be upon us here, but other tables may have hands to make up. So okay. that's it, we're, we're done? Well, apparently there could be a hand or two that needs to be played elsewhere in the room as you get one last glimpse at the four that remain here, 38 bigs, the deepest of the participants. And yes, one more, one more hand here, four-handed. All right. And they're, yeah, they're breaking a table. Yeah, we will be consolidating. This does feel like a, a strange initiative to force them in. Producer James advising that they owe a hand here at this table. Soft hand for hand. Five seconds. What's she playing, Stevie? Thank you. Chidwick plays the queen nine suited as a limp. Saliba, interest peaked with king four suited. Pretty sure he checks this back. Your raising range versus a limp here starts to get kind of polar, and I th most of the time you just want to realize with king four suited you don't want to get blown off it. But king four off, that's a different story. King four off there might oh. get jiggy with it. Look at this board. Pair and a flush draw for Saliba. Nothing really on the stovetop for Chidwick. Two overs, backdoor hearts, the guts. That's that's something. Yeah. Not nearly as much as what Saliba's working with, Maybe. but uh, Chidwick is not going anywhere on the flop. Let's put it that way. Okay. 375 in the middle. Let's see yeah. how he operates. Like he might lead at this, and if he checks, he's not folding. Let's see if Saliba even puts.